Welcome to day two of tryouts for Oakland Esports Varsity Esports team. Day two consists of League of Legends, just like the first one. Let me tell you, first day of tryouts, we had such a huge um, impact. You know, a lot of people come into the stream, a lot of people watching, a lot of people sharing on social medias. I really appreciate that. Oakland University appreciates it. The athletic department appreciates it. These players participating in the tryouts, they appreciate it. Our sponsors appreciate it. By the way, just speaking of sponsors, we got Velocilinks here in this corner. You might be wondering why Velocilinks is there. We were talking about it yesterday a little bit. Velocilinks, local company in Auburn Hills, they make fantastic gaming equipment, headsets, headsets mice, keyboards, great stuff and i've used it personally i really do enjoy the products so we'll have more information on velocilinks if during the stream you get a little bit um curious about them down below there's a little vx button you can click on that go right to the website and just check out their products again don't need to get anything if, if you don't need products but if you need a keyboard mice or headset that might be a great place to go also they are sponsoring our giveaway so throughout the week we will well towards the end of the week we'll be giving out information on the giveaway and how exactly you can enter for it it's going to involve social media liking following things it's an interesting way for us to get a local brand in auburn hills to get their good gaming products out to you fine gamers i'm excited for that you should be excited for that but what we should be really excited for the, about <laughs> is to get more league of legends we've got six more games today we're about to jump in. We've got players in the lobby ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to them. We'll get the casters in there for you in just a moment. But thank you again for being here. I really do appreciate it. This trial process, streaming it, it wouldn't matter if you guys weren't here watching it. You make it happen for us. And you know what? This, All this trial process, all this means is that, one, we're going to have an incredibly talented squad of players. And two... Our competitions this fall are going to be amazing and i just can't wait to see that i hope you're just as excited for our competitions as i am let me go ahead and throw it over to the client we'll get you into the uh, in-game screen here casters will be up in just a few minutes thank you so much for being here Alrighty, guys, and we are live. Thank you so much to Coach Leon for throwing it over to us and for Oakland Esports as a whole for uh, allowing to, to have this event. And today, just as you guys saw in the last couple of games yesterday, the teams have been switched up from the first couple of games. Uh, my name is Tanner Metro. You guys can just call me Metro. And today, again, I am joined by the one, the only, the soothing voice of Blue Jay. And Jay, how are you doing today, my man? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for all of your praise here, Tanner. I gotta say, you've been doing a great job as well. Your voice is very exciting, and I'm so like I'm filled with anticipation for these next few games. I mean, as as you said earlier, we have the teams mixed round, and on the blue side today, we'll have It's Haas in the top lane, Speed Demon in the jungle, Keelan in the mid lane, Simply Gank as the ADC, and Love, Truth, Wisdom as support. Yeah, and standing across from them, A Dreams in the top lane, Doc. In the jungle, Razor Lore mid, Endrit and Pepperoni Tomato routing out the bottom lane. And I love to see this, and I'm so excited to... Uh, I didn't necessarily get to watch firsthand how the the, the switch-ups really affected the players. Uh, one thing that I do know that we can expect is probably a Draven and a Mordekaiser ban, right? You've got Endrit and Dreams <laughs> on the same team. I can't imagine those champions go through. Yeah, we haven't seen the Draven picked up once just because it has been banned, and they've 
rightfully so, should ban that Mordekaiser. He just went 1v5 that game, just taking out an entire team by himself, uh, Dreams did. And it's... It's going to be interesting to see how, how the meta shifts up again. I mean, we did see um, Trundle coming through clutch for, for most of these teams. If it got through in the draft, Graves seen some priority. But we also saw some fiddlesticks uh, both in the jungle and top lane to, to a lot of effectiveness. So um, we will be starting in, in picks and bans here. Um, we'll be heading over to Pro Draft, and, and we'll probably get started here very soon. I am so excited for it. Uh, as you saw uh, or heard coach talking about earlier we do have uh, giveaways happening throughout the week as, as there's a, a whole week here planned ahead for tryouts for all of the esports for oakland university and if you guys haven't already make sure you are following the stream so that way you can keep up on all of the notifications there and then down in the bottom you can actually check uh, velocilinks and their gear there is uh, a giant vx you can click on it it'll take you over but we are in picks and bands and uh, uh surprisingly mordecai's are taken away here Thank goodness. I mean, that's not a not <laughs> jumping you want to see for the blue side uh, to go against Fiora Band here. Um, we will see, you know, some of the power picks maybe coming through, whether they're going to ban the Trundle, the Graves, or the Varus. Looks like Draven is going to be targeted here. You're spot on, Tanner, with some of these predictions. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think who else really stood out the other day. The Lulu for Pepperoni Tomato, uh, super solid as a whole. The Trundle, another big one. Doc played that, so if they are trying to ban away some of these power picks, uh, I may say we could expect a trundle here if the blue side isn't looking to pick that up but Jin taken off the board and um i didn't get to see too much Jin yesterday i don't know if it, it was in the the, the follow-on games uh but we didn't really get to see that we saw some casters down in the bottom lane we saw a lot of varus but it's just going to be the olaf taken away so that early game jungle off the board yeah so you're gonna have either graves trundle or varus up here we'll see what they pick up first um graves probably is going to take away b demon was exceptional on that graves hard carrying a few games um we did see Jin. Um, right after we switched off, it was uh, like, like a game or two afterwards. Simply Gank is is pretty known for his gen. He was mm -hmm. very, very good on that champion, was kiting around all these team fights, getting picks with his W, and and doing an excellent job on gen. So I'm not surprised to see it banned. Um, we only got to see it once, but we'll see what they end up as the power pick here on blue side. Because you still have Syndra available too, right? You still have some flexibility. Um, it's a good blind pick. <laughs> Looks like Simply Ganks is getting that Ezreal duty. They just wanted to stay safe. Uh, maybe not dominate the lane, but let uh, Keelan, It's Haas, and Speed Demon uh, go for more aggressive picks here later on in the draft. Yeah, and Simply Gank, for I think the first two games that he played, was just super comfortable on the Ezreal, just throwing out the poke damage. Uh, did fairly well into uh, the last time that he met up with Endrit, where it was, I believe, the, the Ezreal into the Varus, and was just getting the better half of the trades, poking, making sure that Varus stayed underneath that turret. But standing across from them, we've got... Now Doc going to be back on the or the uh, the Trundle jungle. And man, he made that champion look so strong yesterday. Yeah, I mean, he played two games of it in the beginning. Actually played an Elise game and did fairly well on that Elise as well. Um, it was teaming up with Itch John on Kled, so they had some good tower dives. They're actually diving people between turrets. It looks like uh, Syndra's going to be matched with this Trundle. A huge power pick. We know Endrit can play it bot lane, so you still don't know if it's going mid or bot, um, especially since uh, Razelor has been playing some of these other mages like Vagar and Nico. so I assume Syndra's not too far out of his wheelhouse. I probably would have liked to see the Trundle picked up first on blue side, um, mm -hmm. just knowing how strong of a pick it is, but we'll see what Speed Demon has in his pockets because he, he has been playing some more carry champions, and Trundle's fairly straightforward, right? So if he ends something with a little bit more um, maneuver ability like a Kindred, um, then that, that's still certainly a possibility. Yeah, and Lissandra going to be the hover and locked in. So I, I love Lissandra. It, it was in the meta, I think. It was season nine, and whether it was play top or in the mid lane, I think it was with Aftershock. Just such a strong pick back in the day, obviously, you know, not as prevalent nowadays. But I think there's just so much you can do with this champion. There's so much lockdown. You basically have a built-in Zanyas that's, that does damage when they, when they walk in, and this is also something that I want to talk about. The Fiddlesticks coming in. We saw it yesterday, uh, unfortunately, in defeat. But the just the the uh, the ability to kind of just hinder this Trundle is there, right? Fiddlesticks alting over the wall, getting multiple mm -hmm. fears. Trundle just running at you. And, and like you said, you have the, the outplay button of, I just dropped my fear on you. Now Trundle is running the opposite way. And, and there's our disengage. So a, a solid pickup there. And... A uh, wombo combo just off the the three that you see. You've got the true shot barrage to go through. Lissandra with all of the AOE and then fiddlesticks on top. So uh, a solid first few picks. But Leona coming through, and that uh, that should halt any uh, engages that we might see from the blue side here. Leona, uh, a whole heap of CC in her kit alone. 
Yeah, so I'd like to see maybe a Yumi ban coming out, right? Because what's the worst thing you can do um, versus mm -hmm. a Leona? It's just make sure she can't do anything in her lane. It's already going to be difficult to gank a, a Lissandra or, or the Ezreal in her lane anyway. So they'll probably be targeting some of more of these supports. Um, probably... I just say Yumi. I mean, Set's a good ban anyway, because we just don't have the top side. Um, I, going back to this Fiddlesticks, I think this is an amazing pickup, especially against Trundle, right? Because what does Trundle want to do? He wants to duel the enemy jungler, preferably if they're AD, steal their stats, and just beat him with his club. Fiddlesticks mm -hmm. doesn't have to worry about any of that. If he fights you, well, he's going to silence you, he's going to fear you, and then he's going to drain you. He doesn't have to auto-attack. It's not like he's going to be sustaining through through damage. It's just literally his drain, right? His, it's all magic damage. And and then he can just press Q and walk away. Looks like a Renekton ban. Um, it is kind of glitching the client a little bit too late, but they should be typed that out in chat. Um, they don't want uh, Dreams to pick up. He did play that right before he disconnected to, right. <laughs> with some great effectiveness. He was very good on that Renekton, and he was pushing down those lanes. Wasn't taking over the game like he did on Mordekaiser, but was certainly a threat and a huge presence on that Renekton. Yeah, I believe uh, before the disconnect, he was like 3-1-2, and, and it's one of those things where... Uh, it, it's so crazy to me how people can play champions like that where you have to get in you you know you have your ultimate to stay alive but you're you're just slicing through the team you're in the middle of everybody and he just still managed to stay alive in just about every single team fight except for one and and then obviously the disconnect but we won't count that one so he played the <laughs> champion masterfully and i do appreciate the respect there because out of the champions that he has played he's played them very very well and then they're going to send another ban up there right they, they take away that Jax, mm -hmm. which was another one that i had written down for him as, as one that he likes to play so a lot of respect paid into the the dreams pool there in the top lane is vladimir also banned away nobody wants to deal with keelan's vladimir uh and if you're assuming that this is lissandra mid right uh keelan pl also played rise yesterday fantastically and mm -hmm. like, like hard carried 14 and 2 i think was a score doing so much damage you put him on a late game carry and, and he's gonna do just that but it seems like with the ear got locked in this will be lissandra mid and this is going to be not that lissandra can't carry but maybe just a little bit of a a controlled game for keelan again allowing his uh the rest of his team to kind of step up around him yeah, they just have a lot of consistent damage. If you think about like an Urgot, a Fiddlesticks, and Ezreal. Talon picked up, so... Oh. So, I mean, is this Fiddlesticks bot lane? Is this Lissandra top? Looks like Keelan's taking it to him with just a blind pick Talon here, uh, which is interesting. He loves this champion. So it looks like they might have gotten um, the gist of this, that maybe this Lissandra is playing somewhere else, and, and we were we were in the dark, but the other team has, uh, has kind of figured it out. Okay, so... We're just assuming Lissandra support at this point, right? The Fiddlesticks jungle got top Talon in the mid lane. This is we're just gonna have to see how it locks in because I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. go on about it. I'm gonna go on about it, and then it's just gonna be completely <laughs> wrong. Uh, I know that there were a lot of champions that did receive buffs to the jungle. I don't remember if Talon was was one of them, but just doing uh, damage to monsters was buffed. I think just throughout almost the whole list of champions, uh, Garen, Darius, everybody's kind of getting thrown in to the, the pool there as Pantheon was the last locked in champion here. And we saw Razor Lord play Pantheon again, almost masterfully. He took the teleport in the mid lane, rarely had to use it. He responded to just about every single gank or play on the bottom side with his mm -hmm. ultimate. He was always there. Uh, just a great pickup for roaming as a whole. And that does mean that this Syndra is going to go down in the bottom lane for Endrit, which, you know, he is very familiar with that one as well. Yeah, I'm curious to see where, where all these champions end up. I mean, we're all in speculation, but I think um, some of these players can just play anything to a pretty high level, um, especially since we have such a, a wide variety of ranks, right? Uh, Endrit's already playing the Syndra on the bot lane, which has been very effective, running a kill lane. Mm -hmm. um, instead of the Maokai around, they have Leona, which is even more aggressive and has more tools to engage um, and she doesn't have the flash to get onto, right? She can just use her uh, her Zenith Blade or maybe her Lunar Eclipse and, and just lock you down before um, she even gets onto you immediately with that ultimate. So we'll see where all this ends up. I'm not sure about this Talon into Pantheon matchup. I imagine um, both of them want to be playing very aggressively, right? Both of them hit like this level two power spike where they want to go in and kill the enemy opponent. I think mm -hmm. a lot of it is going to have to do to uh, jungle pressure, right? Because you have Fiddlesticks, um, which has point and click uh, terrify his Q, which will make the, the enemy champion feared, um, run the opposite way. Trundle, again, has this pillar. Talon, thankfully, um, once he gets his, his E ability, he can kind of parkour over the pillar and just ignore it slow. Um, 
but I assume that's where most of the action is. Urgot's fairly good into Maokai, right? You have that consistent damage. Maybe won't be uh, beating that early, um, but once he gets that Black Cleaver, that Death Stance, maybe that Frozen Mallet too, like, the, the sustained damage and shred on Urgot is insane. So it is looked to being Fiddlestick Dundr uh, Jungle and Lissandra support, so we'll see how this turns out. I haven't seen this one in, in quite a while. Yeah, I couldn't tell you if I've actually ever seen Lissandra support, but it does have uh, not only some escape, so can follow that Ezreal out with the the, the claw to get away. Uh, has great lockdown. It's one of those things, kind of like the fiddlesticks, where you have the outplay button of somebody comes in on you, and then you just ult them, and they can't move. And then hopefully you can get away at that point with a giant slow around it. Also does a heap of damage, and then has the engage on top of it all. Instead of using that claw to get away, use that forward. Uh, drop the freeze around you, drop the alt on the kill target. I do love the adaptation of uh, Maokai going into the top lane and the Leona being with the Syndra, because just like you said, Leona doesn't necessarily need to blow the flash. So as we saw before, it wasn't the most difficult for Maokai to get in, but a scout of the week from downtown means Maokai may have to flash forward and then use that twisted advance to lock him down. In this case, Leona follows up zenith blade and then just so much cc shield of daybreak drops the ultimate and you know cinder's obviously got the damage to finish him off i am very interested in the mid lane here so melee matchup you brought that up talented to pantheon how does that one go incredibly difficult right for um the pantheon to die because he does have that invulnerability to the front so keelan's gonna have to be smart about the way that he does attack this pantheon but they're also fantastic champions for roaming. Pantheon, again, mm -hmm. with the ultimate talent jumping over the walls, just moving around. Vision is going to be so huge in this game. That way you're, you know, paying attention to where everybody's at. Everybody needs to be on the same page. You know, when, when Pantheon's out of lane, it has to be spam ping. When Talon's out of lane, it has to be spam ping, or else these guys are just going to snowball and, and just pop off. Yeah, and and but looking from from the other side of that, um, even even if they do roam, I mean, where are they gonna go? I think Keelan's gonna have a harder time roaming out of this lane, um, into like a Leona or, or a Maokai. You know what I mean? Like it's just gonna be difficult to kill those champions, especially since Maokai can probably just build a ton of armor. So even if Keelan does get a roam onto the top side, um, he's just gonna just out sustain that damage, walk away. He'll get chunked a little bit. Uh, on the bot side here, you, you mentioned that Syndra does have the scatter of the week, right? Pretty much a good lockdown if they're trying to go aggressively, but it's also a great defensive tool um mm -hmm. especially on the red side here where um it's, it's it's hard to jump over that wall as a talon um even if you come from behind because we'll be taking a few tower shots and if they end up just uh scattering the weak into the tower and then full lockdown you just get annihilated so um, i think they're going to be working with speed demon here on this fiddle six to do most of the work i would imagine just either setting up ganks or playing for objectives i mean you do have some good poke coming out from this ezreal um the the one problem they do have on red side here is they it's just more of an all-in comp right it's pantheon leona Sendra, trundle maokai they're gonna run at you they're gonna throw their abilities um but it's not that far ranged um the only thing they really have is a scatter of the week a trundle pillar or or a leona ultimate right they, so if if you play from a range advantage with this Fiddlesticks, with this Urgot, with this Ezreal, even Lissandra is fairly ranged, and if Keelan just sits on the outside, um, maybe the red side gets a little overly aggressive, and Keelan gets a huge flank off the Syndra, while the rest of the team is is going in on, I, I guess, the Lissandra, who can just ult, right? So as long as they're buying enough time and, and separating some of these team fights, there is a way for the blue side to come out on top, especially with these huge ultimates like the Lissandra Frozen Tomb or the Fiddlesticks um, Crow Storm. Absolutely, and when you see a champion like the Urgot in these games, or, or even a Lissandra here as well, are these players on the red side going to have to pay the, the 1300 QSS tax? Because not only does it get you out of that Urgot ultimate, saves your life a little bit, uh, but it's going to be able to get you out of that frozen tomb, and that's something that I always look at when you see, uh, you know, the Mordekaiser, the Skarner, or even like Leona here, where if you don't take cleanse, there's so much CC, having that QSS can be extremely important but this is all speculation again we will have to see how it breaks down these teams have been swapped up moved around these players are playing with you know not only fierce vigor as it is the tryouts here but with some new teammates uh, we are going to take a quick break before we jump in but once we come back we'll have the first game of the day for the oakland esports tryout
And here we go, first game of the day now underway. We saw some early cheese in the games yesterday, but uh, it's day two. You know, everybody wants to have a good showing. We'll have to see how they take it here again. My name is Tanner Metro, and I'm here alongside Blue Jay. And I mean, this is the, the, the second time we're seeing Speed Demon on this Fiddlesticks, right? I'm excited for this one because the last time he played it, I mean, he played it really well. Unfortunately, the team just, you know, kind of fell down around the scaling composition. Uh, of the team that they're playing. Yeah, I think Fiddlesticks is, is an extremely unique champion, and if you play to his biggest strengths, he's very effective. Um, but as we saw in the last, the last time we did see Fiddlesticks was in the top lane, but um, when Speed Demon was on this jungle pick, you'd see him catch people in rotations, right? They're going to get uh, vision, they're trying to ward, and I think that's where he's, where he's strongest, right? Around these objectives. So if, if you're trying to engage with your team and Fiddlesticks doesn't have the right position, you're just trying to force them into a fight, it's not going to work so well, but if you let the enemy team come to you and CC them, you kind of want to bait them into into getting deep into their jungle without vision. Then that's where he really shines. This game, I'm looking forward to, it to especially because this Syndra didn't bring any cleanse, right? She she just has TP. She doesn't have a heal, so maybe if Fiddle Six has a little gank, a little trot over to the bot side of the map. You can lock him down with the with the Lissandra, have damage with the Ezreal, and maybe just 100 0 before she gets out of that silence because she doesn't have a defensive summoner. Um, besides Flash. And these junglers starting on uh, the same side, but Fiddlesticks kind of doing that that wonky clear where he grabs his wolves first and then looks to pull his Gromp and his blue together. So uh, should increase that clear time. And again, may have him end up on that top side. This top lane matchup, I mean, this is just going to feel horrible. They do put Dreams on tank duty for this mm -hmm. game and then ranged into melee matchup. I mean, that's that's terrible no matter what lane you're playing in. Especially against this Urgot, right? Like, he's known for just crushing tanks, like being a fairly safe laner. Um, looks like a little trade in, in the mid lane here. Both hit that level too, right? Pantheon, I feel, is a little bit stronger because he has a stun in his kit. And, and mm -hmm. Talon hasn't unlocked his ultimate yet, which is a big chunk of his damage and outplay uh, material. Going back to this Urgot, he did take press the attack into Grasp of the Undying. Um, which can be probably a little bit rough for the Maokai since he won't be able to proc that Grasp as often. Maybe look for a few Twisted Advances. Ooh, the level threes come through, but the pillar is there. The flash and the chomp and Doc grabs first blood just like that. Back on the signature trundle getting it done. Exactly, and that's kind of what we anticipated here. Um, first, like, whoever's going to have the most jungle pressure here in the mid lane because it's both melee matchup, both huge kill pressure. Um, whoever can kind of get there first after those initial trades. Ooh, I you thought that was going to go in there. <laughs> there. <laughs> and Doc actually making an appearance. The... The pillar placement has been so insane from Doc on this trundle. I remember watching yesterday where he pinched an ash into the wall. She couldn't move. It was just for a disengage, but now on the top side, Dreams, who unfortunately not going to grab the kill, is Haas. But the flash forward, yes, he does. Flash for flash, and he will gladly take that as he nets himself a kill. And this Urga doesn't even need some of these scaling items yet to uh, to kill Dreams here on the top side. Flash for flash, like you're saying. Uh, I think that is a net win for the Urgot. His wave is being pushed into the tower, so he's not going to lose too much. On the bot side of this map here, you do see uh, Doc was hovering around. Uh, I, they do have this huge kill pressure. Ezreal's out of mana here. They might even set up a dive if, if Doc decides to go into this bot lane. I, I think this is a little bit risky. I think you're going to have to have Haas carry out some of the um, fights here early, have Fiddlesticks uh, do some ganking, play for objectives. It's just going to be a little bit more difficult because you know the Pantheon's going to be trying to snowball, though I do think that Talon scales a little bit better. Um, because he can get around the map more, he's going to be doing more instant damage in and out where the Pantheon kind of just has to stay in the fray. So, with the, the Pantheon and, and really just this mid lane as they, they scrap it out, and on the bottom side, Love Truth Wisdom going to get tagged up, but it'll be okay. Simply gank needs to be careful, right? No potions, low on HP, low on mana. I, I would imagine we're all tied up in turrets. And I can't actually imagine what he's waiting for. Maybe just waiting on the, the gold to go back and, and buy the tier as you'd really hate to come back to lane like double Dorans, Ezreal, or, or, or something of that nature. So mm -hmm. Love Truth with them doing a good job of kind of zoning out and, and allowing some of that gold to come in. Uh, but back in this mid lane, Keelan played three pretty like controlled scaling champions. Now we've got him here on this talent. And, and how do you think this is going to fare for him as, you know, it seems like his play style kind of was, let's scale up way too late. Now you put him on the assassin. How do you think he's going to play on this talent? 
Well, if we're going off of a uh, results-based analysis, uh, not too well right now, right? <laughs> he already got right. first blooded. He's down uh, 10 CS, but uh, I have seen him play a few talent games. They've been really effective. Um, sometimes he's hard carried. I think the early game here is probably not a good um, representation of, of his skill on talent yet, right? Because it's more about that roaming potential. Uh, I, I think it's just unfortunate um, that they kind of had to blind pick it and it wasn't versus this Syndra, though uh, us seeing most of these games, we, we kind of had this this um, tinkering that it was Syndra bot lane, so we knew that, but maybe they didn't know that going in. Um, I think it'll be fine. I mean, he does have his Tiamat now, so he's looking to roam more. Um, it's this bot lane I'm more concerned about, to be honest. Yeah, the engage comes through. The Glacial Pass gonna get stunned up by the Scatter the Weakened Pepperoni Tomato. Secures the kill here, but what a perfect timing there as soon as the gank goes yeah just the kind of that kill lane with this leona syndra right they just chain the cc very effectively Ooh, level six on razor doesn't mean too much except for the stats he gains as the grand starfall not gonna be you know incredible in this in this one v1 but speed demon flashes forward Flash from Razor to keep him alive. The bottom lane is here, but Keelan hits six and he found the kill. Now trying to escape as he does get stunned up. Hops over the wall and Haas is here, but Endred is going in for the kill. Pepper trying to get out, does not have what it takes as the fear beyond death finds another one for Haas. Oh, Keelan sneaking out here in the jungle, just barely gets away from the Syndra as she can't land another W here. Flashes over the wall, doesn't get the kill, but you know, it's Haas and Speed Demon cleaning up on this uh, Leona here. So very positive trade for them. Keelan gets one back. It's Haas has another kill, already has Executioner's Calling. So I think this is where their composition is really going to turn online. Now the Talon's starting to get a couple of items and a nice gank there from Speed Demon. Th I believe this time in the game, he, he seemed a little further ahead, had that completed jungle item, but just as effective. Uh, he is sitting on 1,200 gold though, so he will be able to go back uh, maybe pick up that fiendish codex a, a pair of boots here and he is level six so the ganks now aren't necessarily that flash fear it's coming over the wall coming out of the fog of war with that crow storm and just wreaking havoc on the squad back in the top lane uh haas comes down grabs himself another kill and i love just the adaptation like looking at the the player's builds the first thing he bought after getting that kill in the top lane was Grievous Wounds. He got the Executioner's Calling, grabs a kill in the mid lane, goes right back up top, and sure, the Bramble Vest is, is going to hurt a little bit, but this matchup now, Urgot into Maokai, is going to be incredibly difficult. Yeah, the Bramble Vest is okay. I mean, it's not Conqueror. Oh, we do have Trundle Dock hanging around this mid lane. Yeah, Keelan going to use that ultimate to get to safety, so we'll not have that kill pressure necessarily. So, Dock... Not necessarily netting a summoner spell, but a huge ultimate down can look for a return gank. But Talon is, is just one of those champions. So slippery. He, he jumps over every single wall. Always manages to get away. It, it seems broken. Yep, and I don't... I mean, it is huge kill pressure with his ultimate down. But I, he does have the conquer room. So I assume uh, Keelan's maxing his, his Q ability here. So he won't be too sad. I mean, you look at that huge chink. Ooh, Ooh and Speed Demon coming through. There's the ultimate. Finds a fear onto Doc. Doc going to drop the Frozen Domain, which is kind of just a, uh, a waste domain here on this skin. But <laughs> nothing going to be netted there. But again, another ultimate down. So we may wait a little bit before we see the, uh, the, the mid-jungle duo come back through. And meanwhile, Haas was roaming down again. Yeah, I think they're going to go for more of this kill pressure, right? If, if Haas just lands a, uh, a long-range ultimate after this Fiddle ult, I mean, that's huge damage at this point in the game. Oh, simply gank getting caught up, and there's the strength of this lane. Nowhere to go. The ultimates come through, the damage comes through, and they find another kill. Now, 3-3 three to three in kills. The red squad up just shy of 1,000 gold, and... They do have that Cloud Drake, but Speed Demon trying to trade it back. The Scat of the Week not going to find the mark. There's a Frozen Tomb, and that's exactly what it is. Sends her into her grave as Pepperoni Tomato may not be able to escape. A couple more autos will do it, and that's going to be the double kill for Love, Truth, Wisdom. So maybe this Lissandra bot lane's not dominating in the lane itself, but simply simply uh, gank is, is going down here, and Speed Demon comes in to clean up two more kills with Love, Truth, and Wisdom. So, I mean, all in all, it's working out. It's a little awkward. I mean, you would like the Ezreal to be a little bit more safe, but, I mean, what do you do if you just get by Scattered the Weak? You're pretty much done, especially with all the follow-up on Leona. It's, 
it's exactly as as we were talking about so we do want to see for the next few instances maybe this pantheon or, or telling rome because that's that's really what i was excited for to be honest uh, i knew the shenanigans that was going to go on the bot lane i knew this top lane's kind of uh, you know just gonna be whitewashed by this ergot providing pressure against this malachi and we knew speed demon and, and doc were excellent on these two champions um but it's really this this mid lane that we haven't seen a lot of yeah the mid lane been fairly quiet after a uh, a couple of kills there or a, a kill and an assist rather as haas just being that bully in the top lane simply getting a nice arcane shift there to avoid that scout of the week because with leona coming down I mean, again, it, it does not take much. The uh, the Unleashed Power is coming up here soon, and they could be looking for another kill. So we do have the Runic Echoes uh, completed for Fiddlesticks, and he does have a stopwatch available. And on the other side, we just have Cinder Hook for this Trundle. So uh, the objective of Dragon is coming up in a little bit, you know, less than 30 seconds, 25 seconds now. They're trying to get some vision. Everyone's hovering on the bot side of the map, either deciding to make a play in the bot lane or, or get some vision wards. So we'll see. Yeah, Speed Demon comes down, finds the fear, and finds the kill. Endrit will fall on the top side. Haas looking for more. Twisted Advance going to root him up as Dreams tries to get away underneath that turret. And now Doc may be trying to find a return kill. The Flash comes out from Simply Gank. A beautiful Solar Flare finds the stun. The Zenith Blade is there, and they do net the return kill. And Razor Lore has made his way into the fight. Speed Demon goes golden as Keelan tries to keep his jungler alive. The Flash is not enough to keep him healthy as he will fall. Doc now under fire and Pepperoni Tomato, the next one on the list. Uses that Zenith Blade trying to get a safe. The teleport come through. Fear Beyond Death is going to find the fear, but the shutdown comes through. And now it's a 1v2 on Haas and he will fall. A triple kill for Razor Lore. And they might find some more as Keelan is forced to walk away alone. Yeah, Razor ends up ulting into this backside and is able to clean up. Keelan's not able to find Doc here, even just using his parkour abilities over the walls. Doc manages to run away here, and Razor picks up the triple kill, which is going to spell disaster for Keelan, especially in this lane. They did capitalize on some of the bot lane, right? We, we saw this Syndra getting taken down as, as long as you chain um, that fear with Lissandra Frozen Tomb. It can be very effective, um, but you need to have uh, some of your other carries um, in this fight. The problem is they're just getting, they're using these big ult ultimates on one champion right they're going for mm -hmm. total picks here they, they haven't been getting these team fight ults that we really want to see and keelan now trying to find something in return dreams under fire but he'll be okay for now as he's trying to make his way back up to the top lane no ultimate available again lose a little bit of kill pressure but now half hp dreams kind of has to make a decision you know haas been a huge bully do you stay in lane and, and you know not miss this wave or risk dying here again to this ergot under turret yeah, and Haas is pretty big at this point. Doesn't have the Black Cleaver complete, but did get a few kills on there. You actually saw him with his with his ultimate there get a three-man fear. Wasn't enough. He didn't have anyone else alive and uh, to really help him out. Love, Truth, Wisdom did go down right before that. And I think the Pantheon Shield is a bit just to stay invulnerable, especially versus some of these champions that, you know, stay in one direction. They're not moving all around you. Um, it's, it's just coming out clutch, right? Because the Talon can't really get that full damage combo off. He actually stops the bleed mechanic. So if Talon hits you with three abilities, um, like his W, it counts as two on the way back, his rake and his Q. Um, it, it, the next auto attack will cause a bleed, which does a tremendous amount of damage. In the later game, it does, you know, almost 1,000 damage, so it can take you out fairly quickly. But uh, Pantheon completely ignores that as long as he's facing Talon with his ability. Yeah, Rift Herald goes down, but Razor are under fire. The shutdown going to go the way of Speed Demon, and now Doc forced to run. Fear Beyond Death is available, but here comes Love, Truth, Wisdom. He drops the Subjugate. He's going to try and root him up here, but Doc is just running around in four, trying to trade a kill, but Fear Beyond Death will get it done for Haas. A shutdown for the Urgot, and the mid lane turret still stands. See, this is pretty ironic. I mean, I knew there was going to be jungle pressure, but we thought, you know, maybe we would, it would go in, get a kill, push them off, then they would roam. Instead, everyone just coming to the mid lane for all the action. Yeah, there's no hesitation. Everybody trying to fight. And, and you can see how important just, I mean, in League of Legends as a whole, but this mid lane is. Once you crack the mid lane, it, it opens up so many doors for your squad. And then having that, that synergy... I mean, when you look at the, the top teams just around the world, jungle mid synergy is so huge. As, now we see a gang from Keelan coming down the flash forward, or flash away rather from Endrit trying to stay uh -oh. safe. Pepperoni back it in the bush. He will make it out alive. And Keelan, unfortunately, not able to net anything there, but they do get the summoner spell. So I guess I spoke a little too soon on that. Syndra now has to play extremely careful because in this next fight or in this next gank, Keelan will have no problems getting on that Syndra. 
I, and, and it only has TP, hasn't used the TP yet, maybe looking for a player, get back into lane, but it is very vulnerable. We have Doc covering on the t on the bot side of the map, maybe looking for a yank. Not gonna Doc. find it this time. It looks like they're just gonna, you know, bait him in with that wave, freeze this under tower, maybe just get a good reset here. Very lucky for Pepperoni Tomato not to be spotted in that bot bush. I mean, ha didn't have the stopwatch, really only had Moby Boots at that point, so probably could have got blown up right there by Keelan on this Talon. So in that last fight that, that we had seen around the dragon pit, Keelan went in onto Doc who had flashed over the wall, chased him down, unable to kill him. I would love to see some more Grievous Wounds as a fight breaks out in the top lane. Speed Demon has the fear. Nature's Grass oh. gonna keep him in, but it doesn't matter because Speed Demon and Haas are just too strong. Look at this fiddle, 123 CS on their jungler. But Love Truth Wisdom now under fire, uses the heal from simply gank, but not able to use the frozen tomb to stay alive. And now Keelan trying to get away, able to jump the walls here. Pepperoni Tomato gonna flash forward, tries to find the Zenith Blade, goes wide, and he makes it out alive. But again, having to use the ultimate defensively. And the red team is striked back with action on the bottom lane while their top laner goes down. Yep, they did have some good picks onto, you know, Love Truth Wisdom there. I'm curious to see how everyone got so low right before that. I didn't see the trading patterns, but Keelan was already down to quarter health before that. I imagine just, you know, Endrith and, and Razor Lore really just poking them out. They do get the top turret. They're playing a lot around this Urgot, which, I mean, makes sense, right? I mean, he's 4-1-1, one, and one, shredding out this Maokai. Probably doesn't need more help after this, but they really need to start playing for dragons, right? You already have two dragons on the side of... of of red you know and razor lord doc doing an excellent job in these team fights mm -hmm. um but these are all mountain drakes uh so having that yeah. sh that huge shield is going to be so impactful against you know a fiddle sticks and urgot and talon and, and even lissandra and ezra like if you're trying to get some burst damage and you have a maokai and and trundle and Fiona that all build resistances it's going to be impossible to get through that um so they really need to start capitalizing these opportunities yeah zenith played on to keelan but this might not be the fight they want to take pepperoni tomato deleted immediately as doc gonna get sucked up by the fear beyond death ha still popping off five one and two the dragon has spawned and this should be the next objective for the blue squad and i can tell that was some organized play right you had speed demon just sitting right there, knowing someone was going to be in that bush. They bring its Haas down too. They're all out of vision. They, I mean, Red Side has one ward inside their jungle, and it's it's really on that buff, so it's not going to be that useful. Oh, a nice frozen tomb with a stun in response. Keelan goes in and Speed Demon nets the kill. Now Pantheon forced to run away as Razor no longer has the Aegis Assault for the immunization. But now a Mountain Drake netted, and we all know how this can play out. With a fed Urgot, he becomes impossible to kill. And then you slap some extra resistance on it, and it's going to be even harder. Yeah, at the beginning of this game, I knew uh, Speed Demon and Doc were to be key players of this. You know, I, originally, you know, Doc had some really good ganks, get the first split off, um, just running around the map like he's done, and, and the two others, and I was thinking, like, why the heck have they not banned this trundle away from this guy and then speed mm -hmm. demon shows that you don't need to because fiddlesticks is the power pick they need to watch out for so i'm really happy to see this fiddlesticks in action i mean i'm learning a ton as a jungle player and hopefully maybe bringing this into a more competitive setting so i'm really excited to see how the rest of this plays out they have secured this mountain trick i assume they'll be playing more for these mountains than anything else on the map uh, they want to bring speed demon and its hoss uh, onto you know key points um so i assume they're just gonna be playing around some of these members the worst thing they can do right now is getting caught out by this leona by the cinder right because lissandra ezreal are still really squishy uh keelan feels really safe on this talon but he'll have to use his ult defensively and some of these parkour abilities but if they get onto him they, there's really nothing you could do to get out and the vision being cleared speed demon looking to go in but his oh. ult gets interrupted a beautiful pillar stops the fiddlesticks in his tracks and the engage is denied everybody's gonna walk away from that one as if we uh we didn't see that there <laughs> it will we'll pretend to have a blind eye to that but um you do need to play more around these strengths of fiddlesticks right it's really around catching people on rotations but if you're just trying to do an instantaneous play that's not where he's gonna shine right he would either have to flash fear you or anything but but his ultimate can be interrupted like you just saw so there is some weaknesses to the champions you can capitalize on and now he's going to have to pick his angles appropriately or even pick his target because if Doc is able to spot this out, he can drop that pillar, which I spoke about earlier. This guy has been just on point, so clutch with the placement of the pillars and how he's finding knockups. Uh, he, he really knows this champion well. 
but a huge ultimate down so now they have to wait for that and i love the just the use that you can see how speed demon is using the effigy here and, and he's the vision score through the roof just from placing all these wards as an engage comes through on the mid lane solar flare not gonna find too much going golden is love truth wisdom but keelan now on a killing spree tries to make it out but doc gonna shut it down with the subject gate but speed demon and he's got his ultimate this time around he goes golden to try and melt the team down and that's exactly what's happening everybody is melting speed demon finds a <laughs> rampage as ha snipes him out and picks up enough simply ganking a sprinkle and a kill for himself and it's only pepperoni tomato remaining yeah keelan finds the pick onto entrance after you know uh love truth and wisdom just flashes in there with his frozen tube you think it's going to be turned around quite easily but as soon as they get rid of Endrit. Uh, they realize that's pretty much all of their consistent damage, right? If this Syndra stays alive and continues throwing out Spears of Darkness and scattering the weak, that's a lot of consistent. But but for the most part, the rest of their team is full tank. So as long as they get their damage dealer and and make sure Razor Lore can't get onto, you know, simply gank or, or speed demon, uh, that's pretty much the fight. Because its Haas is so big at this point, there's not really anyone that can really match him. And this Trundle has Cinder Hulk and then a Knight's Foul building even more defensively. So they just don't have the damage. Uh, to fight out these team fights when you have so much AoE with Speed Demon on this middle six, you saw that Crow Storm was huge. It's Haas just gets into the midst of the fight a little bit late because Maokai TP'd first, but it, it didn't matter because he's so far ahead. So it's going to be very difficult for the red side uh, to play back when you want the Syndra and, uh, and Pantheon to be closer to the front lines doing the damage. And that's one thing that I, I usually look for when you have the mage in the bot lane you lose a lot of your sustained damage. You don't have that AD carry, you know, bouncing around, dropping auto attacks. Sure, Endrit on the Syndra can, you know, use those Dark Spheres and just keep throwing them out, scatter the weaks. But it, it, it's just not the same as, you know, having the, this Urgot here who's just going to be auto attacking your team down. The Ezreal as well is now Keelan looking for a flank. Love, Truth, Wisdom. Not going to find the engage just yet as he just moved forward with the glacial path. Now, they are still waiting on the Zonia's Hourglass for Speed Demon, so they might have to wait this one out. But the dragon is spawning, and right now the red squad knows that it's just not something they can fight over, and it's the second Drake. As much as you don't want these to go over, it's not the end of the day. It's not Soul, so they're going to look to make plays elsewhere. Yep, it's kind of funny. I, I would honestly call, you know, this Talon more of a supportive pick, right? Because you're letting Speed Demon and its Haas do most of the damage in these fights, just carrying these team fights. And as long as Keelan just gets onto the Sendra, does enough damage that either she has to get out of the fight or even kills her, then then that's his job, right? He's just been finding so much of a nuisance on the sides. Uh, maybe early laning phase was a little bit rough to be expected versus a Pantheon, but they're still doing their job. But Speed Demon on this Fiddlesticks is insane. I would fully expect this champion to be banned um, for the next few games that he is in. And Haas with a nice ward going to spot out the squad, but maybe caught out. The pillar's going to pinch him. He is going to get locked up here, but he's just so tanky. Nature's Grass locks him down too, but Speed Demon is here with the Crow Storm. He goes golden. Fear Beyond Death comes through with a shutdown. We'll take down Haas. One for zero so far as Doc keeps moving forward. Keelan's trying to do what he can. He's on to raise the Lord, but a beautiful flash, but the bleeds are there, and it's just too much. Now he jumps onto the AD carry, and he's going to try and shut down Endra like he has been doing. Simply gank with the double kill as he makes his way into the fight now. Keelan in a bit of trouble, but he's trying to fight his way out. They do trade the kills, and Dream's the only member remaining. A five-favor of the blue squad and a triple kill for Simply Gank. And you can see why they're putting Simply Gank on this Ezreal, right? Like, they know they're probably not going to be winning some of these these uh, matchups because they know Endred's probably going to be on some hard AD carry. They have Pepperoni Tomato on this Leona. So just survive that initial burst, uh, survive that laning phase, and be safe in these team fights. because as long as he's alive, he's pumping out damage. He's picking up, you know, three kills there in that one fight. Uh, Keelan 4, 3, and 10. Now, Speed Demon 5, 1, and 13. And it's Haas, even though you think he gets caught out and bursted down, survived so long and they're able to turn that fight around so we do have baron coming up here they probably have some consistent damage enough to take it i mean the, the israel has his iceborne gauntlet um so it's not going to be like the trinity force auto attack build but it's Haas on this, this ergot's level 13 so he has you know full stacks into his w with consistent damage and, and you know speed demon on this fill six it's no slouch with taking a baron with your drain that's going to constantly deal damage so they could easily look for these objectives after a pick yeah, it, it seems incredibly doomed here at this point. The Keelan is on this Talon able to do so much with what seems like so little. You know, he didn't have the, the biggest lead, but 
He's such a nuisance. He jumps around. Finally, he survives for so long and like 40% HP, uses his ultimate, and then kills Razor Lore. And then jumps the wall, ignites Endrin, forces him out of the fight, and then stays alive to trade another one. And it's one of those things where you have to worry about Haas and Speed Demon just being all over your team. And then there's that, just like that gnat in the back line, always <laughs> on your carries, doing damage to somebody, forcing them out of the fight. It's, you know, you have to keep your head on a swivel if you are playing this team. And now Baron, the only objective here on the map or neutral monster here, we'll have to see the vision war will ensue. And, and we're waiting a little bit. Both of these teams are on dragon or on two rather. We got two minutes on this next mountain. If you are this rare, you definitely want some of those resistances. You need this Maokai to become unkillable because that's what he's known for. Yep, you need the Maokai to be able to lock down one of these targets like Keelan or like uh, Speed Demon on these picks. Simply Gank, I just don't think he's going to be able to get on top of. And frankly, he's not one to get on top of. It's Haas because they just kind of want to keep their distance a little bit. Maybe use um, some of their CC just to zone the rest of the team and focus down one member. I mean, you do have the Trundle Pillar, which is very effective at doing that, especially in some of these, um, you know, cross points in the map where there's not a lot of terrain to work with. Um, so really just, just focus in on one member. That's what you have a Trundle Ultimate for, right? You probably want to be ulting its Haas, maybe catch him out because he doesn't have the mobility of someone like a Lissandra or an Ezreal or a Talon. Looks like we're pushing up on this bot wave, get some control. They are leaving mid wave open though. They might be able to push and get that second tier turret right before this mountain drake spawns. It's gonna be hard to push out that wave and gain control. Yeah, so a counter push here. Dream still on the top side, pushing out that wave as well. And they are just gonna trade tier two turrets here. One in the mid lane for the red squad, trade it over for one on the bottom lane for the blue squad. and. As you said, now it's just more space built. They have to push this wave out. Baron and Dragon here are going to be spawning very, very soon. The only problem I see here, again, with th this composition from the Red Squad is having an AD carry or somebody just going to spit damage. Again, you have the, the, the ranged Urgot who's just auto attack heavy as well. You can shred these objectives. You take Baron and mm -hmm. Dragon so fast. When you have this mage in the bottom lane and, you know, you're not supplementing with a Kindred or a uh, Lucian mid or Tristana mid, things of that nature, you don't have that that same luxury of just going to the Dragon Pit and trying to melt it and try to melt it as fast as possible. So, again, it's just one of those things where they know they have to give it up. It's not soul point. They're just going to farm up, let this Dragon go over and maybe fight for the next. Yeah, but this is a good pick off for the blue side here, I think, right? Because now you're threatening soul point. You know that uh, red side here with the Syndra and Pantheon, like you're talking about, they don't have the ability to melt these objectives as consistently. Um, so just threaten Soul Point, and it doesn't matter where the other team goes. Like they're not going to hit Soul Point before you. <laughs> Sorry, seeing these effigies always always tricks me. Like, why did he just flash there, walking away? Right. You know what I mean? But <laughs> but but anyway, like I was saying, my point is, um, it doesn't matter which objective you go to next, right? You get Baron, you can threaten to end the game because while you have some wave there with this Lissandra, they're always going to be looking to fight you, right? You, if you just balance out these waves, have its boss on the side lane. Um, the only thing you're really worried about is the Pantheon ulting over to the side lane and making it a two v two v one. But I think most of their members are strong enough that you can one v two as its boss. Speed Demon getting caught out here. Yeah, the shield assault is there. He goes golden for now, so he will not have this, and he will not have a health bar as the shutdown goes over to Endra. So a nice bit of gold in the pocket of your mage. But Keelan trying to do what he can to scatter the weak is going to stun him up. He goes into the ultimate to get away, and he uses that assassin's path to stay alive. But the Baron has been started, and there's no smite available for this blue team. And catching Speed Demon so crucial for this, right? That's not only the jungler, that's a huge source of your AoE damage and, and what you've been using to engage besides this Lissandra. So I think they just zoned the rest of the team off here. Now you're seeing the, the problems with uh, Team A. Yeah, and love Truth Wisdom. Force use the ult on itself. Buying some time here as Baron is spitting out the damage. He flashes away, but he will as well. He's the same fate as his jungler. And now Doc and Razor turn their sights on to Keelan. The flash forward with the shield assault. Keelan gonna flash and use the assassin's path again to get away here. A beautiful pillar. It will be jumped over, but it doesn't matter. The chase is there and they find another kill. So three free kills for the red squad and they're looking to turn it around and just as you said they need to find these members one by one and they're doing just that yep they gotta play to their strengths that's that's the key element of league of legends right like your game plan 
what does your composition do better than the enemy teams? Obviously, you're going to have some weaknesses, but you're going to have, you know, a strategy too, right? That's why they would pick the Pantheon and Sindra. They need to go for these picks. They need to find and, and fight the rest of those members that are caught out one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, on the other side, Blue needs to be careful with their vision, right? Uh, on the Blue side, you are Fiddlesticks. You're very immobile. So if you don't have um, the ability to escape, you have to be in a position of power to find some of these picks on, on, for yourself. So... Um, maybe see a little more caution on the blue side from now on. I think they might have gotten a little bit overconfident, right? They were really ahead, um, mm -hmm. so they started walking into some of these fights, but that's what the red side loves to do. They want to fight you. Uh, uh, their big weakness, though, is even when they were taking that fight, um, you saw that Love, Truth, and Wisdom was uh, buying enough time for them just to kite it out. They weren't able to secure Baron because they don't have the damage quite yet. Uh, so I think it's just kind of be a waiting game. They're going to be playing a little bit more for this mountain, so we're going to see some big team fights um, to kind of end the game. Yeah, two minutes left on the mountain. Drake to spawn. Speed Demon mm. uses that ultimate in, and uh, unfortunately, I think a little bit of miscommunication. Love, Truth, Wisdom didn't follow the glacial path, so that ultimate wasted a big ultimate in these team fights. And now, as this game grows later, it's not necessarily that damage that's coming through, but just the tankiness, the Maokai and the Trundle. They're going to be so hard to kill. And then Endrit finding these shutdowns in these fights. You know, now he's got three items. He's going to be burning down this beefy Urgot here as the engage comes through. Glacial Path will keep LTW safe. And again, the Baron may be in their eyes, or they might just look to clear some vision here. And this is something we saw... Um... Speed Demon have trouble on the last game you played Fiddle Six. I think they just try and play overly aggressive into these lanes. You want to catch them out while they're rotating to objectives, not while they're sitting in the mid lane. Yeah, nice pillar catches LTW. He's forced to use the ult on himself. Speed Demon has the ultimate again. He does not have the chance to go golden as Endrit finds the kill, but they're looking to trade it back. A double kill there for the blue squad as Endrit will fall with a double of his own. A three for two in favor of this blue squad as they sit down Razor Lore. Four members dead and again, Pepperoni Tomato the only remaining member of this squad. Baron out of their eyes, they're looking to take some of this base. And that's the Fiddle Six Ultimate we wanted to see. Like, right, they're caught in the river here. They don't have the vision. He can get a huge Crow Storm off, terrify a few targets, and cause mass chaos. The problem is, if, if you're just trying to sit and clear mid wave, um, the other team doesn't really have to come to you. Just wait for the objectives. That's the true power of Fiddlesticks. And you can see the other teams are learning about it too, right? Uh, as they know if they can just bait out a fight a little bit in mid lane, they can just walk away, right? They're going to be trying to force onto you. So, so Speed Demon has to be really careful and really patient with the usage of his ability because they don't have... Uh, a, a lot of tools to really force fights unless the enemy team is, is you know forcing it themselves so just be patient with the fiddlesticks uh, it's something that i've i've learned too i mean i heard keelan talking about it and other members are saying well after you know 20 minutes you kind of learned the strengths and weaknesses of the fiddlesticks so if you can just force them to make a bad ultimate decision or try and force the fight then it's really good for you like they had done mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately his ultimate is such a low, low cooldown with ultimate hunter they are going to catch him here yeah, they are trying to catch him out. He goes golden for now. Keelan onto the back line, though. Endred under fire as he will fall. Now rampaging is Keelan. He jumps away to safety, and LTW and Keelan are on the wrong side of the map. But here comes the speeding Urgot into the fight. What can he find? Speed Demon finds a fear onto two. Pepperoni Tomato will fall, and the Beyond Death picks up Doc. And this should just be a clean wipe. It's four members for zero in favor of the blue team. Simply Gank is unstoppable. And Haas is right there with them. They're trying to find Razor Lore. The Aegis Assault only going to buy some time. But the Ace comes through, and this could be the game. And this is so tanky, members, if you think about it. I mean, Talon has Conqueror, has this Death Dance. They have three Mountain Drakes at that point. They just couldn't finish off the kill on the Fiddlesticks. He buys enough time with, you know, a Terrify and then his Sonyas. They couldn't kill the Lissandra, just barely gets away. Keelan ends up finding the Syndra on the back line, and then they're able to flash and escape out, turn the fight as Itos uh, just runs it down, and it looks like they're just going to go for the end on the Nexus here. Yeah, Endrit, the only member alive. Pepperoni Tomato comes out of the base, but it is too late as the blue team will win the first game of the day. And I mean, and that was in style. That was honestly not what I was expecting. Um, I think uh, both sides had a clear game plan and whoever followed it more clearly um, came out ahead. And that, that's what you saw. You saw a few mistakes from both sides. That's 
I mean, they haven't been playing for for a long time, and they're coming together with champions they're probably not familiar with. But I am super impressed by Speed Demon on this Fiddlesticks. He made a few mistakes, right? When we're talking about being too aggressive with an ultimate into the mid lane, but but once they figured out the game plan and roped it back in, it was just so effective. So effective, and I mean, can we just talk about you? You said he bought some time. Not only did he buy time. He got away and then ulted back into the <laughs> fight. Just had absolutely no fear. And then the the funniest thing, watching Haas teleport in and just go flying into the team. And that's one of those things when you're fed on Urgot, you just don't die. So you have no fear. You can run into four. And when everybody's focusing, you know, trying to fight front to back, you have the Keelan, you know, jumping around on Talon. You have Simply Gank on this Ezreal just bouncing around, spitting out the damage. I think finding a triple kill in that last fight, running down everybody. Such a clean fight. And like I said, they, they played it perfectly. Everybody had their game plan. We saw Team 2 try and play it front to back. We saw Team 1 just, you know, throw all caution to the wind. And, and we have to fight scattered. We have to fight all over the place because that's what, you know, is in our play style here. That's what's in a in our cards and uh and they got it done which is extremely fun to watch man the the just i love this i love this this is so <laughs> different it's just so different than watching traditional you know league of legends you're you're seeing it, it, you're like you're getting into the mind of the players and and as like you said you know 20 minutes in you learn about the fiddle sticks and what it can do but then you're also you know watching and reading and seeing what the players are trying to put together and, and you see the cogs turning and, and it's just it's it's fantastic to watch yeah i mean this this specific game you know it's a little bit of controlled chaos on the side of uh, the blue side right you have lissandra support ezreal bot lane talon fiddlesticks and ergot i mean you have this terrifying squad where there's so many fears you can get off between the fiddlesticks and ergot if they chain their ultimates correctly and talon's just running around the fight ezreal's just you know arcane shifting everywhere and lissandra's just buying time with frozen tomb whether aggressively or defensively and just they have so much awkward mobility like you don't think about it somehow that little six survived at the end um but his ultimate can be used over these walls keelan on this town can jump over walls really the only one is it's hoss but it didn't matter because he was so huge in these fights comes up cleaning out some of these fights even when you think he's picked off um, they can't finish it out uh, but on the other side i want to give credit to endrich here and pepperoni tomato this this kill bot lane that we're seeing is just insane early on uh in, in these drafts too they're picking these out and Using Syndra not only as a flex, but so effectively in this lane, if you get caught out by one ability, you are done. There is like one of those zero counter plays. I mean, and if that didn't work, you still have that outplay button. Fortunately, uh, Blue Team was able to counter this um, with, with this Talon and Fiddle Six, right? If you terrify them or Keelan just turns invisible with his Talon R, you can't really target him. Um, and the mm -hmm. other member I'd say is Doc. He's been so crucial as this Trundle character. I mean, it's, it's fine. Speed Demon obviously has this Fiddle Six counter, but if if you're not familiar with that or you, if you're not totally confident, um, Doc is just kind of ignoring some of these other jungle matchups. Obviously, Fiddlesticks comes into team play, but Doc is just providing so much pressure on the map, just ganking left and right, finding out these picks, getting first blood, taking early objectives. It's insane. So I would like to commemorate, you know, all of these players for just doing so well. Absolutely. Everybody playing to their strengths. And, uh, and we've got more games to play. We have five more games for the day. We've got the second game of the day coming up here in just a moment. But we're going to jump to a quick break while we get all of these players loaded up into the lobby. So make sure you guys aren't going everywhere. Make sure you guys do drop a follow so you can get all this giveaway information. And when we come back, we will have picks and bands for game number two. Good night. 
As a child, you would wait and watch from far away, but you always knew that you'd be the one that would buy a little thing. And you
Alrighty, guys, we are back. I should say guys and gals because not only do we have uh, guys and gals watching the stream, but we also have guys and gals playing throughout these tryouts. And uh, wow, everybody is performing phenomenally. What I want to do, uh, you know, as we get closer to maybe the end of our segment here, Jay, or or the end of the day, I would like to ask you for some standout players. I don't want to do it yet because we've got a couple more games to cast <laughs> as we do have game two coming underway here in just a moment the lobbies are filled and we're gonna get right into it but looking at these teams here do you have some standouts from yesterday's performances uh we do have Keelan in here he's he'll be subbing in um who would have been foreign guy here on this squad so we did just see him on this talon um i have a little bit of a closer relationship to him he's actually my brother so i see him quite a bit we're trying to be non-partial but it's it's pretty difficult here in some of those vladimir and rise performances where he's getting mm -hmm. quadra quadra kills um but he has been talking to a lot of these different players um a lot of them have been getting along quite well and they've been you know very friendly to each other um on one side we do have itch john in the top lane here you saw some very dominating performances even when he wasn't hard carrying you did see his silas game um he was solo killing that orn that wukong game was turning these fights around doing very well with keelan there just uh, able to you know basically 2v5 some of those fights with i mean the other the rest of his team was doing quite well it was simply ganks um he was doing great on, on these ed's real picks i would like to see a little bit more diversity in some, some of these other champions um I, i'm curious to see what the asian invasion does right we did see that kane gameplay well it was a little rough early um later on to the game you saw him just full assassin mode on this ross like jumping onto this forest killing both galio and Faris. Mm -hmm. uh tupac um has uh, some interesting picks we'll see if they can follow through uh, i'm I'm curious to see what Brutalizer did, right? Because I saw some Gragas last night, one of my all-time favorite champions, maybe a little bit rusty uh, on some of the Gragas combos, but his ganks were very, very good. So we'll, we'll see what's pulled out. We have a set ban, um, which is one of John's, it's John's notorious champion. So I'm not too surprised. Graves and Olaf um, follow up lands on the blue side here. Yeah, Graves and Olaf, so targeting the jungle. We also saw, I believe, like you said, the, the Gragas for Rip Brutalizer I think you had a couple of games on Trundle as well, and it's going to be banned away. So they're just targeting Brutalizer uh, <laughs> immediately here. And whenever I see this guy's name, I can't help but just see the the Brutalizer icon every time I think about this guy's name. And at first I was thinking, what does Rip Brutalizer even mean? But obviously speaking on the item that used to build into Yomu's <laughs> Ghost Blade as the Bard now taken away. I'm pretty sure Tupac played that yesterday, and it was really good. He he was awesome on that pick. Yeah, I'm excited to see. It looks like it is a fiddlesticks uh, picked up right away on the blue side. Um, probably might going to itch John in the top lane. Maybe the Asian invasion can pick that up. I and mean, we did have quite a bit of downtime between games. Um, so it's it's after it, even if you were just watching the stream, you can see how effective it can be. Maybe learning mm -hmm. a few things like myself. Soraka answered on the other side. Uh, one other player I would like to note would be uh, Karina here. Um, I, I don't remember, but she was, if if everyone else does, but um, they were playing against this Mordekaiser in the top lane with Asian Invasion, and that Mordekaiser was going 1v5, but Karina on that Ash was just out kiting mm -hmm. the whole team, pumping out damage. So I'm excited to see what she has picked up uh, here in the bot lane, because I think it's a very underrated player. Um, a lot of our ADCs um, haven't been able to, to shine as heavily, being put on um, a lot of Ezreal picks here in, in these games, yep. but they have been carrying some fights just not as flashy as, as some of the other players right who are diving the back line but i think a large part of this meta is is some utility focus adcs that are not you know 1v mine sometimes we'll see the mf we'll see you know the forest picked up which is a lot of utility and lethality and poking uh but they do so much damage and so much for their team so uh, maybe keep a closer eye on, on some of these ad carries here in these next few games yeah and the last time we had seen the the Varus into i think it was actually ash and uh purple ace back on the soraka you just heal through the poke so it's not too bad they're just gonna play the safe lane as galio locked in uh i mean we're seeing a lot of champions coming through here that again could be flexed it's john played the fiddle six yesterday could be flexed here into the jungle galio can be played in the mid lane can also be played down in that support role which is where i'm kind of expecting it to go with the varus here as nasus gets locked in and you know, if you don't necessarily have an answer for the dog up top, he is just going to run away with the game. So I think yesterday we were seeing it banned away from Evil Monkey, and now today we're going to get to see it. And this 
uh, I mean, I think this could be one of those games where the doors just open up, right? You open the gates, as, as Trick2G would say. <laughs> exactly. I mean, this Galio pick is, is like you say, is probably going to the support pick. It does seem to be paired very well with this forest, right? Galio can be played very defensively. And if he can roam with his ultimate, it's it's very good for the rest of the team. Looks like Vladimir is going to be banned away from Keelan. You have Yasuo and Trindamir, um just targeted banned away from Plague Inc. We know that he's played a lot of those champions. The Trindamir mm -hmm. in, in that first game was was pretty scary. It, it, it fell off a little bit, but I think that was mostly due to the composition played. And Diana's going to round out the blast ban on red side. But they have picked up this Nasus, which um has i guess has been banned every single game versus evil monkey before um but we have seen some comfort picks work out very well like the urga it's not super meta in the top lane but we saw its hoss popping off in both games mm -hmm. we got it um we saw keelan on the talon pick and, or even on the rise that you don't see very often that did very well it's john on fiddlesticks top lane that has done very well even ended on cindera bot lane which is a little bit more meta but they can use to reflex has also done extremely well so maybe going for comfort picks on some of these champions and, and able to carry just through the raw skill alone and show that they have a little bit more diversity and more tools to work with that you wouldn't normally think about and that could come in clutch in some of these situations yeah and with keelan being the the substitute here it does look like they are going to save that last pick for him here in the mid lane as the elise gets locked in for brutalizer We'll get to see him play the Spider Queen, one of my favorite junglers, uh, and an early game jungler at that, right? So maybe you just leave Nasus up top in his on his island, and then we might be able to see some some really strong mid jungle synergy with this Elise, followed by whatever that they do pick up for Keelan as Kane locked in again. Asian invasion. We talked about it. Didn't have the best showing. He did turn it around, but we're hoping to see a better early game from him on this Kane this time around. He's looking for a redemption arc here. Now, he does have some different tools to work with. I mean, I imagine, you know, Kane. Ooh, if they pick up this Oriana too. If you think about the all in with this Kane, Galio, Oriana, and, and even Fiddlesticks, if he chooses mm -hmm. to go in, um, I think Galio and Fiddlesticks actually provide huge amounts of peel um, if they play more defensively. Ooh, looks like a Kastin hovered on the red side here. They do have a lot of magic damage, and they don't really have an answer from this Oriana to really deal with it. Yeah, and the casting and another good roaming tool as we we saw Keelan be able to bounce around and whether it be exiting or entering fights on the Talon, it is going to be the pie. <laughs> okay. I, you know, Keelan, yesterday he was playing all these scaling mid lane mid laners. He had been talking to his team. I know we had loaded in and, you know, he had talked about, guys, this is not my play style. I, I, I really want to be more aggressive. I want to play some of these champions. You saw the Talon last time. No now we're gonna see the bike which i don't think is too bad right you needed at least to be able to work with someone you had an ezreal soraka bot lane how are you gonna gank with that lane right there's not a ton of follow up you have nasus in the top lane just wants to farm uh but this pike in the mid lane this can be really deadly if this elise and pike start popping off um on, on the other side it, it looks like it's kane top that is one thing i was gonna mention right like you had it's john has some of these dark technologies available like fiddlesticks mm -hmm. like kane that he really wants to work with um, into Nasus, it, it might be all right. Um, you do need to get that farm, uh, that form and farm for both sides. Um, so, looks okay, like they I... weren't able to trade in time. So we'll we'll see yeah. what the the picks end up being. Okay, they said mid DC. Am I bad luck? What's going on here? Okay, <laughs> this is it's been so hard to piece some of these games together. Uh, I don't know if it was necessarily a DC, but I know the client does have uh, it. Just issues with the trades not necessarily going through. You know, mm -hmm. we we're all familiar with the league client here, and unfortunately, we're not in the Riot Studios where everything is, you know, rainbows and butterflies. So we should just be able to run it back here. Should be fairly quick. Uh, and yeah, we saw everything shake down. I do love again just the uh opposite of standardized a uh, word that is opposite of standardized picks these just <laughs> off meta picks um coming through right it's john kind of showing that hey fiddle six is strong and, and i can play it in the top lane and a lot of the top laners in this meta right now are run at you and, and try and beat you down top laners you've got you know even the maokai who's gonna jump on you in this matchup nasus who withers you runs at you because it's basically a stun and it's john will have the answer to that by just using that fear the terrify to make sure that he is getting away so uh the just the creativeness from these squads i do think if i'm remembering remembering the draft correctly that the red side probably has the the better scaling 
in the at least in the the Ezreal down in the bottom lane and the Nasus up in the top lane, which could help or hurt. And I, I'm glad they picked up the not necessarily the picking up the pike, but anything <laughs> other than the the scaling mid laner for Keelan here, because not mm -hmm. only does it show uh, diversity in his champion pool, what he is willing to do and being willing to work with the team. But now the Pike and the Elise can help kind of catalyst this team through the early game, allow the, the bot lane to scale up and allow the top lane to scale up into the lake. Yeah, they definitely needed something to work with this Elise. They had it picked up and, and though I probably would have liked to see the Cassidy, I don't think the blue side had a real answer for that besides, you know, like this Fiddlesticks and Galio. Um, if they do choose to go in, I think the, the Cassidy could just one shot the Varus and Oriana and deal with that um, and the rest of it later. I do think it's important that they have some sort of synergy to work with the Elise, right? Because you want to get some ganks off, you want, you want to put people behind, and the only option she had if you had picked something like that uh, was to either counter gank this cane or invade the cane like crazy. Um, or fiddlesticks. I mean, we had some <laughs> we we had some confusion as to where some of the champions were going, knowing that they couldn't trade. Um, whether that was the, the client not being able to trade. Sometimes you can't edit your rune. Sometimes you can't even see um, anything else because you get DC'd. So uh, mm -hmm. we will see uh, when they they reload this and, and get back in the game <laughs> where the champions are all going. I it still might be this cane top lane. I know John had had played a game or two of it. Um, so we'll we'll see. It's. It is interesting. I again, I am not a huge fan of Kane right now. I, I played quite a few games of it, but it just seems so hard to play in a competitive meta where you might not get your form for for twenty minutes just just based off of uh, the lane priority and ganking, especially versus strong junglers. But if it's in the top lane, you will get that form rather soon into this Nasus. Uh, but we'll see if it can scale as well as this Nasus, who has a Soraka on the other side. Um, but we will see how it goes. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just kind of dumbfounded with with some of the things we're seeing and, and really excited, not dumbfounded as in disappointed, but just really interested in seeing how they play it out, right? Because before we had picked these fiddlesticks, and I didn't know how it was going to work. Worked really well for Edge on the top lane and has worked phenomenally for Speed Demon in the jungle. So I'm just curious to see how the rest of the laning goes out. Obviously, uh, junglers could have a huge impact on this game as they both kind of want to gank and catch people out. But it's this hike in the mid lane that could really throw a wrench in, in both drafts. Absolutely. The pike is, I mean, can be a jungler in itself. Again, it's just another roaming laner. He boogies around the map, especially when you build the Mobies. You've got the the uh, the Phantom Undertow, or a, a Phantom Undertow, I believe, is, or maybe the Ghostwater Dive that just allows him to, to kind of move around the map invisible. Mm -hmm. it, it's, I mean, it, it looks like Keelan's probably been watching a little too much uh, G, G2 esports <laughs> in in this pike coming out but uh, we are back into picks and bands and now we will actually get to see because i will say okay so it does look like kane in the top lane asian invasion gonna be picking up the jungle uh fiddlesticks i'm assuming that with the dc means they didn't trade mid and support and it would be oriana mid galio support but mm -hmm. it could go either way it, oriana support isn't you know the uh it's probably not the best place to put it. It's definitely off meta for sure, but it, it can be that, and it does add to the poke, you know, just kind of throwing out that ball and always having to pay attention to where Oriana does have the uh, the orb. Yeah, and we look at some of the win conditions uh, of this team. I assume on the left side, you probably want to play uh, a little bit more around this top side of the map, right? While Nasus does have this weathering, he gets strong early game. He's not the strongest, and if Fiddlesticks just provides the CC, Kane has quite a bit of damage, and you want to get your form as fast as possible. So maybe if they don't go for the kills on the Nasus, maybe they continue just to, to harass him so it's John can unlock his Ross forms right away. On the other side of the map, you do have this Pike, right? You want this Elise to gank this Pike or this Pike uh, to be roaming with this Elise. So if even if we don't see pressure in the mid lane, you might just see him um, push the wave and roam. He wants to pick up an early Tiamat. I think, if anything, they should provide some of this pressure, right? Oriana will probably take phase rush in this matchup. Uh, maybe, well, probably not cleanse, right? Because it would really just be the Elise that's trying to gank you. So you might see mm -hmm. a defensive summoner like Exhaust or maybe Barrier. Um, take him with a Nimbus Cloak so she can just run run around people in circles. Um, this bot lane matchup, Varus and Galio. Varus is probably doing mostly offensive things. Whereas Ezreal and Soraka can actually poke back at this Galio quite effectively. And Soraka can also heal the Ezreal or herself, depending on who Varus chooses to target. So it's going to be difficult, I think, on all sides of the map for every single lane to to really uh, capitalize on their game plan and on their strength. So I'm not really sure who has the edge on this draft. Um, just by looking on it, I would probably say the you know blue side, just because you have Varus, Galio, Oriana, and Fiddlesticks. 
uh, the cane. We'll see. I mean, we <laughs> it's just one of those picks that uh, we haven't seen popped off quite yet, but it could. Mm -hmm. Like, I have full faith that Ishan might have some of this really effectiveness. Um, and on the right side, I think a lot of this depends on Karina and, and uh, the Purple Ace, really, to, to carry their team ahead as it gets longer and longer, because Evil Monkey just wants to scale, and there are some shenanigans going on in the jungle and, and uh, mid-side. So um, as, when we load into game here, we'll be taking a short break to, to sync up some of our spectation, and uh, we'll head it over to you, Tanner, so we can get started. Absolutely. So we've got the compositions in front of us, and, and we did have quite a bit of delay, unfortunately, because of that DC. But if you heard it, guys, Jay is given the advantage to the blue side. And if you didn't know, if you weren't here a moment ago, Keelan's his brother. So I'm sure he's going to feel a little salty about that one. But I am very excited to see how this breaks down. Uh, I mean, you broke it down perfectly. What I am uh, super pumped for, hopefully, is in the four picks you have on the blue side. Fiddlesticks, Oriana, Vars, Galio, all going to work very well. Galio can find his way in. Uh, good ball delivery. Kane, I think, in this situation is going to be uh, just like Keelan was on that Talon, where he's going to kind of be dashing around, you know, trying to find knockups where he can and just be super disruptive, uh, not necessarily playing that kill-heavy Kane where, you know, he wants to be... Uh, super fed and, and super built here. So we'll have to see how it breaks down. But as Jay said, we do have to jump to a quick break before jumping into the second game of the day. So make sure you grab your snacks, grab your drinks, and we will catch you guys here in just a sec.
And here we go, game number two underway. We've got some spicy picks in this one, and we'll see how it shakes out as both teams moving as five on opposite sides of the map. Again, my name is Tanner Metro, and I am joined by Blue Jay. And how are you feeling about this early game here? <laughs> it looks like both sides are going for a bit in Invade. I mean, they both have a pretty strong level one. Pike um, is probably the stronger end of that, but I mean, Galio could get either a knockout, a taunt, or uh, maybe the, the Fiddlesticks uses a Q, which would be pretty bad for his clear, but uh, we'll see. Maybe just get some vision on. I mean, Kane has very decent level one with Conquer if he keeps using his Q. Um, but I've pretty much talked your ear off for both of yours and you, Tanner, about uh, some of these matchups. What are you most excited to see from uh, some of these lanes? I am, and, and we've been talking about him a lot, so I apologize, but he just keeps pulling out the sauce and Keeland on the pike is something that I'm going to keep my eye on because it's such a volatile mid lane when you pair it up with Brutalizer on the Elise and then the roaming potential. I'm really hoping to see him roam. Pike is, you know, has huge executes. I'm sad to see that Plague has the teleport here. Sure may get pushed out of the lane. I think Barrier would have been a good choice if in a situation where Keelan is going to drop that ultimate to death. Oh, you have the barrier to kind of bat it out. Unfortunately, not going to do that here. So, on the mid lane, because on the side of that, if Oriana gets ahead early, starts getting a couple of kills, absolutely pop off and carry a fight. But as I say that, Keelan already out on top. Yeah, Keelan going for a quick trade there in the mid lane. Uh, it's John on the top lane is also going for a good trade onto Evil Monkey, who, what we're talking about, summoner spells, he has Ghost and Heal with Spellbook. So he's looking to be playing uh, fairly aggressive, maybe keep track of those summoner timings, letting his team know what he has available. Maybe he wants to bring out an Ignite, maybe he wants to bring out an Exhaust, a Barrier, but you just have to be very careful playing against Spellbook because a lot of times it'll just be very underrated. And Keelan still moving forward with that bone skewer and, and then the, the halo blades on top so he's able to get those quick auto attacks one variation that i see here that has changed up from the first game is electrocute on fiddlesticks last game we saw speed demon run that dark harvest can't help with the scaling you know into late the electrocute now should just be pretty bursty for him so we'll have to see how he's able to piece that together uh, it, it's not necessarily the easiest to he auto slow his abilities aren't very quick so uh, I'm interested mm -hmm. to see how the electrocute pays off here. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I think Fiddle Six has so many runes available that he can use. Um, I think maybe next patch we'll see more Predator Fiddle Six. I can understand mm -hmm. why we won't see Predator Fiddle Six right now, just because um, in, in competitive play, it's not as likely you're going to be ganking 24 7. Wow, and Keelan, man, he just cannot miss. He ding level two. He's, he's got the bone skewer, and he's just playing so aggressive. Now, level four and he's still chucking him out plague ink again maybe the teleport he knew something i didn't because he's gonna have to go back and teleport back here soon <laughs> so, uh, having that uh having that summoner spell will be nice he does have the corrupting potions that is going to be ticking down for now as elise grabs that top crab and makes the way down brutalizer and invasion may find each other in the jungle here blue side does have prio in this bot lane cocoon goes wide but it doesn't matter the smite comes through and that is going to be secured by Brutalizer. But the fight may ensue. Tupac trying to go in. Does find the taunt under Brutalizer. Brutalizer in human form. Cannot repel. Forced to flash away. The Ignite is on. Looks to go back in for the damage. Uses that repel defensively. But too late. As Fiddlesticks picks up the first blood here. But two are going to be traded back for this bottom lane. Keelan with a nice roam here as well. And now Plague Inc. is here. But... In a 1v3, Karina going to jump over the wall here. Flash still available for the Oriana. Is going to get zoned out there by the Equinox, but will be safe for now. So a nice roam and a nice follow here from Plague Inc. He did have to use that teleport as Keelan heads right back into the mid lane. Yep, and I would say net positive for the red side here, right? You burned the, the Oriana teleport. You burn all the, the summoners on the bot side of the map. The top side's looking a little risky. John's going to be pushing in this wave. Might go for a dive. Of course, Evil Monkey does have heal and ghost, so it's probably too uh, very safe here. But the Ezreal picks up double buffs, which is not what you want to see on, on, on the blue side, right? Because now his Q, uh, he's basically going to have no mana cost, but also that burn applies on his on his Q here. So it's going to be hurting quite a bit. He's going to reset. Uh, did pick up a kill. Kion picked up a kill as well, and at least gets two assists. 
while the Fiddlesticks did pick up uh, one kill, but has no flash. So he's going to be very vulnerable to this Elise. And Pike, if they can just push out a wave and roam into his jungle, he's going to have to look out for some of these opportunities where, you know, the jungler starts getting ganked. Absolutely. Fiddlesticks, uh, the one thing that we didn't see last game, I think that could have helped so heavily to put Speed Demon behind was just not being punished early. He's very squishy. You know, he needs items to be strong. He wants to complete the jungle item. And Elise is just a champion to do that. Can, you know, throw out the with the, the rest of the uh, the combo there, go into spider form, and just absolutely delete somebody with the burst. Now, looking for something on the top side, but John did ding six, and that right there is just a problem in itself. You were talking about the turret diving. I'm interested to see, once these summoner spells change up for Evil Monkey, how John will you know, push in because he reset turret aggro all by himself. So it's not going to be just stacking up damage. You know, the, the dive ability mm -hmm. for this cane is there. But the Nasus can be so hard to kill, especially with heal here. Yep. Uh, Keelan does have the Tiamat picked up, so he's more than likely going to start roaming here pretty soon. Fiddlesticks is on the top side, maybe looking uh, to make a play on this pike, because if he goes in, you know that he can't come out. But I'd like to see him, after he takes the Scuttle Crab, maybe work with Itch John here for a tower dive. I think Fiddlesticks and, and Kane can bring most of the damage that they need. Maybe they'll just wait for Fiddlesticks to... Uh, to, to come online here at level six for that crow storm um like you were talking about one of the weakest parts is his early game and that's why you probably won't see him you know just a blindside pick like they had here because it's not versus a trundle who wants to duel you it's not versus some of these champions um that that don't have good kits to counter um the fiddle six whereas this elise i mean you saw like if she can land that cocoon she has so much damage um, that she doesn't really worry about being feared or anything. She can just, uh, just mm -hmm. keep consistently doing damage, hit that burst before uh, you can turn on her. So we'll, we'll see how the rest of this matchup works out. We have Cloud Drake up here. Um, pretty good for both sides. I, I would think um, this Elise just ends up taking it just because she has priority in most of her lanes. Um, and, and we'll see how this goes. Let's see if Keelan can hit some of these bone skewers. Uh, early here in the game, we did just see he had his mid lane counterpart just downloaded, hitting them left and right, but actually taking a huge trade there in the mid lane. Yeah, a lot of damage traded back, so Plague Inc. getting the better half of that. And and both of these junglers slouch when it does come to taking the dragon all by themselves as well. So if they have the vision, we see the red side does. He can kind of try and jump in there and just sneak that one away. As Asian Invasion gets pulled back, gets stunned up. The cocoon is there, and the CC is just too much as Keelan has picked off the jungler. Now it's John trying to do what he can. The ghost comes through, though. Uses that Reaping Slash to get away, but the siphoning strike is just too strong nasus finds one for his squad on the top side and just as you said the dragon gonna go for the red squad yep and here we go right this fiddle six ends up getting ganked by this pike and elise um pretty much what we wanted to see uh, on the top side nasus has just picked up his sheen so he's gonna be very powerful yeah mid lane getting spicy here plague has kind of figured out the uh, the recipe here or the the sauce that keelan is bringing trying to stay safer avoiding some of those skill shots which without the plague skewer it is pretty hard you know keelan does have the the range stun there on the pike but gonna be incredibly difficult to get in and again without that bone skewer there isn't as much threat there isn't as much pressure and you're in a range into melee matchup and more ariana's auto attacks start to hurt once she chains a few together mm -hmm. so finally starting to get the better half trades one thing that is different here than what we've seen today is Glenn actually playing the on hit Varus here as Keelan makes it with the top side these are the roams we were talking about in the shadow step is there for John he does dash away and manages to get away from the stun the ignite is down but no avail there John will get away from that one only having to use his flash and on K not the end of the world he is a very mobile champion yep so this is kind of more or less the opposite we saw from q on that first game right at first uh everyone's going to the mid lane now he's dominated the mid lane by himself so he's gonna finally be starting to roam all over the map i think it was just really unfortunate that he got a good roam off early right he was able to pick up the tia map before um this oriana could pick up a lost chapter and keep pushing in these waves so he's gonna really start pressuring this top side yeah going back in the Death from below, not gonna find it yet, and Itchon might actually turn this one around, Ooh. but Pfizer is there and he finds the kill. Just didn't have the execution damage. Maybe Itchon could have gotten his ultimate off just in time, but Brutalizer just finds the cocoon, flashes over and, and secures the kill. Would have been really close, I think, um, if the purple ace 
uh, had ulted a little bit sooner, it would have been as close, um, but does use that ultimate pretty effectively. They do have a Cloud Drake, so it's not that big a deal um, for the Sorok to be using that ultimate um, on cooldown um, if, it's a, if it's a risky trade. I mean, sometimes um, in higher competitive play, you'll see <laughs> Soraka just ult to top people off later because it, it gets so low. Um, the next Drake coming out is Mountain Drake, so I'm not sure if we'll see too much content contestation around there looks like john going for a heavy train the top side yeah finds a knock up here he does have that rost form but evil monkey with the fury of the sand staying knights and tanky the heels come through unfortunately on the bottom side chains of corruption you're going to go wide but agent invasion makes his way up top to help out john the fear is there and it is going to push evil monkey back to the turret now karina under fire quen just pushing forward he's got the slow from the bilgewater color says he had to snipe no he doesn't it splits the uprights and everybody stays safe across the map Oh, and forcing out the flash, Purple Ace flashes forward onto this Varus who has to flash in return, but you're seeing some of the power of Karina and Purple Ace, but, you know, the Asian Invasion setting up for a topside gank here. Yeah, not going in on the knockup there, looking to find some damage from the outside. The fear comes through, the damage should follow. As the Grievous Wounds are on, Evil Monkey might not be safe, doesn't have the ultimate, doesn't have the heal. He's just going to look to try and trade it back with the killed Asian Invasion, and Kaelin with another room on the bottom side, Tupac had no GA and Galio had no GA as he will fall. So kills across the map, a one for one, but Red Squad still on top. Oh no, Plague Inc. It's a 1v3, buddy. A huge shockwave on the backside looking to trade the kill, but Karina will find it. Now on a killing spree on this Ezreal and what a turn of events there. Karina really coming out on top. Plague Inc. finds a huge shockwave, but that Guardian coming in clutch, not a rune you want at that moment, right? Like, they just have just enough health to survive all that. They flash in over. Q1 finding out these roams and working out huge. I'd like to, you know, Karina and Purple Ace just taking this 2v2 right to them. 3-0 and on this Ezreal. Finally get to see her pop off here on this pick. Uh, this is definitely the best Ezreal I think we've seen in the in the tournament. Before, they just had to play safe, but they're really mm -hmm. taking it to Quen and Tupac here in the bot lane. Yeah, I was uh, double on Chandra there when I talked about the turn of events. Karina on the world just said is able to play aggressive and actually build a lead in the lane rather than waiting for the team fighting and the lead kind of just coming through, you know, picking up a couple kills here and there. So now when we get to the team fighting, this Ezreal is going to be a huge problem. And we already saw how much damage the True Shot Barrage does when it almost killed Quen from like a quarter HP when he uh, had to blow Flash away from Purple Ace. And now things have stabilized, but the Dragon is spawning soon as Tupac goes forward on a Brutalizer. Chains of Corruption will lock down the Elise. Can't repel while you're rooted, but he will go Spider form for now. And Karina just going to move forward and force everybody back. Yeah, Purple Ace just keep him topped off there so they can't all in. I mean, this Varus is going Bork, so it just doesn't have the all-in of Lethality build, which... Uh, I'm not too sure about this. I mean, yes, you're against the Nasus, but you already have the Kane that's going to be building like a Black Cleaver, and it's going to be trying to shred these tanks. You have the Fiddlesticks going to be doing some consistent damage, so I probably would have liked to see uh, uh, the Lethality build. Dragon has started up here. Tupac goes deep, finds a taunt onto one. It is the Soraka, but she uses the ult, gets it off, but it doesn't matter. She will fall, but immediately the kills are traded back. Keelan popping off with the death from below, and he is just not done yet. Evil Monkey with the staff will beat him down, and it's a two for four overall. It's John does manage to trade it back, and he's a very tanky Rost, but you're not tankier than the Nasus's damage. He will fall a three for five in favor of the Red Squad, and Dragon next up. And all the key members on red side are picking up these kills. Keelan finds two deaths from below. Has his dust blade completed these Moby boots. So he's going to be roaming around the map even more. Great job by Evil Monkey and, and Karina just staying alive. Going through these team fights. You thought they might have a good turn when Tupac hits that taunt on the purple ace. But a good ultimate on the Seraka keeps everyone topped off. And they keep fighting long enough. Um, that they can turn the whole fight around. Pick up the Drake here. And it looks like Inferno Soul is going to be on the table for both teams. Infernal Soul is going to feel good. It's going to add to the extra damage that Karina does have from that poke. And I mean, you talked about it. We, we brought up the, the lethality Varus. I think trying to match some of the scaling in this lane. But you see the problem when you get behind. And it's not that Quinn is doing bad. It's just that Karina is able to find kills, right? 404. Quinn's only died once. It's been the Galio who has fallen multiple times. And Quinn playing on the back foot doesn't necessarily have the money the resources for these items which is what the lethality build allows him to do now we do see some 
counter jungling on the top side brutalizer is up there and john has pushed up pretty far with no ward so has to be careful we might also see a dive in the mid lane i love what elise brings to the table just as a whole i want to say dive to the mid lane keelan heard me and he moved <laughs> now he's on the bottom side playing jungle here as he waits in the bush asian invasion here as well and he does get spotted out there by those wards so if the pink ward is negating a vision ward or, or a, a, a control ward not a yeah vision ward as keelan comes into the bottom side doesn't find the stun but here comes the alt from asian invasion they pick up purple ace so there's no healing around the squad and quen finally finds one for himself karina trying to kite it out on the way back but all alone in a 1v3 just gonna find a bit of poke damage as brutalizer makes his way down but is just gonna walk away from that one two for zero in favor of blue yeah, and Asian Invasion just senses something's amiss here on the bot lane. They have Pike missing. They don't wear Elises. They think, you know, Karina, Purple Ace will step up a little bit too far. And, and while they don't do that, they try an aggressive play. Oh, the ultimate just goes just wide. But Asian Invasion's still on the bot side while the top side's duking it out. Yeah, and Brutalizer finally makes his way down. Finds a nice silence there. The cocoon comes through, but it's going to get eaten up by nothing. As Brutalizer now has to be careful. The Redemption comes down. The Repel not going to be used. And Asian Invasion finds a kill. And now Karina in a bad spot as a cleanse comes through. And unfortunately, she will fall. The shutdown going over to Quen. And again, we see this Fiddlesticks just taking over these games. So... Taking over games, Evil Monkey trying to pull off the 1v2. Plague trying to get it done for his team. He sees Keelan roaming, he tries to match. But Evil Monkey does pick up the 1v1, or one for one in a 2v1. And on the bottom side, Rome, Keelan still manages to get it done, trading the kills back. We are 10 to 15 in kills, five kills in favor of this red side. And the gold lead is slowly increasing. Yep, we still have Rift Herald up. Um, no one's been taking this objective. Actually, I don't think we've seen a lot of importance on Rift Herald. I think a lot of it's about, you know, roaming and ganking and playing for Drakes. Um, but we do have to see, while, while that Phil Six was the boss side for, for quite a bit of the time, uh, Brutalizer did take most of the top side jungle, probably could have taken Rift, ended up going bot lane, but Asian Invasion just turning that gank around. You thought it was a good play, but just you can see the power of that Terrify. Again, just that point and click ability to Terrify and, and fear a target for, you know, close to two seconds. Um, doesn't have two seconds quite yet. It's, it's usually like... Uh, he, he starts maxing his, his Q ability pretty soon here, so it's probably, you know, a, a second and a half, but that max charge is just insane, which is going to be difficult both for Keelan and Brutalizer to deal with. A nice Equinox there by Purple Ace to stop the taunt, and Karina has the damage. Quen will fall, and now Tupac underneath the turret has to be careful as the poke damage is proving to be too much. We're 18 minutes into this game, and Muramana has been completed for Karina, and they should be able to net this first turret. That's insane. Usually it's like, you know, seven minutes later before that item is completed, but all those early kills allowed her to keep uh, pick that up early. It's just been stacking the whole time. We do have this Infernal Drake, you know, coming up in 50 seconds, but everyone's set up around the top side. Yeah, Keelan looking for the roam, but instead he finds two members. He's able to get away for now, but the Umbral Trespass comes through. Unfortunately, not going to find the kill. An Evil Monkey just turning on the jungler. The death from below. Not going to be enough just yet, but Evil Monkey does find the kill. Keelan will fall in the one for one, but Tupac comes up top and tries to turn around the fight. Winds of War ticking down in the double kill for John on this cane. He's got the Grievous Wounds to stop the healing from Evil Monkey. Yep, and Keelan just having a difficult time playing against some of these fiddlesticks, right? Because he wants to dive into the fight, but if he gets terrified and CC'd, it's it's hard to do anything. Especially since it's John just ulted him right there and just kept him uh, under vision, so the the pipe couldn't heal back to you know half health at least. He does get this top side turret. It hasn't been the first turret in the game, as we see the bot side has already been um, taken. But Infernal Drake comes up. We have Plague Inc. already just establishing some vision, just knowing uh, it's a little bit safer here right now while <laughs> a few characters are dead. But they are starting to set up around this objective. Yeah, the Infernal Drake has spawned. We'll have to see how this fight plays out again. Asian Invasion now has the completed Zanyas. Can look to find his way into the fight with the Galileo on top. A nice heap of damage. And, and we've seen it's John just be so survivable as a teleport comes through. They find Quen and immediately Ooh. get the kill. Evil Monkey comes flying through with the movement speed from that ghost. And now a member down. It will be hard to fight for this dragon as they look to turn their eyes onto it's John. Tupac gonna go in, finds a knockup onto Karina. Karina taken dangerously low here, is gonna get taken down by the command dissonance, but now it's John has been found out. The turret is gone 
as Keelan tries to go in. The knockup comes through, and Evil Monkey finds himself in a 1v2. The Shockwave can find a bit of damage, make it a 1v3 as Asian Invasion has made his way down. The healing is just not enough. Plague Inc. nets a kill. It's John will fall to the death from below, so we are all tied up here. The respawns have come through. There's the ultimate, Ooh. though, from Asian Invasion, trying to find the damage. Keelan not able to escape. Brutalizer running for his life. He will make it out a beautiful Equinox to stop the Fiddlesticks in his track. But as Quen comes out of the base, they have the man advantage, and this could be the Infernal Drake and the first Drake for the Blue Squad. There's a little bit of dissonance between um, this red side and the communication. You know, I mean, Karina just gets caught out there and destroyed, and that's your strongest member. I mean, of course you have this Pike that's, that's getting fairly ahead, mostly lethality, but this Ezreal that has a Triforce and Mirror Mana completed, like, that that champion right now is is the strongest in the game, hands down. So you have to play around Karina. So either they need to start communicating with her or, or the rest of the team needs to be playing around her. You know what I mean? It's just it's just too hard. And they just feel like they're just disrespecting this Fiddlesticks, which I think is, is happening quite a bit. Don't get me wrong. Fiddlesticks is a very difficult champion to play against. Such a unique play style like we've mentioned over and over. But these ultimates, just people face checking them into bush. Uh, been playing out of the fog of war has been huge and, and by now you would think most people in the tournament would uh, realize some of its strengths and, and start playing against it more effectively yeah the the just the miscommunication or the desync that we're seeing right the karina just being on the opposite side while the squad is pushing down for the pick onto it's john like you said if you just play around this ezreal even starting the fight up with just poke damage, we see how much Plague Inc. just gets chunked out 30% there from one combo. So they need to be careful here. And the vision scores, not that they're lacking, they do need to be higher. You have to pay attention to where Asian Invasion is because Fiddlesticks is a problem. No matter where he's coming from, you have to see, not only do you have to see him so you're not getting feared, but so you know the engage is coming. They need to pay more respect to this pick alone, as you said, and they need to find ways to peel for Karina because that right now is their catalyst through this late game uh, as she's already got the two completed items, got the Lucidity Boots, and again, the poke damage is just so much. Yep, and, and the worst thing that could happen is really if, if Blue Side here starts picking up Infernal Drakes. Because um, what if this Fiddle Six just ends up having this huge ultimate off? I mean, you don't really have anyone that can tank that. Like, you need your Soraka way far back, but if she gets caught in it, it's 100 to 0, right? If, can you imagine? four infernal drakes on a fiddlesticks ultimate who, who is already ahead in this game she'll just completely wipe out an entire team no problem before the the fear duration even wears off so they need to be very careful around this fiddlesticks pick i i, I do think tupac is finding some great picks uh even plague inc is finding some pretty good shockwaves here so uh not to say um that, that the the red side is playing you know terribly but the blue side is playing um quite phenomenally as well so uh let's just keep in mind that you know both sides have some ability to come back into the game and, and do have a game plan if they start playing towards these win conditions um the, the game's still up in the air yeah and this the the turnarounds that we're seeing i mean this is kind of what blue side had in mind as keelan gets knocked up by the shockwave almost taken down here will be able to escape for now but tupac waiting in the wings might look forward here the heels come through as the ball unfortunately not going to Fine, but he's just gonna go right in onto Plague Inc. and take the solo kill. What can he find on top? The stun comes through as Keelan makes his way out. Yep, again, just be careful of that fiddlesticks. He was almost taken down just by the, you know, the fear and the and the, the terrify ability, just uh, doing all that damage. Fortunately, fiddlesticks wasn't able to channel ult because he had to get in there right away, or else your Oriana was probably just gonna be obliterated. But he is actually targeting this fiddle right now. Yeah, going right in. The fear is there. We talked about the outplay button. Anybody who wants to move forward does fall short when running into that fiddle sticks and baron has started up now you've got karina making her way in as well keelan just still gonna push forward does not have the ultimate available will get feared and the heels will come through agent invasion gonna find the shutdown and now karina again under fire tupac coming through umbral trespass is there can she kite it away the cane is right on top and plague inc will fall to the mid laner Galio on top here, but Evil Monkey in the back line, deleting your AD carry. Somebody's got to help this guy out. A beautiful shockwave on the Brutalizer. He does make his way out just in time with a beautiful repel, but everybody's still alive. John will finally follow his Agent Evasion, goes back in onto Evil Monkey. Not needing the ultimate on Keelan means you have it for the fight. A four for two in favor of the Blue Squad. And Brutalizer not Ooh. done yet. He does get taunted up and taken down the ace for the Blue Squad. Baron maybe started prematurely as five members fall.
Yep, Asian Invasion is able to make his way all the way to the top side from that bot outplay. Um, they did have to burn Flash. It was pretty much a Flash for Flash there. Uh, but but Baron isn't able to be taken. They they think they have the damage, right? You have a Nasus. You have an Ezreal who is really huge at this point. Um, but I, I feel like they just need to go maybe for a little a few more picks. Uh, separate these fights. This fiddle six is huge at this point. So so trying to to take an objective without Baron, even on the backside of the pit, is is going to be really difficult. And yeah, now Keelan may be caught out here again. The teleports come through, so everybody will back off of this one, but it's John just running right in. He finds himself in the middle of three. He does have the Umbral Trespass, but he's not going to need it to get to safety just yet. And they need to find a way to peel for Karina. Karina needs to play a little bit safer, and unfortunately, when you have this composition that's looking for the picks forward, you don't necessarily have the peel in the back. So we'll have to see how they play this one out. Another Infernal Drake. This would put the Red Squad on to soul point and it's a soul they would love to have again for karina being so very strong karina gonna take out this ward as they look to start a fight they need to find the poke damage they need to find this fiddlesticks to make sure he's not getting a beautiful ultimate here it's john makes his way to the front line a very tanky rost as he moves forward bones you're not gonna find too much there pulls asian invasion back but he's all right to just walk away and we're just seeing the dance here as True Shot Barrage comes through, the cocoon goes out, and Justice Punch keeps Tupac safe. Yeah, and, and if we look at the red side, they have a very awkward composition, right? You have this Nasus, uh, kind of your front line, but also Bruiser. Uh, but against this Kane that just wants to get into your back line, can deal with, with all this poke, and you're hoping that Karina and, and the Purple Ace can really do some sustained damage while Pike gets on, this, on the back side of the map. Finally, he's going for this flank here. Maybe he can pick off uh, a few targets. His the one weakness is really this Fiddlesticks, right? I mean, all he has to do is just terrify uh, one of the key members while they're trying to dive, and, and that could be the course of the game. Yeah, not spotted out just yet. Oh, they do send down the pings. And they know Keelan is on the back side looking for the flank. It's John comes flying through with that shadow step. 3,000 HP on this dragon. And the fight may ensue or could just be the turn on the dragon. Here, Rip Brutalizer goes into that spider form. Looking for the execute. Does not secure the dragon. And the fight comes through. Tupac on the back line trying to solo out the support as Karina finds a shutdown now evil monkey in trouble you're not tanky enough the umbral trespass comes through and the ultimate goes wide for Keelan true shot barrage not gonna find the damage just yet either as Asian invasion tanky enough to allow his top laner to find the double kill he survives with one HP Keelan still alive and Karina right in the mix of it all does find a double kill but pays for it with her life now remaining it is purple ace and keelan and he's just so tanky so the dragon and the fight to blue side yep they're gonna have to start picking up some some more resistances or not resistances but uh you, you know maybe a little bit more last whisper here might want to complete that or for for karina it has she has gone for the trinity four so it's not going to be as tanky so if this cane gets onto him uh, it's 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 very difficult for her to peel because I mean the Soraka doesn't have any CC really gets the silence off but uh, I think it's it's difficult for for the team on the red side to deal with this cane if they can get into the back line um, especially since the cane is coming up so far ahead I mean level 15 versus you know level 12 on the Soraka level 13 on, on the Ezreal who really just has raw health at this point and no resistances which cane can shred anyway um, you do have two zanyas completed on blue side both the oriana you know plague inc and the asian invasion both have a zanya so if this pike tries to go in um if you don't have the fiddle six round with the terrify you can buy enough time that the rest of your team can can capitalize on that especially with a, with a huge galio ultimate uh, i think you know as this mid game uh came around it's just becoming more and more difficult for the 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 red side to, to find their picks because they've made a few more mistakes uh, than they probably should have in that early to mid game transition yeah, the pike slowly beginning to fall off here. Uh, unfortunately, you know, when you miss that pike ult, it, it's so detrimental because the best part about it is being able to chain a few together. Now, we do see Karina building towards that Blade of the Ruin King. Has the Grievous Wounds and the Executioner's Calling, so should be able to deal with John a little bit more and shred these tanks. But, I mean, this this top lane Kane on Rost is such a problem for this squad. And it's just as I said early where... He just runs around the team. He does whatever he wants. When he gets in danger, he just uses the ultimate. He heals up from all the damage he's doing. And he's such a nuisance as Asian Invasion uses that ultimate in the mid lane. Just going to find some minions there, unfortunately. But we do know it is a short cooldown. So it may be up for this next fight. Yeah, but and again, we're just seeing uh, some of the problems with Fiddlesticks there, right? He's trying to do an instant engage without 
uh, the other team having to be forced into a certain direction. They're taking uh, they're taking Drake, but <laughs> Ezreal's just kind of doing all the work right here, just pushing the wave over and over. Very strong at this point. And continue to just push the wave for free, get a few uh, shots onto this this tower. But the Soraka doesn't have to be there. The Elise doesn't really have to be there. They're there for the follow-up if it happens. Um, but they don't have to step up as far as, as Fiddlesticks would like. And now that ultimate, just about 60% on the cooldown coming through. They do have quite a bit of damage as they look to grab this Baron here. But it may just be that outer turret trying to net some more gold in their pocket. As there are still two tier 1s or outer turrets available to take the mid lane on the red side and the top lane on the blue side. Now they are starting to work towards that split push. Nasus does have the unsealed spellbook, can switch over to the teleport, and I will say has been very, very underwhelming. Uh, running into the back line, maybe killing one, but dying not as tanky as maybe I would have expected. He doesn't necessarily have, you know, some of those items that he would like to have, the, the spirit vicious for the healing, things of that nature but uh, i would definitely like to see more from evil monkey as he has completed the righteous glory we'll have the speed up and the slow and keelan now looking for more here edge of night gonna get popped so the shield is down he looks for the bone skewer not gonna find it so we are six members strong on the top side make it seven members strong as oriana in the mid lane can on the bottom side but four members of the red team trying to pressure this turret I mean, an evil monkey, I guess, if you're not doing well in the team fights, he's doing exactly what he needs to do. He's buying pressure on the bottom side of the map. He's taking turrets. He's just being that split push threat. Yeah, and I think that's really the strength that you have on the red side of the map. You have this pike that wants to roam. You have this Ezreal and Soraka, which are fairly, like, self-sufficient. Same with the Nasus. You really want to start uh, splitting the map. You want to have this Nas this Nasus on the opposite side of any ob objective going on, taking towers. I mean, he's over 600 stacks at this point. Um, can be huge, but just needs to get... Uh, a little bit tankier here in it before you can deal more damage because most of your damage i mean you have triforce and you have 600 stacks that's a huge amount so yeah pick up this spirit visage uh, maybe try and sustain a little bit more be good against the fiddlesticks but i think they just kind of want to ignore some of these things just have karina and keelan doing some of this work here but don't go for the wow. full team fight with the nasus yeah just no answer there as tupac immediately deleted keelan finds another one on the agent evasion now it's shot on the back line but it doesn't Ooh. matter as you said when you land the ultimates you just keep chaining a nice Shockwave to chunk the health bars down, but the wish to keep everybody topped off and Keelan wants more. He's going in. The dragon goes the way of the red squad as it will be sole point for them. Keelan will fall, but it's a one for three in the dragon for the red team. Yep, good pickup. Now they're on sole point, right? So if they can finish up this Drake, looks like they're heading right to Baron. They don't need Keelan for this at all. You have Nasus, Ezreal, Soraka, and Elise. The rest of the members are dead. Huge pick off onto this Fiddlesticks. That's the member that's really been carrying out these fights. Now they are going to have to start being worried about this Varus, though. Has the Rage Bait completed? Already has the Bork. And John, you know, if he doesn't get CC locked, that's going to be difficult. But you saw the heals coming from the Soraka. Everyone's pretty much topped off at this point, even when you think it was going down. But Baron's taken no problem. Varus on this backside but I think they just back, recall, and use some of that gold. And the gold lead is uh, a big one here as we are rounding out towards a 9,000 gold lead in favor of the red team. Now, the Fiddlesticks has a lot of damage, unfortunately gets caught out. He's got a Zonya's and a Stopwatch. So in a perfect scenario, he should be able to buy a whole lot of time and maybe it's one of those things where you're waiting for the perfect scenario. Sure, the zone just comes back on cooldown. Not sure why he didn't use it there. But that stopwatch, you want to have that second invulnerability for maybe your W to heal up on the backside, the drain there. And then obviously your Zonya is jumping in for the ultimate. I think this could still go any way. We're not necessarily at the point to where the gold doesn't matter, right? 9,000 gold, that's a lot of gold. But if you throw this wombo combo out and you land it, with the Fiddlesticks, with the Galio, with the Orianna, and then Varus on top of it all. That could be what the Blue Squad needs here for the next team fight, but they have to live that long, because right now a Baron Dev Red team could mean dangerous things as Tupac uses that Justice Punch to get away. The ultimate comes out onto Keelan. They're trying to find the kill, but he does dash away to safety as Quinn taken dangerously low. The poke damage comes through. The true shot barrage goes wide as the death from below doesn't find it either. Nation of Asian over the wall. This is the fight we were talking about. They find Purple Ace, so there's no more healing for this squad as it's John continues to push forward, trying to find the jungler. Keelan, though, full HP, finds the AD carry, will dash away from four members. Meanwhile, the split push threat is just that. Nasus trying to take the base. 
Yeah, and red side, I mean, they get a little over aggressive there, but Keelan's finding some good bone uh bonefish skewers there but this is what we wanted to see skirmish the map let the nasa split push already takes down that inhibitor they pressure that mid lane yes galio i mean tupac had this amazing taunt in the mid lane fiddlesticks gets a good ultimate but they only catch purple ace they didn't get onto karina they didn't get onto keelan brutalizer even survives uh they just don't have a way to, to match some of this this you know split push pressure now that they have the baron buff and keelan doing so much damage deletes the enemy jungler and now you're on a split res, 50 seconds on the fiddlesticks. Quen is coming out of the base now, but this could be it. They are barrened up. They're trying to find Tupac, and it's John here in their own base. A nice shockwave, but only going to land on Evil Monkey. Wish coming out of the base from Soraka keeps the team topped off. Evil Monkey will fall as John does find a knockup onto Rip Brutalizer, but the CC is there. The damage will follow. Quen's going to find one as Karina finds one on the backside. Now, Quen trying to kite away. He will survive for just a moment as the minions prove to be too strong. The ace comes through, and this is going to be the game. The red team on top. That's insane. I mean, you look at the pike, he had full items coming into that. So if you think about his his ultimate, what's the threshold for that? Really, you just need half health. So everyone's forced to flash away. But if the pike can just survive long enough, we had a clutch ultimate from Purple Ace, keeping him topped off just when you think it's John is going to turn around that fight. Everyone heals up to full health. Karina flashes away from the shockwave. They can't get Karina from, from it's John. And so they're just able to stay alive, continue doing this damage. And you know, it was a risky team composition, but they end up pulling it off. Just showing so many different uh, play styles coming out from, from all of these players. Very impressed. Very impressed. And the on-the-fly adaptation that we've been seeing throughout the tryouts. A couple of team fights don't go their way. So they know, hey, our win condition, let's just poke it out. Let's do some crazy stuff with Pike and allow Evil Monkey to take the base. Because then you always have that doubt in your mind of, is this the time to fight or are we going to lose our base? And they were just too torn. Unfortunately, it's John on that cane top. Being a nuisance wasn't enough to get it done. What I will say is out of the canes that we've seen, I, I would really enjoy seeing a Spirit Visage build. It helps <laughs> so much with your survivability. Your healing is just so much. Your ultimate almost heals you for half of your HP when you do go in and come out of the target. So... I would love to see adaptations in uh, of that nature. Although you only have the Elise here that's really doing the AP damage, it's just such a core item, and I think it could have turned around some of the fights or even that fight there at the end where he could buy a bit more time for his squad. But, uh, you know, we, we don't want to discount anybody here. As we said, this game could have gone either way. Had you not had three kills early on Karina, this, this game could be completely flipped when you look at the team fighting ability from that blue squad yep yep karina and purple H, you know strutting their stuff there i mean they were just dominating that bot lane even that 2v2 they did get caught out uh, a few times but to, to be fair those were some great plays by tupac and, and varus i mean they always have that cc lock if if they're playing that champion right so they did do a good job in that and and really we're seeing you know a few strengths and weaknesses of this fiddlesticks i think it, it is difficult um, if, we're, if you're just going to be blind picking a fiddle six, not knowing what the other matchup is going to be, because we saw um, this Elise and Pike being very effective in that early game, right? The fiddle six hasn't come online. They don't have the bush control that they need for objectives yet. And they're able just to target it and get this Pike ahead. I mean, he had full items um, before anyone else. And you can't forget his, his ultimate passive, right? If he gets a kill um, with his ultimate, then he starts generating gold for his whole team. I mean, you saw him picking up these triple kills and just, thousands thousands of, of just gold pieces just floating in the air for all of your team to collect and it's just um, it, it, it's difficult to match once you get to that point so uh, it did take them a while to find the strengths of their composition which is having this nasa split push i think they took way too many fights around the drake that they lost they lost those two drakes and if we're being honest they were going to lose those two drakes anyway right yes you can fight it out it, it could have been close but um it was really with them getting picks and having uh, Evil Monkey split on this Nasus is where their team competition comes online. They don't want to be team fighting. They want to skirmish. And there's a huge difference between those lines, right? One, you have all your members there going all in, um, getting some huge combo combos, ults and fighting, which is what the blue side wanted, right? You have the Oriana, you have the Galio, you have the Varus, you have the Spittlesticks. Huge team fight ultimates. That's what you want to see. You want to see the mm -hmm. cane going on those back lines. Um, but on the red side, it's Ezreal Soraka. It's it's Pike, it's Elise, it's Nasus. 
They want to stay away from these fights. They want to split the map. They want to they want to skirmish you, get these picks, go back and forth. And and when you start seeing them really come online following that game plan, then it all comes together and it was beautiful to watch. Again, another chaos driven game, but it finally comes together for 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 the red side here. So uh, I I just love seeing this, you know, day one scaling champions uh, day two here. Let's just brawl it out and skirmish. So exciting to watch and be a part of in this tournament. Absolutely. Everybody trying to play it safe day one, you know, uh, bide their time until they're able to pop off and show their skill set. And now it's no holds barred. They're just going ham as we are jumping into block three of the tryouts. And all that means is these players are going to be switching up the teams again. So we are going to take a quick break while we get everybody loaded into the lobby in their appropriate places. And when we come back, we'll have the first game of block three, which is the third game of the day here for the Oakland Esports League of Legends tryouts. Devil is knocking right at 
Alrighty, guys, we are back, and we've got these lobbies filled. And all we're waiting on is to jump in. Well, all we're waiting on, actually, is us to get back here to tell you guys that we're ready to start playing the game again. My name is Tanner Metro. I'm here with Blue J, and that's blue spelled like the cheese, right? <laughs> blue, yeah, B-L-E-U. It's, it's French here, so I did take French back in seventh grade, so I still know at least one word. Here on the blue side, though, uh, not spelled oddly is it's john in the top lane doc in the jungle razor lore in the mid lane karina in the bot lane and pepperoni tomato as support and on the red side haas makes a return to the top lane asian invasion in the jungle foreign guy in the mid lane simply gank and purple ace rounding out their bottom lane so karina and purple ace no longer on the same team this time around they will be facing each other as we jump in two picks and bans oh yeah. gonna be taken away we didn't see the first ban unfortunately messed up on my end yeah it, it, i'm looking at the chat here it may be looking like um they had one of the wrong links so might get rid of this one and move on to a new pro draft here uh, no big deal uh it just happens every once in a while so we, we we are on block three for everyone to remember so the teams are again switched around that um our last game was the last of block two if you think about it as scrim blocks right we have you know four different teams you know they'll play each other and then we'll move on to a new block so that's where you're going to see some different names we did just see karina pop off on this ezreal so excited to see what she gets her hand on on this time around yeah and, and purple ace playing masterfully on the soraka as well it definitely seems like there need to be some targeted bands there because it's one of those things again the wish coming out of the base topping off your team as now we do have the correct picks and bands or the correct pro drafts here the first band is fiora taken away from haas in the top lane i'm uh assuming they just want to avoid any of that split pushing especially after watching the last game Yep, and set taken down for It's John again. He hit that Grand Masters here earlier in the year on set. Uh, we'll see if they actually target this Urgot, right? Because that champion, It's Haas, has been just destroying people uh, with that pick. Now, we do have Foreign Guy in the mid lane, right? Uh, we were supposed to see him last game. Keon ended up subbing in uh, for, for a little bit here. Soraka targeted just as you predicted, Tanner. Yeah, the Soraka taken away. I mean, purple ace. Soraka is purple. So, I mean, and I thought it was Lulu, but then she pulls out the Soraka and just plays it phenomenally uh, both yesterday and today as Olaf taking off the board to the jungle now receiving a couple of bans. I'm actually sad that we, we haven't seen an Olaf in the tryouts just yet. And it's almost, it's, I guess, confusing to me that people are letting Trundle go through, but but not the Olaf here. It is kind of odd. I think maybe they're starting to see a higher priority on the Fiddlesticks. I don't expect to see it blind, but Olaf is so good in the Fiddle because most of Fiddle's power is his crowd control, right? His silence, his fear, and Olaf doesn't care about any of that. And for other other junglers um, who can't out-sustain Fiddle after that, uh, Olaf can. Like, his W gives him um, spell penetration. I mean, not spell penetration, but uh, <laughs> spell vamp and, and um, just normal bloodthirster, like the passive. Mm -hmm. Woo! I am winding down here it's pretty hot in my house <laughs> we, will, we will get back to it i'm getting some water here uh eating some food but fiddle six is picked up that's not something i was i was totally expecting to see maybe they do use it as the flex for the top lane uh, we haven't seen doc on anything really but this trundle and, and some at least but uh, i'm not a huge fan of this blind pick fiddle six as it is weak in the early nautilus picked up on the red side though yeah nautilus picked up it's i believe one of the first times we're seeing it here as well such a a strong pick i'm excited to see Purple Ace now playing this Nautilus, given that it goes to the support role. Uh, I, I'm i sure there's some kind of flex pick up somebody's sleeve here. But with this Nautilus, it's now an aggressive support. It wants to play forward. It wants to, you know, throw out the dredge lines, the depth charge, find the the stuns, the the knockups, and the, and the CC. Where Soraka isn't so much that. Soraka wants to play back, drop the Equinox, make sure you're not engaging on top, and then keep the, the, the team topped off here as Jin comes through. And, and you were telling me. Simply gank on this gin can be devastating as our con picked up and Ezreal still on the board, but it is going to be the lovers duo for the blue squad. Oh, that's exciting. Zaya Rakan, haven't seen this one in quite a while. Personally, I think it'd be a little bit of an underrated pick. Um, we do see a lot of 
priority at the higher levels of play on Misfortune, on Athelios, on Varus. But Zaya Rakan can really just weather some of that storm in that laning phase. Is known as a strong duo. Uh, and, and then turned around in some of these team fights with Rakan being both an engaged champion and a disengaged champion with heals and shields. So Poppy picked up uh, on Ren's side here. And I believe we had seen uh, one Poppy there in the jungle. Um, so it, it is interesting. We'll see if it goes top lane instead. Uh, it's kind of confusing to me. I feel like you still have some some other picks here. Like you still have Grace up uh, mm -hmm. in the meta, which is which is known as very high priority. Maybe they want something more consistent damage um, with that Jin, knowing that he only gets four shots and needs to make them count. So maybe something um, a little bit different here. Waiting to see where the fiddle six ends up. Either it's it's John in the top lane or the jungle before they start uh, targeting where they want the rest of their champions. So Wukong and Urgot taken off the table for both sides respectively. Yeah, back up into the top lane for these bands. Taking away the Urgot from Haas, who was just uh, an unkillable machine as the game grew later. Poppy was played in the jungle, and it was Asian Invasion that played the Poppy. So I'm assuming it may go there, but with these wonky picks, again, you do have that X factor of the, the flexibility as Pantheon taken off the board. Taken away from the mid laner on the blue side, who is Razor Lore, and he's played Pantheon fantastically so strong able to stay alive be disruptive so they take that one away and now we'll get to see how that pool plays out for him in the mid lane maokai gonna be the last ban here and we'll have to see where this counter pick goes i'm assuming we see a jungle here or uh, actually no not a jungle because it's poppy jungle and it's mordekaiser top <laughs> interesting here right uh we had seen mordekaiser just completely take over a game uh, here in the first block yesterday, so we'll see if they can do it uh, to the most effectiveness. I guess uh, they're just putting Poppy in the jungle here. It has some pretty solid ganks, uh, kind of like this pocket pick uh, that you'll see every once in a while. Usually you don't blind it. You'll usually pick it into something like Graves or Kindred, something that wants to dash around. Uh, it's fairly good into the Recon if you just sit on the back line. Um, it's actually you know kind of decent into J4 since he has to use two abilities that count as a dash, and, he can, and she can interrupt that uh, ability. So... Uh, it is going to be J4 jungle and Fiddlesticks top, it looks like. Um, unless they're going to pull out some some really sneaky picks that I'm not familiar with. But for the most part, J4 is is a jungler in for the, you know, the last year and a half. So uh, we'll see what their last pick is here. And it looks like they're saving counter pick for their mid laner. Yeah, Vigar coming through to run it out. We did see Razor Lore play the Vigar last night. But now the mid counter pick here for Foreign Guy. He played the Corky a few times. And he played it pretty well. It, it does, you know, help supplement this team when you have uh, just a whole bunch of, I guess I want to say pick potential. When I But when I look at Jin, it's not necessarily pick. It's just being able to single somebody out in a fight, right? You drop the curtain call. You get the damage down. Corky jumps in, splits everything up. And it's actually going to be a Nasus locked in, which might bump this Mordekaiser to the mid lane. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, we've seen so many different picks and variations, so... Uh, maybe it's Nasus top, maybe it's Nasus jungle, maybe it's it's Poppy mm. top and 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 something else. It's, it probably is just Poppy jungle. And but I am curious to see where where the other two end up. I mean, Vagar I think is a good pickup, right? Uh, you want to have Nautilus um, going in, and then they already had Poppy and Mordkaiser, which are both melee champions. And then, like you said before, Jin just does kind of single someone else, but but you have to have damage already applied to another target. Um, before he can really get that pick potential and they don't have any long range engage um, besides a nautilus hook so it's going to be difficult kind of to, to lock down this vagar especially when he has this cage up or he has a fiddlesticks and, and rakan able to peel for them and if j4 just gets a good ultimate off and locks down all these melee targets and they can't get out of like there's no dashes no movement abilities on the terms mm -hmm. uh, of getting out or over terrain on the red side here so it's going to be difficult if they just keep um, the range advantage on the blue side. Yeah, and I mean, we just saw a Nasus do wonderful things as far as split pushing and, and even in lane, you know, getting kills in 2v1s, being able to do just so much and have so much pressure. I am excited to see how this one breaks down. Now, Mordekaiser, okay? I'm assuming it's going to the mid lane. And yesterday, if anybody doesn't remember, I spoke about how some of these players uh, were playing in the mid lane but they played a whole lot of top lane. At least that's what their OPGG said. So I'm assuming top lane role may be taken and they want to still play for the team. So they are uh, trying out here in the mid lane, which would be very fitting for Razor Lore because he is one of those guys. I'd put a question mark next to his name. He played a lot of the, the Silas set and Kale, which are all 
you know, typically played up in the top lane. Then you throw, you know, Mordekaiser in the mix, and that's a top lane champion that can be played mid lane. So this could be another match where we see him pop off. And when it comes to, you know, the singularity damage that I was talking about, Mordekaiser, alt somebody away. Jit drops alt on somebody. Nasus just starts beating people down with the siphoning strike. So I'm very interested to see how this one plays out because on the standing across from them, Again, you do have a very strong team fighting composition. Fiddlesticks is going to be a problem. Jarvan jumping in onto your team. It is a nice, or I guess a weird pick into the Pompey because as you said, his dash goes in and you've got the steadfast presence to stop the, the flag and drag. Also, when you cataclysm the Pompey, she just charges you into the wall and that's another wall that she can use to stun here. So I'm interested to see how this plays out. But what I am most excited for is we saw Karina play Pokey Ezreal and play very well. Now on a more, not a not a more standard AD carry, but a more auto attack heavy AD carry on this Zaya. I'm extremely excited to see the plays with the feathers and how she's able to kind of maneuver around the map safely against this squad. Yeah, and we know uh, the, the main carry here is going to be the Zaya and the Vega, right? John was doing a great job CCing, walking on the Fiddlesticks. You have some pretty high base damage on that Crow Sword, but for the most part, he does just go full tank Fiddlesticks. Um, so a lot of the damage is going to be coming out of the Zaya. You're going to want to get her uh, to those item power spikes sooner than the rest of the other uh, team. I mean, Jin, he has some good, like, decent uh, burst damage on his kit. Um, but, but then you have Mortis Kaiser and Nasus really carrying the fights. I think... It's going to be difficult for both teams. Whoever gets to an objective first is ideally going to win. There's just not a lot of good options for the blue side to engage onto the red side if you have your Poppy in the right position. Or Mordekaiser can just ult the J4 when he comes in because then you have um, no chances of stealing a Drake, right? Like, the jungler goes over and then your Mordekaiser just takes him to the Death Realm and then you just get a free objective uh, as long as your your jungler's paying attention has smite up. Like, there are some mistakes that can happen. Mm -hmm. Um but I, I do kind of like blue side's ability to engage and disengage just off of the, the raw champion abilities. They have a lot of mobility with this, um, you know, Zaya Rakan duo. Vagar has his baby cage that he can just throw up and stop people from walking through. And, and Fiddlesticks is always a threat if he's out of vision. Um, the thing is, it's not a jungle Fiddlesticks. So you probably will see him in a side lane quite often. So you're not as scared of walking through the river, which is where uh, a jungler normally is. So it's going to be a little difficult in terms of objective control for both sides, just based off of the picks they're choosing. And with this Fiddlesticks top, are you expecting a, I'm going to be in lane until I hit six, and then whenever my alt is up, I'm going to make plays around the map? Or is he going to be saving that ultimate to just use in the, the trades against his Nasus? Honest to God, I have no idea what this Fiddlesticks top is going to be working with. I mean, we <laughs> saw him last time he played it, he was TPing to the bot lane. He was making these proactive plays in the river even before um, he was six. But you did see it being pretty effective in that lane, right? They tried to they tried to gank him. He gets out. He actually gets a gank. Um, was probably going to win that 1v1 anyway with his jungler just sweeping in and just throwing his little shield. The last time he played Fiddlesticks top, it was actually with a poppy. Um, mm -hmm. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, I think... If, if we're looking at overall game plan, I think he kind of just wants to, to farm up but end up impacting the map a little bit more. I think the Nasus is actually a pretty smart pick, right? Because the Nasus probably wants to build a Spirit Visage anyway because his passive yeah. um, gives him lifesteal. So he, he'll be fine versus this Fiddlesticks. He's not going to be building a ton of damage besides that Triforce. He is fine building a, a, you know, a Kindle Gym or a Spectre's Cow early because he wants cooldown reduction anyway. Uh, he just wants to farm up. Fiddlesticks isn't going to all in him or... Or, or poke them out completely. Um, maybe it'll be more annoying if um, John uses the bushes and every six seconds just fears Nasus out of the wave over and over again. Um, but but overall, I think uh, most of the pressure is just going to be about wave management, um, either the top lane or the mid lane, right? Because if you just have this Vagar being pushed in all the time, you can't respond to the plays, whereas Mordekaiser can walk through the river, maybe try and find this Jarvan out. Um, this poppy jungle isn't too aggressive, so he's not looking to fight, but I assume a lot of the pressure is going to be coming from this J4 early, right? You have the flag and drag. You want to be making plays happen, especially onto a champion like Mordekaiser in the mid lane who can't really get out of situations. He'll be able to du duel you, but before level 6 and early in the game, he's not incredibly strong against uh, some ranged matchups. Absolutely, and we'll have to see if Doc can get it done for his squad early, as you said, as he is now playing on this Jarvan. We've been seeing him play that Trundle, so we'll see the mastery here on Jarvan the fourth. We are going to jump to a quick break.
But don't go anywhere because when we come back, we will have the third match of the day with the scrambled teams jumping onto Summoner's Rift in just a moment. So grab your drinks, grab your snacks, and we'll see you guys in a sec. And we are back and underway, and we see these teams going five members strong, and we might actually see some early blood here. Yeah, Nautilus is a strong level one champion, but it is Zaya Rakan here at level one, which is very strong, so we'll see how this works. Oh, and they're going to walk right into the cage. A beautiful three-man knockup, and the damage will follow. Simply Gang taken low for now. He does flash away, but the first blood is there. It is going to be traded back as Foreign Guy started with the Indestructible, and he is just that. Now he is forced away from the team. He does have that flash to get away, but a one-for-one one overall. First blood going to It's John in the top lane. That'll be pretty good for him in the top lane, right? You kind of want to bully out your opponents, get some more sustain, picks up a second Dorn's Ring, so any amount of poke he's going to be doing, either with his his silence, uh, like his Reaping Slash, or his um, his Drain is going to be doing a little bit more. Unfortunately, your J4 did have to burn his Flash at level 1, so he's not going to be doing any good ganks. Uh, I probably would have liked to see him just do, you know, level 3, level 2 gank onto the bot side, um, but because he dies, um, even after he used his Flash by Foreign Guy, it's, it's a little bit unfortunate situation. I could see why both teams decided to do that. I just think the Zaya Rakan duo is so much stronger at level one. You saw him, um, this Rakan, get a huge knockup on the three people. Razor did start. Cage, they're going out on this gen here. Yeah, and they're trying to find it again. The hook comes through, but it is going to fall short for Purple Aces. The damage rate of back, and I think they could have waited a little bit longer on that and maybe secured a kill. Oh, but there it is. Doc comes through. He's got the red buff. The cage comes down. No flash on the Mordekaiser means he will fall as Razor Lore finds one for himself. Now 1-0 and 1 on the Vigar and a nice little lead early for Team 1. And I'm eating my words over here, right? I did want to see that gank. I, I just thought it would be on the bot side. So good job by him. I mean, uh, I, I didn't keep in mind that Razor did start cage too, right? So uh, they know Foreign Guy has no flash. Uh, they don't have flash either. But if you just throw down that baby cage, thankfully he gets the knockup. 
Um, the, the hitbox is a little strange, right? He was past the EQ combo, but right at the end, he gets knocked up. They throw down the cage and just finish it off. You know, J4 early levels with Conqueror and his attack speed boost coming out of his Demacian standard is very powerful, especially against a Mordekaiser who is very, you know, weak in this early game. So great job by Doc finding yet another gank in these games. He's, you know, insane in the early game with, it seems like, whatever champion he's playing. Yeah, still able to stay proactive on something that he hasn't grown to be the most comfortable on, at least in these these tryouts, you know, that Trundle being his tried and true as the gold lead still continues to grow. And, you know, we're seeing the CS in the top lane. We talked about this a little bit earlier in the day, but the range into melee matchup feels so horrible. And every time you try and go to stack, which we do see the plus six there for Haas, but John can just drop the silence and then the minions maybe kill that cannon minion or kill the minion that you are trying to stack here so a very brutal matchup super oppressive we'll have to see how Haas can at the very least farm up underneath this turret as the demolish comes through nice little chunk onto the turret and look at that fiddlesticks just stays right out of range of the turret and can just drain for free like doesn't take any damage back almost oh he flashes forward with the reap doesn't find the kill no flash in return, but the jungler is here. Doc can look to find the Nasus. He's just going to do a bit of counter jungling as Asian Invasion makes the way to the bottom side, but just going to grab some vision there. That was so close. I thought he had him there for a second, but Itzhans just barely walks away. Couldn't even flash out because he was silent. So good pressure by Edge John. We knew he was going to make use of that level one. Uh, now Itzhans, I mean, Itzhans will you know, get a little bit more defensive, but I think it's just so hard for, for Anasis to deal with anything like this, especially when the jungle pressure just isn't there either. And the, the double Doran's also helping with the mana regeneration, getting the extra mana per five as foreign guy now finds himself locked up in the event horizon. The flag and drag is there and he's trying to walk away. He does have the indestructible, so he will be okay for now, but nice return gank here. Just just letting foreign guy know he's not safe. At any moment, Doc will be here and they will look for the kill. So we do see just some trading on the bot side. They actually land onto Zaya. Um, I do think this this lover's duo in the bot lane is going to be popping off on some of these team fights. Um, this Mordekaiser has leveled up a little bit. He's going to hit level 6 uh, fairly soon. Probably wants to reset, be more healthy. Because the next time Doc comes on here into the mid lane, if he's level 6, he just drags him into the death row and probably beats him down with his Nightfall, which is his mace. But we do have Cloud Drake spawning here. Um, it, it's hard to take a Cloud Drake, to be honest. It's one of the hardest hitting Drakes in the game. It attacks so fast, your jungler just gets chunked. So you really need lane priority before you start starting this Drake, especially with a Poppy and J4. Speaking of Poppy and J4, they're going toe to toe. The Event Horizon goes wide, unfortunately not gonna stun up the jungler here but purple ace just goes right in the back line onto karina they're trying to find their way out they do find the root the ignite in the fourth shot may not be enough as karina does manage to escape with her life for now but both summoner spells used there yep just unfortunate Ooh, the flash forward purple ace wants more the heal comes through there's the sun underneath the turn as asian invasion finds one it is traded back so a one for one and the teleport comes down from johnny's got the fear on to simply gank the flash comes out not going to find too much more here. Just a couple of minions as Nasus on the top side. He's feeling okay with free farming. Yeah, pretty good idea for that teleport by Itch John, right? Trying to get one back. And Porn Guy has to be careful. The damage is there. And we've seen so many champions, two of which are now in this game with the outplay button as the primordial <laughs> burst comes through and finds a solo kill. Yeah, Porn Guy just not popping his shield there, thinking that... Uh, Ray's lore is not going to hit that six and have enough mana, but he just has just enough just to hit that primordial burst and just tank him out. That's just so unfortunate. I mean, the Mordekaiser's one and two at this point. The Vagar's scaling very nicely. He even has, you know, the Glacial Augment rune. So anytime he's going to get some of these these slowing items like a Hextech GLP, like a Twin Shadows, which I assume he's going to be picking up, it's going to add even more engage and disengage options for his composition. So this Vagar really rounding out um, some of the weaknesses that that we thought might, you know, plague the rest of this team. Yeah, and the, the uh, blue squad, or I'm sorry, the red squad, rather, Asian Invasion, he has to use that steadfast presence so carefully because if it is baited out, the engage can just come from anywhere as Purple Ace knocked up. Does not have the flash available, but he does have the dredge line, so he'll stay okay for now. Pepperoni Tomato, though, comes flying through the grand entrance. Will help net the kill, a kill and an assist. One, four. 
Doc here as he's finally getting himself in the game on the kill board. And it looks like he will start up this dragon here. Maybe just take the scuttle crab to be safe. Yeah, the purple ace just wanders into the river and Doc sees that. Looks like a trade on the top side here, but it's John isn't having any of those NASA shenanigans. Just going to drain him out. Looks like he's actually going for the all in. Yeah, Asian Invasion, the ultimate used defensively here by it's John. Is it going to be enough? Asian Invasion just taking so much damage here. The Spirit Fire is down as John gets the kill. Will Haas be able to get it back? He flashes forward and dunks him down. A one for one, but a nice pickup for John. Yeah, great job by John. He pulls the jungler up there. Uh, they, they do have to burn some summoners, but he does take down the Asian Invasion while Doc and the rest of the team secure this Cloud Drake, which is huge on, on turns for Rakan and Vagar and J4 and Fiddlesticks, right? You're probably already taking um, some ultimate, ultimate Hunter rooms on this Fiddlesticks. Maybe there's different things you take in the top lane. I've only played it in the jungle, but uh, just having the, the ability to ult more often, especially um, when you need those abilities to secure kills is, is insane. So good pickup with this Cloud Drake. Yeah, the ultimate gonna feel nice for uh for at the very least razor lore here, right? That outplay button as the dunk comes through, simply gank has no way out, and he will fall. Karina finds the kill on that one, and I mean you just there's nothing you can do in that situation. Yeah, purple ace had a really nice ward trick, right? If you stand at the right part of the ward uh, of the wall and just ward at a certain part of the wall. It will actually pop it into the bush. Unfortunately, Simply Gank is just a little too far up without his flash. Oh, just some trade damage in the bot lane. Nothing special. And and Doc is right there to capitalize. He knows that Simply Gank doesn't have his flash. So he just EQs over the wall and then ults right on top of him. Pepperoni to middle following up with another knockup. And Karina just coming in with the damage. So really loving this this Zyavacon bot lane. I think it's definitely um, somewhat viable in some of these other picks. Especially into a Jin. right? You're not going to be punished as heavily. Yeah, and Purple Ace now caught under his own turret. He's not safe because the damage is just too much. Karina with another kill now sitting on 1,800 gold on this next recall will come back pretty beefy. And that's the mastery of Zaya Rakan. You see them dart in and out of, of these fights, like tempting Purple Ace just to walk the hair forward, and then they just capitalize, blow her up before she can even get her ultimate off. And now maybe looking underneath the turret, the quickness comes through, the knockup will follow, and there's just no answer as the ultimate used to drop the turret aggro in a killing spree for Karina. This is brutal, man. We're finally seeing Karina unlocked. I mean, before she was playing the support of Ash Carry role and the rest of the team was just, you know, kind of playing around and, and wasn't able to unlock her true potential. But now she's showing if she's on a team that can keep it even, she will dominate Summoner's Rift. And I'm so happy we're finally getting to see uh, Karina pop off in some of these games. Yeah, and again, now the, the 1,800 gold turned into the 2,700 gold. Looking to recall here, so she's going to come back pretty beefy. And right now it does seem doomed as the Essence Reaver is completed and Haas and John going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The Battle of the It's in the top lane, but he, he just heals it up. There's no answer there. The drain is too much and Haas forced to retreat. Yeah, and you really can't build like any any sort of grievous wounds because Fiddlesticks doesn't, if, if, if John's playing it correctly, um, he just won't auto attack. Oh, Duck flashing in on that. Yeah, not able to find anything, unfortunately. Maybe thinking his mid laner was a bit closer, but that was the steadfast presence that we're talking about. Wait for that Jarvan to come in so you can find the knockup. And now Purple Ace just gets rooted up, and the Lovers duo paying to be a bit too much. Just simply gank steps forward, puts down a bit of damage, and keeps his support alive. Doc on the top side, though. Goes from top lane to bottom lane, back to the top lane. As Haas going to get taken down. Danger slow. He's not dead yet, though. The dive comes through, and the spell vamp was just too much. He's got the lifesteal to stay alive. They turn it around, and on the bottom side, still nothing. Yeah, it's John was trying to drain with his W, but when Doc goes in, his ultimate actually cancels Fiddle Six Drain, so John has to flash out. Doesn't have the sustained damage or healing to keep onto that tower dive, and it's Haas, like you said, has just enough lifesteal to stay alive. Asian Invasion coming in with the flash and CCing Doc under turret, and they're able to turn it around. I mean, I was just trying to talk about how it's it's Haas is going to be having a difficult time against this Fiddle Six, but they just botch that dive there in the top lane, and and it, it's going to come back online now. They do take this tower on the bot lane, but I mean, what do you expect? Uh, Karina and, and Pepperoni Tomato just dominating this, picking up another first blood turret has already completed the Essence Reaver. They're at a huge power spike in this game. 
Yeah, and, and there really is no answer to that. Even when uh, the bottom line simply gank and purple ace, they're pushing forward. They're on the back foot because the damage is just so much, the CC so much, and that turret gets taken here 12 minutes into the game because there's nowhere that they're safe. They will get dove, and now foreign guy, he does get locked up, tries to trade some damage back, takes him into the realm of death. But the jungler is stepping up. A nice ultimate comes through to find a bit of damage. And Doc should be able to finish it off. No, Razor Lore will get it done. But Asian Invasion trades it back. A one for one. Mid laner is going to be traded. And now there's the ultimate keeper's verdict. We'll keep Doc at bay as Asian Invasion walks away. Yep, foreign guy just takes him to the death realm and Razor Lore says, hey, we take those and just ends up 1v1ing him in the death realm even after he had used so many ab abilities. And I would say, you know, that's a net positive for the blue side because this Drake's coming up. Uh, you, you had Karina and Pepperoni Tomato thinking about a switch on the top side. But they say, hey, no, Infernal Drake is about to spawn. Let's head there. And then their mid laners fight. They duke it out. But Asian Invasion just gets so low as Doc looks for, for engage on the bot side. Yeah, he had the Cataclysm available, but just playing it safe. You would really hate to have your jungler die here. They do pick up an Infernal Drake, and it is going to be Ocean for the rest of the game. So there's going to be some nice regeneration going around here. As, I mean, John just still being aggressive. The cage not going to find anything, but Pepperoni will. He does dash to safety with that battle dance as they just grab themselves a couple of plates here in the mid lane. The Rift Herald is in the pocket of Asian Invasion as he did pick that up before the fight in the mid lane. So we'll have to see. They are at a 5,000 gold deficit. It's going to be huge that, uh, well, actually, plates are gone. So that Rift Herald, it's not going to get very much value. No, I mean, they'll probably just pop it on, on the mid-tier turret, right? Like, once you open up the mid lane, you can really start roaming around the map, taking some control into the enemy side's jungle. So I assume they, they just pick this up pretty soon and, and, and just go for it. But to be honest, they don't even need Rift Herald, right? You saw Pepperoni Tomato just diving through the turrets, goes all the way in and then all the way out, tanking tower shots, avoiding damage as Fiddlesticks finds Nasus here. Yeah, and a 3v1, there's nowhere to go. Haas will be taken down, and the remaining members forced to walk away. Rift Herald does get placed, and we'll have to see. There might not be much value. Doc takes a bit of damage, though. He does get hooked up. The fear comes through. Purple Ace now under fire. Simply Gank is here, and he does have that ultimate available, but the Rift Herald, again, just getting zero value there as the lane continues to push in the favor of the blue side. Now Purple Ace feared up and taken down. Karina is on a rampage, and four members pushing down this tier one top. Asian Invasion and Simply Gank have to be careful. They do find the stun onto its John. The Keeper's Verdict gonna knock him up as well. No ultimate available as a turret will fall, but the teleports come through, and Simply Gank on fourth shot. Haste is here again. He does get feared oh. away, though, and rooted up are Simply Gank and Haas. Unfortunately, with the health bars low, they're not able to find what they want. Yeah, John too good on this fiddlesticks. That outplay, just point and click, you know what I mean? Just <laughs> just turn its hoss right around. He has that movement speed boost and just says, nope, not today, buddy. Terrifies him away from the rest of the team. It's just uh, so unfortunate. It's John actually completes his uh, frozen heart, has a Spectre Cowls at this point, where Nasus doesn't even have, you know, a full item at this point. Uh, his stacks uh, are only at 291, but how do you get through this fiddlesticks, man? Like. He's just going to out-sustain with his drain. He's pretty much has it maxed out. He's looking for a play on this poppy. Yeah, and there's just no way out, unfortunately. The auto-attacks will follow. Razor Lore finds the kill, and there's so much CC. If one thing misses, there's so much to follow up, whether it be the Jarvan or Pepperoni Tomato, who has been phenomenal finding engages and just disrupting the enemy team. Now up two turrets to one. They're trying to make it three to one as they do crack the mid lane tier one so all of the outer turrets are down and this really opens up the map for this blue squad yep exactly that's that's what they want they want to have um the Zyra recon moving around the map now you have doc finding these plays uh what's going to be difficult for blue side though is is finding a way to match its hoss on the top lane like yes he's not going to win the 1v1 but if he's ever alone in the side lane for, for just a few minutes he can smash towers he has triforce complete he has a kindle dream so that's 30 percent cdr he has spell books so you know he probably has a cosmic insight so he's at 35 percent cdr and, and while again well, i'll say he won't kill this fiddlesticks uh he'll certainly destroy towers um it's exactly what you want to see in, in the game prior to this right as soon as you start playing around your nasus win condition which is just split pushing uh, you can turn a game on its head Absolutely, and, and, and Haas just has not been able to crack open. He is building towards the magic resistance, but Trinity Force being the first item means he's having a, a little bit of a hard time finding something, and the lack of CC definitely not helping as Karina and Pepperoni get knocked up, but 
Just no follow-up. So it's literally just trying to push them off that turret so they're not taking too much. Yeah, the purple ace just... Just having an unfortunate game, you're just kind of this Nautilus, your early game uh, presence, but if you get behind, um, you don't really have any defensive tools, you just get caught out over again, you're only a CC engage bonus, they look for this play. Yeah, they're trying to find Karina, goes up with the Feather Storm, brings down the root onto Asian Evasion, and it's still kiting away, still alive. Keeper's Verdict finds a knockup in Foreign Guy, and get a grabber into the Death Realm, there's no surviving this one, no way out, as Foreign Guy will pick up the shutdown. But on the back side, the rest of the squad are trying to fight it out. Two members are dead as Pepperoni Tomato goes down. And now Foreign Guy finds himself in a bit of trouble. The Primordial Burst will help beat him down. A three for two, though, in favor of the Red Squad. And as I say that, it's all tied up. Simply Gank going to get run down. It's John wants more. He's got the Reap, but not going to find it. Here come the Spooky Ghost from the Twin Shadows, though. No engage on that, and it should just be the turret. But a three for three overall in that fight. It takes the entire red squad to try and take down Karina and Pepperoni Tomato. They buy so much time. Foreign Guy ends up ulting Karina, taking them down. But the, the blue side turns it around with its John and Razor just pumping out damage. I mean, I think Karina and, and Pepperoni Tomato were just doing such an excellent job kiting out that fight by the time the rest of the members got there. Everyone else was at least half health with no summoners or, or abilities. So it looks like they're just going to go for this Drake here, which uh, can you imagine the impact an Ocean Drake soul would have for a team like, like this? Absolutely, just being able to, to stay alive and healing that entire time. Karina now uh, with a couple of Ocean Drakes and that Ocean Drake soul is going to be even harder to kill. We do have to think though, had Purple Ace not kind of chucked out those abilities earlier, maybe they net that kill when they've got the, the depth charge there, you know, after that Feather Storm is blown. The late game scaling, they're still working on it, right? They still need Nasus to get some stacks, mm -hmm. and, and they want the, the tanky jungler. They need Mordekaiser to get a little more built. So they're just trying to buy time for now, but the red squad definitely hurting at this point. Yeah, I mean, they can definitely buy time, and, and I think that's what they have to do. They do have the scaling, as you've mentioned. If the Mordekaiser can start, like, dueling it out, maybe with the other jungler, the support, and get a few kills, buy time for your Nasus to switch push, it's going to be insane. Oh, the hook just a little short there as, as we move across the map looks like they're sending a play on it's john yeah it's john under fire here he does have the ultimate available but it will get interrupted he's trying to find his way out but in three members he just can't do it he's healing up with the drain the ultimate going to be used he's buying so much time but his team just cannot respond so they do find a solo kill in a 3v1 and a big one there as it was a shutdown over to haas doc wants more though a beautiful Steadfast presence there to stop the knockup. Pepper and Tomato going in, though. The support will fall, so it's a one for one, but Nautilus for, Niddle, for uh, Fiddlesticks is a nice trade. Now, Foreign Guy trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy mid laner. He will find three members when he comes out of this ultimate. He's trying to run him down. A beautiful flash to dodge the damage, and now here comes the follow-up damage. The Cataclysm will come through as they trade the kill back. A two for two overall. The Jin ultimate stopped actually it looked like it was used there for a second but it was stopped and now three members pushing on this top side Rakan will be or fiddlestick rather will be coming out of this base does not have the teleport so it might just be in the mid lane yeah a little bit of, of an awkward play from both sides right you have the collapse and itch on which was very good i mean if you have fiddlesticks in the, in the side lane without the rest of your team it's a little vulnerable because you can only cc one target because you're not in a bush right you're not waiting uh, out of vision, so all of your abilities aren't going to fear people, just your terrify. So they end up collapsing on him with multiple amounts of CC, the purple ACC, uh, I, uh, just, you know, hooking and, and interrupting the Fiddlesticks ultimate. Even the Asian invasion slams him into the wall, so they're constantly interrupting his drain so he can't heal, uh, and he can't even get his ultimate off. So well played on that end. Um, you think they, they get out scot-free. You have the Doc and... and and Pepperoni Tomato going in, but the rest of their damage just isn't there. But Foreign Guy tries to turn it around and end up flowing Razor Flash. So they can capitalize on some of these carries that don't have Flash at this point. So it still certainly is possible. The Nasus is scaling up 5, 2, and 1 now. And they're going to have to be really careful about uh, finding someone out in the side lanes. He does have that completed Spirit Visage. Is now Asian Invasion. Under fire here in his own jungle. Pepperoni Tomato, though, does use that Battle Dance to get away. It's John comes over the wall and the cage is there to split the team. First kill going to be Purple Ace as Haas will follow, and there's just no response. Razor walks away an inch of health left, but still five members strong as they ping out this Baron. And you hate to see it from red side, right? They think they're safe clearing in their jungle, but they 
but they, they just find you out from blue doc and, and razor lord and pepperoni tomato and it's john just going all in steadfast present wasn't enough to get in there didn't lock down any targets rakan was able to jump in and out without having it being effective uh and now they're just gonna take the baron pretty much for free yeah the alt coming through they're looking for the steal but it's gonna be secured karina with the secure there so smite not actually used and and, and that was that could have been a steal for sure from simply gank just adding to the resume on this gin but now a five stack barren up this is going to be very hard to deal with it's it's going to be insane right because nasus can't mow down any of these uh barren up minions and he wants to split push so if you just have john in the side lane keeping out the minions you're going to force him to come to you but really it's it's unfortunate you don't want this nasus joining the team fights that's how you lose your fights yeah, and simply gang getting caught out. Not gonna be in this fight. No AD carry means no sustained damage here. And I mean, it, it, it's not too much damage, unfortunately. He's still sitting on just that blood razor. When you look at Karina on this Zaya, two and a half items has the Runans Hurricane into this melee heavy squad. You have four melee members, and then simply gang who doesn't have the most range. So this Zaya really gonna be able to pop off. And now. The last dragon needed for soul, it will be the ocean soul. Uh, I'm presumably here for the blue squad, unless the red team can find a way in. Yeah, it just seems so unlikely. It looks like they're going to be resetting too. They just have to give up this ocean soul, which is so unfortunate. That's kind of like the nail in the coffin. Like, you don't want to give up on a team, but when you have some scaling compositions, you're, you're, you're counting on surviving the early game, but they're down 21 kills and four drakes, and it's an ocean soul that you have on a fiddlesticks and, and skirmishing champions like a, a Rakan and Zaya. It's going to be so hard to get to that backline and do anything that's going to be meaningful. And, and we even saw in that last fight where there's just no way to get in. Haas now under fire, stuck in the cage as Asian Invasion is as well. Pepperoni with the quickness will make it out alive, and the red will be secured by Haas. But they're looking for more here. They know the jungler isn't here. The AD carry on the bottom side of the map. What can they find? Unfortunately, just going to clear some vision. Yeah, they just went a little bit too ham on that pick there. I think you didn't need to, to, to use the, the Rakan ultimate to get in and out. But, I mean, I understand why, right? The... The, the Asian Invasion just uses his ultimate push the rest of the team away, and, and uh, the Pepperoni and Tomato is just like, oh crap, like I have no way of getting out. And it looks like a DC from Poppy here. That's really unfortunate. Oh, it looks okay. like he's reconnected, so, so it probably won't be too long before we load back into game. Yeah, quick reconnects. We love to see that. And, I mean, fortunately, it wasn't anything horrible. It wasn't a disconnect, you know, at the start of a team fight like we saw yesterday. So he will just be jumping back in. And now this actually gives us a second to kind of look at the state of these teams and these games. Like, it's John. When he jumps in, how do you even kill this guy? Frozen heart, spirit vicious, his drain to heal up. And now he's stacking on a bit of damage and pen on top of it. I mean, just the fiddlesticks alone, so debilitating for this team. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's really a way to deal with it if, if he's with the rest of his team. But I, I think the weakness of fiddlesticks is, is that you'll see is in the side lane, right? Like... Yeah, you're not going to win that 1v1, but if you get a little bit of jungle pressure in there, maybe just have a roaming support, then you can really capitalize on, on its low mobility and the fact that CC isn't all-encompassing uh, unless he's out of vision first. So um, at, at this point of the game, I think there's very little you can do. Maybe uh, Asian Invasion slams it in, but the problem is if you don't have control of your bushes or control of any vision, it's just impossible to, to do anything to CC lock because you'll be terrified. All the tools you have won't be available for you so uh, i think at this point it's it's looking very dire for for its haas asian invasion foreign guy simply ganking purple ace in this game i just think it's a really unfortunate situation they've been in um just being so down in gold objectives and kills yeah and, uh i think okay so I, I thought maybe something would happen there as we know razor lord does have the damage to blow somebody up and also has a qss so going to be able to get himself out of the death realm if that does occur. Doc waiting on the side here as the tier two on the bottom lane goes down. And there's just no way to stop the pressure here. It is so unfortunate. It's an ocean soul squad here for the blue team as the cage comes down. They find a bit of poke onto Asian Invasion who's still working towards some of that magic resistance. And Doc, he's just going to escort the minions in the mid lane. They're just trying to push pressure on all sides, split this composition up. And again, you have that cage, you have the event horizon, which makes it so hard to push forward. Because if you do, you're going to get caught out. You're going to get split 
from your team and we'll have to see how the red squad here decide to answer a double root there's a knock up on a foreign guy the cage is there and the damage will follow karina now on a killing spree and purple ace will fall as razor lore absolutely deletes her off the rip asian invasion stays alive for a bit longer but a nice root may be the end here two members retreating back to the fountain as haas tries to run down razor lore the damage is coming through we might see a fear the cage the damage is he gonna stay alive though he's got that spirit visage he just needs a bit more but he will fall now it's all up to asian invasion and simply gank the curtain call still available as the bottom lane inhibitor will fall here for the blue <laughs> side and it looks like they may just look to try and take these nexus turrets curtain call for which side my friend it's just looking like the game's gonna be over here you have all five members versus two with and they're just drastically under leveled and 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 don't really have any resources to work with, especially against an Ocean Drake. Even one shot, they're just going to heal right back up. Yeah, and Karina now on a rampage as they take down the junglers. The members trying to come out of the fountain, but it's just not enough. This game being run away. The Nexus under fire. As Purple Ace picks up Doc in the fountain, but it doesn't matter. To no avail, the blue side takes game three. Very well played by the blue side here. I mean, again, Karina just... Popping off on these picks, dominating not only the lane, but the team fights. I mean, you have Itch John just keeping it solid in the top lane, uh, coming in with some TP plays and a huge fiddlesticks ultimate. Um, but but in the end, I just think on red side, they didn't have a backup plan, right? You have four melee champions, and if you get behind on a melee comp like that, the game just becomes so much more difficult. Uh, they just don't have the tools to work with, whereas Pepperoni, Tomato, and, and Karina can just dip in and out of fights. They have no way to lock them down in this this Vagar, that baby cage, and on top of Glacial Augment items, which slows out whole teams for catch or peel, is insane. And and let's give credit to Doc here, man. Like, game after game, uh, level 2, level 3, level 4, he's ganking lanes, getting kills. It's not simply like, oh, I just walk into game, throw in a ability and i walk out like no he's going all in and he's making sure ganks work so very impressed uh with the blue side in these games absolutely i could not agree more i had a Mike muted there for a second. I do apologize. The versatility coming through from these teams. And we, again, we see the cogs turning. We see what these teams are trying to do, what these players are trying to do. And unfortunately, in this one, not able to get it done. Now, we do have another match coming up here shortly. And we do have to get these players ready as, again, these teams, it's, it's block three. So the teams have switched up a little bit, but they're still the familiar faces that we know. So we're going to jump to a quick break. But when we come back, we'll have game number four picks in bands right in your face. child in Valoran has heard the tale before About the cursed mummy boy who felt his heart no more And sad and lorn, the helpless lad of whom was his name He ventured out to find a friend and learn about his bane Ear. And it would come 
confirm what was Amumu's biggest fear. It pledged that never shall someone become his friend. It pledged that he shall be alone until his end. Sorrow and despair came too much to bear. Tantrum that he never could control. While you were
Game number four lobby has been filled, and this is going to be an action-packed game. Again, my name is Tanner Metro. Just in case you forgot, and I here, am here alongside Blue Jay. And uh, Jay, now that we, we, we see the names here, I believe this, this may be the last mix-up. We might have one more at the end of the day for these players, but these are some names that we have been having a hard time staying away from, right? <laughs> Certainly, I'm excited for this one. Uh, this time around, we have Keelan and Speed Demon on opposite sides of the map. They had uh, been working together for the last few games, so excited to see that matchup. Yeah, and Dreams and Evil Monkey. We saw Evil Monkey run away with the game on that. Nasus just split pushing it down, and Dreams has had some pretty good games himself. Uh, I think the the one that stands out the most, obviously, that 13-0 Mordekaiser game. So we'll have to see if they do decide to give that over. Now, Brutalizer, he played pretty well. They had some some wonky synergy in the mid lane when Keelan was playing that pike. And now Brutalizer has options. You have to be worried about that, Elise. You have to be worried about the Trundle. And I'm excited to see how this gets banned away. But we are jumping in to the picks and bans. We'll have to see. You know, we, we've had to, we've had a lot of time to see all these players, and obviously these guys have too. So, picks and bands is going to be interesting for this one. Is Fiddlesticks going to be a priority? Yeah, we see the Mordekaiser ban right away. That's no surprise for against Dreams, right? He did completely demolish that game. We'll see uh, what comes through. Uh, ideally, we want to get rid of the Trundle, probably the Fiddlesticks. It's been able to be flexed to multiple positions and be so successful no matter where it's been um we'll see the yasuo band as well i think um everyone's pretty scared of plague inc um his yasuo so and they might see a trinomir band as well we've seen both of those um go away into the dumpster here yeah and they have to respect the bard for tupac a very strong champion just in itself right now a lot of people are playing that in the solo queue sphere and I mean, Tupac, you, you kind of have to be worried about the Galio from this guy as well. He's played it really well, and he's been okay with just soloing the back line, buying time for his team. He's been able to find a taunt, so I wonder if that's going to get some attention or if it can be picked up nice and early. And just in case we, we almost forgot, Endrit is in this game, so Draven will be off the board. Yep, and, and maybe we'll see a Phil Six band here. I mean, Speed Demon has been insane on Fiddle Six and Graves, so maybe they keep targeting the jungle. Uh, that does leave like Olaf and Trundle up, uh, so we might see uh, again yet another Trundle game. But uh, we'll see what the last ban is. We got two seconds. Yep, and it's Fiddle Sticks. No surprise there. That champion has been doing so well, so phenomenally, and, and and so fun to watch here in this tournament. It has been fun to watch, and it's been exciting to see the the different play styles the different runes being picked up you know fiddlesticks in the top lane fiddlesticks in the jungle they're bouncing it around and, and they're making it just such a viable pick as the first pick in this game will be the ezreal going to quen down there in that bottom lane and he, he got bullied a little bit by the ezreal so i'm very excited to see it hands this time around and i'm interested because he's the only one that we've seen have a variation from the varus build so i wonder what we're going to see uh, out of the Ezreal here. Yep, so we do see Trundle picked up. That's that's obviously the next power pick. And I think now that they've elim eliminated Fiddlesticks from the champion pool, it's going to be a little bit easier as this Trundle. Uh, I mean, you do have some different picks. Maybe we'll see a Kindred come out. Uh, otherwise, I don't think there's there's too much you could run into the Trundle that's going to be the 1v1. Maybe we just focus on uh, on team play. But we do have Syndra picked up, right? Endred's been playing the Syndra. I know Keelan plays the Syndra very effectively, but it's going to be vain. Wow, that is a, a very interesting pick, but can definitely steal the show. Now, Endrit playing the Draven, which is a vein counter, may be familiar, you know, playing into the or as the vein here. So we'll have to see. It could also be flexed into the top lane, you know, with the, the way that bruisers have kind of been taken over up there. If a mount guy gets picked up, there's a lot of flexibility there. Set going to make its way through the picks and bands. We can assume that it's going to go to top lane, but Love Truth Wisdom has pulled out some wonky stuff, right? We saw the the Lissandra support today, and it was awesome. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Set is is becoming more and more popular as a support. Uh, Swain picked up on the blue side as well. That could be a support too. I mean, I've seen like kill lanes, kill lanes run with a Swain, usually not paired with an Ezreal. Usually it is with like a, a Draven or harder hitting ADC, but but I think they're just picking these for the flex. It's it's a good idea. Aurelian Soul hovered 
kind of awkward. I'm not sure this is the champion they're going to be going for. Maybe a little bit of a tease. But uh, Lulu would be a good pickup, right? Because you have a Vayne Lulu. Just have her popped off. But no, they go for the Leona. They want to fight. They want all in. Uh, that means Dreams. Uh, I mean, not Dreams, but this Trundle pick will probably be looking towards the bot side of the map quite often. Absolutely. The follow-up and the CC there. You can also play well uh, with the Condemn and the Pillar coming out from the Trundle there if you've got the coordination. And and this Leona alone really helps this composition because now it is shown that they want to engage. They have to engage. It's not just Vayne or Trundle running at you. you know. So now they they have a little bit of free reign when it comes to picking out the, the rest here. They can go for... Uh, you know something strong early in the in the top lane renekton still available here so just it, it it's not uh you know when you pick like a like a lulu or things of that nature that were hovered as renekton gets banned away it could be difficult because your only engage is just running at them now you have the leona and you don't have to worry about that but a lot of disengage here for this blue side as you said trindamir taken away from play inc in the mid lane we'll have to see where the next ban is targeted towards because Swain can be a support, and Set can be a support, or a jungler, or really can be flexed all over the place as well. And it is going to be the Olaf taken away. So they do think the Set is is probably you know going to the top lane or as a support, maybe targeting a few a few different abilities. But um, with this last span, <laughs> Vladimir, they don't want to see Keelan take over the game on the Vladimir. Definitely has the, the teammates around him with this Leona and Invane and Trundle being self-sustaining, but Nasus being hovered here. Okay, they're trolling us here. Okay, yeah. maybe go back to the Nasus here. It is one of the uh, champions I was peeking at for Dreams, and, and he's putting it in the in the lane against Evil Monkey, saying, hey, I saw you do it. Now I'm going to try and get it done even better. Yeah, and I am having mixed feelings about this Nasus. I mean, I'm not, not a huge fan personally. Um, It is kind of rounding out your, your team as a split push potential, but we have Echo picked up on the other side. And we've seen a lot of Echo jungle recently. That's where you're going to see this champion played most. But it is a very bursty assassin. Plague E can play that. I'm excited to see what this last pick. And, and they also, they saved the, the mid lane pick for Keelan. I'm assuming we're going to see something different. Because he's played a different champion every single game throughout these tryouts. As the Cassiopeia gets locked in. So it should be Echo in the jungle, Cassiopeia in the mid lane with Ezreal and Swain rounding out the bottom side set going up top but I say should and, and it really could just be anything as Silas is going to be locked in and when you look at this opposing team for that Silas there are a lot of juicy ultimates yeah I'm actually kind of surprised we haven't seen more Silas in this tournament just just knowing what the other team's been playing it's going to be huge in these team fights uh so many great ultimates to steal like if if he steals echo ultimate then you can go ham and then just ult out a swain ultimate just all that sustain coming in on top of his w to sustain like he'll be unkillable or against the cassiopeia if he steals the uh the petrifying gaze and just ends up ulting the whole team it can be huge even sets a good ultimate uh to take so really just rounding out the comp it does look like they're going to be skirmishing very heavily they don't really have the range matchup uh that the other team has with a swain ezreal cassiopeia uh, but they certainly have a lot of crowd control and a lot of uh, long-range engaged tools. So excited to see this one play out. Uh, again, this Nasus matchup has been a little bit awkward to watch, to be honest, because sometimes it's used effectively, uh, but we don't really see it come online until like 25, 30 minutes in when he starts getting those stacks. So it's going to be a very slow game on the top side. Uh, at least that's what you would expect. You, you, can't, you can get the Nasus either ahead or behind early when he's not as strong, um, but I think Seth is going to do a good job of counteracting that pressure. Absolutely, and both of these teams have pretty scaling compositions, so if the red side want to take a step back, allow Vayne and Nasus to get farmed up, your Cassiopeia and your Ezreal, they're feeling pretty good to do that as well. They're not necessarily worried about you know, having to try and win this early game, because with a couple of items, those guys can absolutely pop off. Now, this is uh, Echo in the Jungle on Speed Demon. It's a little bit different than what we've seen throughout the tournament. It provides... Uh, a huge AOE stun onto as many members as you can get in there. Uh, a lot of the times it's zero, but you can <laughs> find that stun with the parallel convergence. And it helps, I think, 
his aggressive play style. He can continue to play forward once he hits six and use that chrono break to get back. I'm very interested. Again, I love seeing the diversity. I love seeing Keelan play a different champion every single game. I love seeing Speed Demon also switching it up, playing different champions. You know, it hasn't just been the one or two champions. Uh, just expanding the pool here and showing us what they can really do. Yeah, the one thing we do have to see is that both of these these characters, Keelan and Speed Demon, are hard carry players. Like they're they're not afraid of taking it to the other team and, and getting in their face. Uh, this Echo, um, we do see it quite a bit in the jungle. hasn't been as popular recently. They slowed down his clear by um, reducing his passive damage to monsters. Um, before that, it it was insane. You cleared pretty much faster than most other champions. Didn't take a lot of damage. Um, but he'll have to use his parallel um convergence uh, just to more often in the jungle uh mm -hmm. but but here it's going to be a, a little bit difficult i would say for the echo to find a priority target because you have the vein priority sitting in the back line speed demon is going to have to have impeccable positioning here uh and not be seen on, on any wards before you can just jump in because you can't really jump through a leona or trundle and if trundle tags you with his bite it, it, it's pretty hard to get away right echo wants to, to be able to move away from this trundle because he still can't duel the trundle uh, echo comes online when he gets some more items um, but early on, it's about that passive damage. And Trundle doesn't have a hard time facing this Echo, to be honest. In the early game, I think the Trundle rules. Echo will be wanting to avoid this Trundle at all costs and be looking for ganks. He does have good setup uh, on the bot side with this Swain. Uh, even against Silas, if you get the Miasma down with this Cassiopeia, I think you might be able to win the 2v2. And on the top side, Nasus doesn't really have any escape tools. Uh, I wonder what runes and summoners this Nasus goes, because we've seen different variations. I mean, obviously, we saw you know the TP flash uh the game before but then we saw like a heal and and ghost uh in the game right before that so we'll see when we when we start to load in here um what their game plan is absolutely we'll have to see and i'm gonna be paying attention to this mid lane will keelan just run away with the game with the roams or will plague inc finally be the answer here to keep him at bay we are going to jump to a quick break but when we come back game four of the oakland esports tryouts will be underway so don't go anywhere you do not want to miss it Welcome to the world, no heroes and villains. Welcome to the war, we've only begun. So pick up your weapon and face it. There's blood on the crown, go and take it. You get one shot to make it out alive. So higher and higher, you're chasing. It's deep in your bones, go and take it. This is your moment. Now is your time, so prove yourself and Pray the one falls steadily the end. 
And we are underway. We'll have to see for game number four which team will rise above. A pretty standard start here between these two teams. And uh, first and foremost, is Nasus with Unsealed Spellbook the move? I suppose so. I don't really see Nasus uh, most of the time. It's been quite a while, but I think it's just the, the vari variability. You don't really need a keystone. Like, you're not going to be stacking up Conquer uh, against some targets. Uh, you really just want to farm up with your with your Q and maybe unlocking Ghost or, or Heal or Ignite, depending on the lane matchup, uh, really helps you out later stages in the game. So I think it's fine. Uh, nothing special. Sometimes you'll see Phase Rust. Uh, sometimes it'll be Grasp of the Undialing. That, that's probably what I would have expected in a matchup like this against Set, when you're going to be trading pretty heavily. Uh, just stacking health is, is pretty useful, but uh, it looks like, you know, Spellbook is the rune of choice here for this tournament. Maybe a late invade here from the red side. Yeah, trying to pull off something funky. They do have a pretty strong level one as far as the lockdown goes. They are going to step forward. They are going to be spotted out. Nice route there, gonna catch Endrit, but the engage will follow. LTW does flash away, but the chomp is there, the ignite is on, and the first blood going the way of Brutalizer as they look to walk out of this jungle. And they may just pick up this red and try and put Speed Demon behind. Level Good. one still, Quen under fire, does still have flash, and let's take a look real quick. He started the Mystic shot, so fortunately hangs on to his flash. Not forced to use it, but the red buff stolen away and an early lead for the red team. That feels so bad as an echo jungle. You really want to get to level three and start ganking some of these lanes, but you know, the red side just realizing that they're at a stronger point in the game at level one, especially versus a Swain who has no consistent damage. Ezreal can't really get away, needs to start Mystic Shot for the Q, but that means the Swain and Ezreal will be late to the party. They'll be missing CS, they'll be missing experience. This echo is is gone to the top side of the map, actually. Yeah, and gonna get run down by the level two Trundle who smites away the red buff. And what a horrible place to be. He does flash over into the Baron Pit or the Rift Herald Pit as we are too early in this game for the Purple Worm. But a horrible start here for Speed Demon as he's still yet to clear a camp and Brutalizer's got himself two red buffs. Yeah, you thought, you know, Brutalizer would be going, oh, look for a play on the bot side here. Yeah, the flash out of Quen. The silver tip bolt's gonna find a bit of damage, but will stay alive for now. Is this Ezreal? Tumble forward. Not gonna find too much. He was still available, so no real trouble there. But now a flashless level one Ezreal. Oh, well, this blue side is just not having a great start here. I mean, Echo tries to go for the aggressive invade, thinking the Trundle will clear uh, his blue buff, but Brutalizer reads him like a book, goes to get his blue buff before doing anything, and Speed Demon is just now clearing his first camp, and, and is trying to get Scuttle Crab at level, you know, level two, which is incredibly difficult. Brutalizer is going to be way ahead of the game for, for pretty much the the whole start, and. and He'll just keep this lead because Trundle can start getting these ganks. He has these lanes that he can work off of. Heading mid lane onto this Cassiopeia now. Yeah, nice pillar. Nowhere to go for Plague Inc. He's trying to kite towards the jungler, but it is only a level two echo. The flash away, but on the wrong side of the map. Now Speed Demon again getting run down. Press the attack has been proc. The chomp to slow the kill for Brutalizer as LTW. Now the heal being blown. The silver tip bolts not enough, but aggressive are Endred and Tupac. And this is the worst start imaginable for a Speed Demon, right? Like, uh, early, you already don't want to get in the face of, of Trundle. Plague Inc. just going to execute, finds himself on the wrong side of the map, and everyone's trying to chase him down. And it's going to be so impossible for Speed Demon to find his way out of this hole. Absolutely. Very, very rough start here now. Just about two levels down as Realizer cresting that level four and he, he's going to his chickens he's trying to do what he can the only thing you can do in this situation is just grit your teeth and continue to push forward it's plague inc and keelan going toe to toe abscond abduct available nice king slayer as the abscond is used in defense so that king slayer gonna be nice and, and you need to see early grievous wounds you have to see it here you've got nasus trundle and silas you need grievous wounds across this whole composition it's going to be hard for, for anyone, right? Because I think Red Side already has some pretty decent matchups. The only one that's probably pretty poor is, is this Nasus one, but that's really not until Set comes online here. Yeah, and he is getting quite a bit of damage down. Level 5 for the top laners is just going to be the Wither traded out as Dreams will run away and continue to stack up. And they have to be careful. These level 6s mean big things. 
As the evil monkey just zoning him away. Dreams should be able to get experience, but will be hurting in the gold department. Yep, and we're definitely going to see uh, on the bot side of this map, this Bane coming online much earlier had already bullied out this this Israel did back. And when he came back to lane, he has this call. So knows that the rough start's going to be really rough here. Uh, more trading on the top side. Yeah, and Dreams just, I mean, he's just eating it there. He should be able to heal up a little bit from his passive, but has to be careful because, again, whoever dings six first here should be able to net a kill. Both flashes are available, and Dreams just going to back off of this one. He has the teleport available. He's got quite a bit of gold sitting on 1,100, so he can go back and buy himself a Sheen. Yeah, he's out of his Corrupting Potion stacks, so he's not too confident in getting a fight. They actually catch Ezreal here with a Zenith Blade. Yeah, he does jump away with that arcane shift, so manages to stay safe even though flashless. And just a nice counter engage, right? LTW, he, he pu pushes out the never move as Brutalizer makes his way to the bottom side. Quen has two stacks. He's in the fog of war, but he will fall now. Killing spree for this trundle, and Endrit finds one for himself as Brutalizer and Tupac just let that one go his way. Yep, good, good communication there. Great gank, right? They catch uh, the Swain with the Zenith Blade, get a nice condemn into the wall, and, and Brutalizer picks up that first kill, And but Endred's like, hey, what about me? I need some gold too. And and he's right, right? You want to get the, the rest of your carries fed. This Trundle's really going to go full tank, so he doesn't need so many kills right now. Just keep clearing out your jungler. He's doing a great job pressuring the map. Pick up an early Mountain Drake, uh, and just keep the, your winning lanes just like that. Sets hitting little six. <laughs> Nasus withers him and walks away, but Echo's here on the top side as well. Yeah, Flash still available. It is going to be used there to dodge the stun and Speed Demon trying to do what he can as he is a level down. And uh, he's caught up in CS, but still down in kills and gold overall. He has to try and stay proactive, though. Yep, Echo, he will scale later stages of the game, but you don't want your team to get too far behind, right? You, the vein's already ahead, your bot lane's not doing so hot in that department, your mid lane has already gone down once, though it was an execution. Uh, I don't think you're just going to see Keelan absolutely dominate this Cassiopeia. It will be later in the team fights. He might make me eat my words and get a solo kill here soon. You never know with a champion like Silas. Uh, but you do see Speed Demon still playing aggressive and, and getting some counter jungling in. And so much damage there on just a couple of auto attacks from Evil Monkey. Dreams does a heal up though again from that passive. And he's got his ultimate. So Fury of the Hand Sands still available. Speed Demon, he's staying aggressive. He tried to pick up that red buff. But uh, Brutalizer just chooses to grab his own. Now, this is a start that we've seen from Brutalizer a couple of times as he's played this trundle. Where I, I believe it was the game yesterday that actually got delayed but both times they they met each other the grave started at blue and it allowed brutalizer to grab his red or grab the enemy red and then go right to his had speed demon maybe been paying attention to that who is actually against him that he did it he could have <laughs> been uh, aware that he was going to just go right to his red and catch him out there so i mean uh, it, it just doing your homework there would pay dividends for this early start from the echo as evil monkey still getting the better half of these trades but dreams i mean he's sticking around he's still farming up Yep, Dreams knows he has the ultimate available. He feels a little safe with Brutalizer on the top side. Speed Demon is here. I don't know if they've, they've spotted each other out. I maybe try and bait Speed Demon into a gank and they turn it around him, which you could. I mean, the Trundle is level six, um, but he might just go for, for a reset here. Yeah, it looks like he has a Cinder Hole complete or, or at least a Bomby Cinder, but mid lane trading back and forth. And again, the, the ranged into melee, the, the Twin Fangs can just be so strong. and. All Plague has to do is make sure that he's not getting engaged on by that abscond abduct. But he may get engaged on here. Solar Flare comes out, finds the slow. There's the ult stolen. Petrifying Gay is going to be traded back and forth as Tupac will fall to the turret. Plague picks up one. Can he find a second? The Kingslayer keeps him up for now, and he's just going to run him down. He's got the Conqueror Prox, and Speed Demon will find himself a kill. So a nice pickup on the Echo that was once behind, but finds his way back into the game. And what were you thinking, man? You're trying to dive a Cassiopeia who still has the ultimate off. Yes, you catch that stun, but all she has to do is press R if you're facing the wrong way, which, especially with a Silas, his abs gun, he's just going to be facing right into you with that. So just a, a really poor gank, I think, on, on the red side here. Just unfortunate the Cassio was able to turn around, but really, you're, you're not getting that kill either way. I think that's pretty disrespectful to Plague Inc., who's, who's just been farming up and really consistent here in this mid lane. Yeah, and I mean, that's exactly what we needed. We, If you're playing into Keelan here, you know he likes to play aggressive. He's going to go for the solo kills. He's going to go for the dives. And uh, you just find a way to outplay. I had said it before 
uh, we jumped in as we, we were in the loading screen there, is Plague Inc. going to be the answer? And so far, he has been. Now, it's not just Keelan, though, that he has to worry about, right? It's the rest of the squad that will be scaling up as well. And good on Plague for not chasing out Keelan, who he could have maybe been turned on. But instead, he gives a kill to Speed Demon and says, hey, buddy, you need this. You had a very rough start, but mm -hmm. now we're looking at completed jungle items across the board for both junglers. So we're almost all caught up. It is 800 gold separating, but it's not too much here on that trundle as Tupac now under fire. He'll be okay, though. Just walks away from that one. And it looks like maybe a four-man dive here from the red squad as Endrit stays forward. Solar Flare is available. Tupac taking a bit of damage, though. Has to be careful. He may just fall. Solar Flare going to be using a nice ultimate. Going to come out from Echo to keep him alive for now. Quen is down here trying to spit out the damage, and Brutalizer has turret aggro. Nobody has fallen just yet as Keelan has made his way down. He does have that Swain ultimate. He picks up the first kill, make it the second kill as he uses that ultimate. A double kill for Keelan. Plague going to shut him down, though, as LTW underneath the turret may just fall. Brutalizer will tank the turret, no problem, as they find a one for four. Yeah, and it's, it's a huge win for Red Side, right? You you think the dive might be going a, a, a little risky? I mean, Quinn and Love Truth Wisdom both hit six in the middle of that dive, so they're they're trying their best. And and Plague Inc comes down there, is able to pick up one for himself. But really, Keelan's the only one that goes down there, even though you had Tupac uh, going in first and Brutalizer was on the other side. But they do such a great job of kiting. Keelan buying so much time with that Swain ultimate, and that's exactly what what i thought would happen right if you steal all that sustain from swain and use your kingslayer effectively then you can just buy so much time and, and fight up here it looks like he's going for the all end of the turret yeah and speed demon looking for more here no mana on this bottom lane show the daybreak comes out they find the stun the pillar is there to lock him down and there's no way out brutalizer now unstoppable as the teleport comes through and they may just look for another dive keelan trying to remain aggressive as he knows it's a stalemate in this mid lane looks to roam around and on the top side of the map now dreams getting the better half of these trades forcing the recall and teleport from evil monkey yeah i, I mean this nasus is doing much better than the other games here i think just getting some early pressure um is able just to farm out haven't been ganked and seems to be doing quite well into the set now they're just using this bot lane pressure to, to take another drake and it's actually going to be infernal soul spawning here onto the rift and Infernal Drake coming through. We'll have to see four dragons would feel good for this blue squad. That would be a nice pickup if they're able to do that. But it just seems so hard now. The rampaging trundle will be uh, almost feel like unkillable here in just a moment as he is recalling with 2100 gold. And we'll have to see where he puts that. There is a, a handful of AP threat in this enemy squad though, right? In Speed Demon, in Plague, they've got the sustained and the burst damage. So we'll have to see where he decides to build. He picks up those Merc Treads as mm -hmm. Evil Monkey and Dreams going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the top lane. And I mean, this has kind of been the, the tail of the tape. Nice pickup in the Ninja Tabbies and a couple more Cloth Armors should hopefully negate some of that damage. But as the cooldown reduction comes through, or even with that ultimate, Dreams is gonna have a heyday with those Siphoning Strikes. Yep, uh, the one point I wanted to make for, for this this red side is that they just need to be patient and very careful. The worst thing they can do right now is get overly aggressive onto this Cassiopeia because that's the only thing shut them down as they go into the Swain here. Yeah, LTW forced to use the ultimate. We'll stay alive for a moment longer. Speed Demon tries to find a way into the fight. Parallel Convergence only going to find the shield as the ultimate comes through from setting Evil Monkey on the back line, taking Danger slowly. They got the Haymaker. They got the first kill, but Evil Monkey will fall in return. Speed Demon finds a double kill for himself as Dream's just going to move forward with the Fury of the sands but there's just no answer a one for two as endrin unable to make his way into this fight and the blue team come out on top yep they just have the numbers advantage there right dreams was a little bit late to the party evil monkey actually gets a great ultimate off but people are just you know flashing for flashing not a big deal keelan finds speed demon in the temple yeah and there's just oh. no way out no ultimate available as it was keelan with the chrono break here and uh keelan staying proactive and it's one of those things where we've seen that a lot throughout the day where a fight will kind of disperse, but a couple of members will still look for those people who are going to farm up in the jungle or, you know, who are maybe trying to clear some wards or, or find some vision for themselves. And, and they net themselves a couple of kills. We see it right there. And now Keelan's sitting at 4, 2, and 2. He's, he's going to be pretty scary. 1,500 gold in the pocket once he does recall. 
Yep, Keelan just playing uh, the part of a demon on the rift, finding you out when you least expect it, hunting down members when they're low. So you just have to be really careful in your own jungle or anywhere when you're low and think you're safe because Keelan will find you here, especially in this game, right? He's 4-2-2. Two two. That early start there, uh, good on the bot side gank. They're going to find Love Truth Wisdom yet again. Unfortunately, does not have the demonic ascent, so he will not stay alive here now dreams trying to find a trade or another kill for his team on the top side haymaker is available should be used here it's not going to be used and dreams finds this solo kill and two members on the top side means he's nice and safe to stay here and keep farming to have tupac in the jungle again just providing pressure on this echo keeping speed demon down he did do a great job early here they might just turn on to tupac they yeah, tried to find the Xenoblade, didn't find it, only finds a slow there, a lot of damage coming down. Chrono Break to keep Speed Demon alive for now. Parallel Converge is going to be tossed out, but in defense, just in case the Siege continued. Tupac going to hit the Vision Cone as he knows the bottom lane is there to try and push him out. Dragon spawning in a minute and 30, and right now we'll just see that Vision War ensue as it will be the first Infernal Drake of this game. Yep, they do need to be careful with this Cassiopeia scaling, though, right? She is a ranged matchup. You guys kind of have to run into her with the Nasus, with the Trundle, and, and the Leona. So if she puts down a Miasma and buys time, which Ezreal loves to do that, Swain loves to do that, they have some good consistent damage. Even Set can stay alive for quite a time. If they could ramp up this Cassiopeia Conqueror and Echo can survive and Ezreal pumps out damage, they can turn a fight. So they have to be very careful and, and manage their cooldowns and abilities effectively. They will have to do just that. They definitely have, uh, uh, they're going to have a hard time getting on this vein. But when it comes to kiting back and sustained damage, as well as the sustainability on these champions, Plague Inc. and Quen, they can play that game. They can play the poke game. They can play the extended, I'll hit you with as many twin fangs as I want game. As they step up into the jungle, the nice petrifying gaze is going to find three members through the shield at Daybreak. And now Speed Demon goes in, doesn't find the stun, just a shield, but it's not enough. Now Keelan rampaging as the Solar Flare comes through to follow. Shield to Daybreak doesn't find the stun and Plaguing trying to trade it back. He does do just that. So it is a one for one, but your jungler is dead and Dragon is spawning. And it looks like the red team may be able to take this one. Yeah, Tupac just stepping up a little too much yet again here in this game. He's doing a great job finding some good engages, but uh, I think the rest of the team wants to get out, but he just keeps going in. Keelan continues to find LTW. The Demonic Ascension is there, but it might not be enough. He's alive for a moment longer, but he does get shut down. The Stolen Ultimate will be the reason for that one. And now Dreams was getting the, the worst half of these trades, but he has two levels up on Evil Monkey. He's going to go right in. There's the Showstopper, though, for the damage. Is it going to be enough? Haymaker comes through, but the Spell Steal and Lights, or the Spell Vamp and Life Steal from Dreams might be enough to take him down. These top laners live with a sliver of HP, but Dreams will gladly top himself off here. And we might see a little bit of tournament events. Oh, yeah, Speed Demon still hulking on the top side of the map. Yeah, Evil Monkey. Maybe try to pull him back. You see... There's so much regeneration in Set's kit that he's just about half HP again after, you know, being a, a sliver. As the Rift Yard goes down on the bottom side, Dreams looking for Speed Demon underneath his own turret. And Tupac, I mean, he's also playing this jungle role where he's roaming around, finding ganks, finding pressure for his squad. It's it's not him a few kills, not him a few deaths. So uh, if we see maybe a little bit more restraint on, on Tupac, I think he has the right idea, but he's going in a little bit too heavily. As who brutalizer picks up that blue buff, wins the smite fight. Even though they're at the same level, they're going to take scuttle grab. Uh, you already have a lot of your members ahead, and they just need to keep this lead going. They already have the snowball potential. The next Drake is up in a little bit less than four minutes here, and that'll be an infernal Drake, and and that's really going to spell doom for the for the blue side here. Yeah, they're down is that 7,000 gold. Sometimes that, that caster math can can really uh, bite you in the butt. And as you take a look in, in just the CS, you see leads all throughout except for that mid lane where Plague Inc. has been able to stay up on Keelan. But these guys, they're farming champions, right? Two kills up uh, in the jungle, four kills up in the mid lane, and two kills up on the bottom side. It's the, the gold lead is there. Two turrets to zero and now on Dragon Soul Point, which, again, Infernal Soul, going to be huge for either of these compositions. You do not want to give it away as now Keelan finds speed and demon. He does use that Chrono Break for a bit of health. He's got the Parallel Convergence. Will find a double stun as he goes golden, but he may have sealed his fate. He goes in and he goes out as now Keelan is dominating 
on this Silas. And I said four kills over that mid laner, but now it's five. Kip Keelan just being a shark in the water, like hanging out in that bush. Sees Speed Demon just getting a greedy recall on the river, if we're being honest, and gets caught out. Uh, once he's once he's chained in there, there's nothing he can do. His ultimate is just going to take him back to that same position. Had a good little stopwatch mechanic, right? Gets that parallel convergence. He gets the stun while he's invulnerable. But no one on the rest, no one on his team is strong enough to, to help him out at that point. They're trying to set up a uh, dive here on the top side, maybe bait Evil Monkey, thinking he's safe onto this turret as they rotate across. But Keelan again finding a, a fight onto Plague Inc. Yeah, and this could be bad here as we know that Plague Inc has the answer he's read the keelan book and he knows all the answers here he's got the study guide and a thousand gold shutdown on top yep and that's what you're worried about like plague inc getting scaled up getting some of these kills you know he has the tools he needs in his champion kit as they find evil monkey here yeah the condemn into the wall just barely as he tries to alt away onto brutalizer but there's just no escape he's got the haymaker for a bit of health but endrit now on a killing spree and everybody on this team except for tupac have been finding these kills but that's exactly where you want them it just feels like we're reading a script right i talk for you know 30 seconds and then i say oh look who else they found just over and over again finding the picks as they move on to baron yeah, and there may be no answer this is a very tough call here as it does look like they're going to send three members up to the top side chrono break is available for speed demon if he wants to try and find his way in and steal the teleport's coming down as well, but it is going to be a 4v5. Plaguing trying to find his way on the way out, but he will just get absolutely decimated. He has that shield available, but Endrit now on a rampage as they run down the rest of the team. And this is where they will pop off. They just keep moving forward. Keelan finds Evil Monkey, and there's no Haymaker to keep him alive this time around. A 4 for 0 as Quen, the only remaining member, five members strong with the Baron Pings coming out. Yep, they should take Baron. They should take this uh, this Infernal Drake when it spawns here. Uh, and that should pretty much be the game. It kind of spells doom, right? You know, they're at 8k, a little bit more up uh, on their department. The rest of the members on the blue side just don't have the items to deal with it. Once your Cassiopeia just TPs in there, an aggressive ward, they can't back it up. You had a great parallel invergence from Speed Demon buying some time, but they... Cassia was just in such a bad spot. The whole team just collapsed on her, and once she's down, that's kind of it for the fight. Every other member is so weak at this point. What do you do? Yeah, the shield, unfortunately, not enough from this Seraph's Embrace. And, I mean, we said it. The, the Fiddlesticks has kind of been the answer for a composition like this, but when you don't have the answer, right, your Cassiopeia gets knocked down, there's no real way to stop this push. The red team, they prevail when all they have to do is run at you. They just chase you down. Whether it's Wither, whether it's Trundle, whether it's Silas following you up in vain, dropping the final hour ultimate and just going ham. Now we could, we could see a fight here for the Infernal Soul, and this is not one you want to give up as they try to find Tupac, but a very tanky Leona, and the re-engage is coming through. Zenith Blade onto Quen as he does get away for now. LTW going to pick up that first kill, so it is going to be a 4v5, but you've got four very strong members still alive for this red squad and a couple of ultimates used for a pick on the support yeah but i think they kind of found one of the weak links here right tupac likes to play aggressive likes to get in your face as keelan finds this set yeah the weak links is the health bars are depleting keelan does manage to get away for now he is healing up as well and brutalizer finds a kill so support for support but play gink has fallen and again they're just going to run you down it's all up to speed demon and evil monkey to stay alive but a barrened up red squad looking to push down this mid lane and hopefully open up this base and you know what more you know attack damage does for the members of the squad it means more healing life steal and spell vamp is based off the damage you deal so a king slayer from silas and a stolen swain ultimate's going to heal him back to full health we have blood firster completed on dreams nasus here he's just going to be completely unstoppable i mean we talked about the variation and and you know the diversity and we're seeing it right here where nasus builds a frozen heart and a bloodthirster in this game and i mean wow game number four and we've seen 10 games in the last two days and this one is not disappointing either as the base has been opened up in the mid lane for the red squad as they are pressuring the bottom lane too plague inc has to be careful does not want to fight this nasus who is i mean protect the president right you just wait for the cannon minion to bang it all down but plague inc uh. says i don't think so drops a petrifying gaze he's got the twin fangs and he's got the shutdown on this nasus so he holds the push on the bottom side 
but they still have to try and survive. Yeah, Dreams just tries to go in and play Ginkus like, what are you doing, man? Just ult him and, and, and just take some down. I mean, Dreams, you have no magic resistance. You're full armor, you're full sustain. That's great versus a set. That's that's great versus some, some other champions, but versus Cassiopeia, who just locks you down and doesn't allow you to get on top of her, you're, you're just going down, buddy. There's just nothing you can do. So uh, just unfortunate situation. I think that's that's kind of been kind of the spelling of this game, right? Some people are just, just going in on Plague Inc. and he turns it around. So great job by Plague Inc. proving that he does have what it takes to compete at some of these levels, even when the rest of his team is behind. But uh, I think we just need to shape up and, and stop being so overly aggressive. Just be patient. That's how you can throw some games. So uh, I do like the aggression. I do like playmaking abilities. But in a sense like that, we're where your chances to win or, or make a play, even if you get that kill are very slim, it's a little bit of a mistake. Absolutely. Now we see the completed Morella Namicon here on Plague Inc. So he is playing the uh, the Grievous Wounds game for his team. Evil Monkey also has the Bramble Vest there. But again, you, you want it on all of your members here because there are three very strong members who now have Infernal Drake, or yeah, Infernal Drake's soul. Uh, spirit visages throughout the bloodthirster on nasus the healing is is there times a million and i don't know if that merlin Namakon and bramble vest are going to be enough to shut this down as these guys heard you they know they need to buy some time they know they just need to hang out and stop playing aggressive so they're just going to farm underneath their towers here and it's perfect because we're seeing the game plan we're seeing them just waiting in the bush hoping that the blue team is going to play aggressive but they're just wasting time so blue team can farm safely and this is how they get back in the game here but for how much longer can they do it baron spawning in a minute and 30 elder dragon in 240. yeah I, I think they're just limit testing right like oh i think i could do this why not and then it goes wrong it's like okay let's let's pull back let's let's go back to our tried and true right do some some wave management here that's how most of the games are one is through the macro sense yeah, nice pillar, but Abduct does not land, so Speed Demon makes it out alive as they continue to push these super minions out of this mid lane. And the top laners still uh, paying homage to their top lane up there, just farming it away. But a three-level lead on Dreams as the team will rotate up top. And I think even under this turret, it's going to be very hard to stay alive for this blue team. But in a game like this, red team, they're not taking any chances. Nope, and, and they shouldn't, right? You already have Infernal Soul. You're already so far ahead. Just play it out a little slow. You can wait for Baron. You can you can wait for Eldritch if you really want to. Uh, but just keep managing these waves and, and playing to your strengths. Don't get too aggressive, because they still have tools to match. Yeah, nice ultimate onto three, but Speed Demon, the only one stuck in place. He will be okay for now as the bottom lane inhibitor falls as well. Dream still on the top side, pressuring this inhibitor turret, and could be a three in hip game evil monkey is gonna get caught out by the zenith blade there's the ultimate away though he does stay safe for now and they're looking for the engage under the turret ltw alts up with the demonic ascension on this swain and they're trying to run them down nobody dead but health bars are dwindling down as it looks like the red squad may just look to pick up this baron here in the next five seconds you know, and, and dreams do come true, Tanner. Like, the red side doesn't go all in on that engage, right? They find a little pick, they, they, they mess with him, they go out. Instead of just letting, you know, Cassiopeia just wail on them, letting the Swain buy some time, they realize uh, after a few bad fights, a few bad trades, that this is how they need to play the game. So very proud of, of the red side here, of figuring out their game plan and sticking to it. Absolutely, and the gold lead continues to grow forward. 13,000 gold in favor of this red team and we're only 29 minutes into this game so you know if this game was 40 minutes ish in then this gold lead doesn't matter but right now it is so very potent you're barroned up your infernal sold up now 25 seconds here on this elder dragon and you have to assume that these guys are going to get this too you would certainly hope so it would be such a shame if, if maybe speed demon could come in here with a clutch steal uh, I'd be so excited to see it, don't get me wrong, but I want to see a clean clean end here from the red side, right? You're so far ahead. This is uh, what you want from a Peak League of Legends team, so let's try and close it out cleanly. Uh, let's see what they can do. Absolutely, and you have to remember, this is a tryout, so we are looking to see, or Coach Leone is looking to see as LTW gets caught up, and Quen is going to be the receiver 
of that stun as Evil Monkey has fallen in the jungle and there may be no way out. LTW trying to do what he can. Plague Inc. on the backside and a beautiful petrifying gaze, but the damage is coming through. Endrit is so very strong as Keelan gonna find the kill on the backside. It's up to Quen and LTW. Make it LTW being the last member alive. A four for one and it's up to the Swain, but this should be the game as the Nexus turrets fall and the Nexus under fire. Ooh, and we do see the game closed out cleanly. They bait him into the jungle. They don't even go for Elder Drake. Realize they don't need the objective. They, they heard you, Tanner. They're like, hey, we have a huge gold league. We are stronger than the enemy opponents. We have experience. Let's go ahead and get this game done. And they do. So, so happy to see the results of that game. So happy to see the growth of, of a lot of these players and the adaptation. I, I would have never thought we'd be seeing so much Nasus so much trundle so much fiddlesticks but 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 here we are and seeing the unique play styles and, and mastery over some of these champions absolutely it's i mean we're, when we're seeing the same champions game in and game out it's nice to see because it's different players right it's not uh, we're not watching necessarily the same teams over and over again and it, it, it kind of gets drew like oh double lift on senna right things of that <laughs> nature it's it's quen playing the ezreal but not only Quinn playing the Ezreal again and again and again, but with a different support, with a different mid laner, a top laner, a jungle, the teams are switching up. The the roles are switching up as far as how these these players are playing. And I think this is just such a good spotlight and it's a nice breath of fresh air from the competitive scene where you just get to see these guys throw caution to the wind and, and just try and play their best. Now, game number four has come to a close, which means that is going to kick myself and Jay here off the mic as we do have two more games to play for the rest of the night. But before we go, I do want to get from you because uh, nobody's going to hear from us again. And I, I do want to preface this by saying what we say right here does not matter towards anything. But I would like to know if you want to just run down the, the roles in general, if you have like just a couple of standout names, whether it be one person or two people for each role. Well, not to say I'm biased here, but we definitely see Keelan taking over this mid lane multiple times. Uh, that Talon game, Victor game, maybe not as show-offy, but he's doing some of these roles. I mean, you see the Silas coming in clutch. We've seen a different champion from him every single game, showing that he can play some of these scaling mages, some supportive uh, casters, and then showing he can play some of this Silas. And, and the next one I would say is Karina. Man, has she taken over these games? She's gotten a lead and ran with it from the bot lane just stomping opponents left and right just just even that game against the mordekaiser you could see her kiting so efficiently on that ash turning these fights around so heavily impressed and, and i have a few more but i want to leave it up to you tanner so i don't i don't steal all the show yeah i uh man the the jungle for me when it comes down to it i'm really looking at either uh brutalizer or doc here they both played the trundle uh masterfully and then doc was able to mix it up with the jarvin uh, brutalizer on the Elise. Those two picks really stood out for me. Um, top lane, I mean, I really feel like that one is a toss up. There were there were so many different uh, times where we've seen these guys pop off in their own regards. But uh, yeah, being a jungler, I just wanted to call out the jungles here and uh, brutalizer and Doc. Uh, granted, Trundle is Trundle as a whole. It's just a very <laughs> strong pick, but. When you see the mastery on the champion, like with the pillars and whether finding knockups onto fiddlesticks, trying to alt or locking people down, forcing flashes with the soft CC in the uh, um, in the pillar, I, I love to see just those two play this this pick here. Exactly, yeah, and I think all of these these roles are very, very close. Each player showing what they've got, uh, taking some risks, seeing unique picks, seeing different play styles on the same champion. I mean, we've seen so many different Nasuses, so many different Trundles, different Fiddlesticks, so I think it's it's so awesome being here and being able to cast, and, and we would like to remind everyone again, we have no affiliation with with um uh, with Oakland, right? Like, we don't make any of these decisions. We're not talking to, to Coach Leona about who we think is strong enough these are just our opinions mm -hmm. so so th there's no bias here whatsoever i am just so happy to see all of these players seeing success absolutely it's it and it's one of those conversations that i feel like almost needs to be had because it's not just a competitive game it is a tryout so um you know to to see these players really popping off uh in this setting where the stakes are so high is absolutely amazing now we do have two more games to go which uh if my numbers are correct in caster mass that'll be game five and game six uh coming up ahead we are going to jump to a short break but taking you through those games is going to be coach wiki and tybro from yesterday thank you guys so much 
for allowing uh, Jay and myself to be able to cast us out. Thank you so much to Coach Leone here for helping us out as well and getting our voices heard. We are going to jump to a quick break. When we come back, some new casters and some new games coming your way.
<laughs> Hello everyone, how are you doing tonight? We have had an amazing first four games here. We had an amazing six games yesterday. I'm really happy with the performances of the players. I think you were impressed as well, at least from reading the chat. Uh, I really appreciate you as a viewer being here, being a part of our segment here today. Uh, it really means a lot to Oakland University as well as Oakland Esports, the athletic department, to all of the people who spearheaded this initiative to get it on campus and get it going. We all really appreciate it. You being here watching the event, and I hope that you stick around for our competitions this fall and for the rest of the week. We have Rocket League coming up Wednesday and Thursday and Smash on Friday and Saturday. So I'd really appreciate it. Even if you haven't seen those games, give those games a try. Uh, Rocket League and Smash are very easy to digest. It's not like League of Legends where you have to put thousands of hours into it to even be able to watch it as a viewer. Uh, they're very easy on the eyes. So uh, those are some things that I really appreciate about it. And I hope that you join us for the rest of the week. We have a ton of talented players, a lot of good content for you. And something that maybe you've been wondering quite a bit about throughout yesterday and today we've been talking about it we've been tweeting about it it's been on social media i've been posting about it here it is we got velocilinx you guys see it down here in the corner velocilinx is an amazing company and they are our sponsor for the trials today i do want to let you know a little bit about them not only are they a sponsor but they're helping us out with the giveaway as well okay we've talked about this giveaway quite a bit you guys have some amazing products at Velocilinx and you've got a chance to win those products. So let me just tell you a little bit about the company and then I'll tell you how to go ahead and, and jump into the giveaway and get a chance to get that sweet gear. So, uh, you know, during the break, what I want you to do right now, just, just take a seat, okay? Sit down at your computer, please look down, okay? If you're on your phone, just ignore this part. But if you're at your computer, just take a look down Take a look at your keyboard, right? What, what, what does it look like? Okay. Is it shining bright like a diamond? Is it colorful? Is that helping you win? How about your mouse? What about that one? Okay. Velocilynx is one of our neighbors here in Detroit, and they just came out with some stuff that I think you should really take a look at. I mean, this stuff is really cool, and it looks cool, too. Um, so if you need a new gaming headset, keyboard, mouse... 
uh, make sure you check out Velasa links. We've got a link down below us at the VX. You can go ahead and hit that and check them out. Visit the Velasa links website, or you can go to any of the retailers that they're in. They have a lot of them. Actually, uh, the products are on Best Buy, Target, Amazon, Costco, and a lot more. So if you want to learn more about Velasa links, go to VelasaLinks.com. And if you're interested in the giveaway, Velocilinks is fronting some of their products, okay? Like we had mentioned, keyboards, mice, headsets, and the actual amazing products, okay? Here's how you enter the contest. Down below, we have that VX. You can click on that symbol right now, and it will bring you to one of our tweets at Oakland Esports, okay? And that will give you all of the information that you need. Now, on top of that, I'm going to go ahead and make it easy on you because life needs to be easy as much as possible. It's over there in the tweet. <laughs> I'm sorry, in the Twitch stream. It's over there. Our tweet is in the Twitch stream. All you have to do is click on it. It's going to pull it up for you. Enter the contest. It's got a lot to do with social media just going around. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss out on this product. Some of the packages that we have here are just phenomenal. Now, I'll, I'll give you some details about it, okay? If you go on their website, you'll see a bunch of different or three different sets that they've come out with the Brunus, the Boudica, and the Tear. okay? Amazing sets, each in their own right. But we have five prize packs to give away. I'm not talking about one, two, three, or four. Five sets to give away. And it costs nothing to enter. No purchase necessary, as it always should be, okay? Go ahead, give the giveaway a look, check out the tweet, and uh, I hope you really enjoy their product as much as I do and we do here at Oakland Esports. But we're going to go ahead and pass it off to our caster so that we can get into the last two games here. But I just am so excited about working with them and, and being able to tell you guys about their products. I just wanted to make sure I had a chance to do that. So I'll go ahead and, and shut my mouth now. I'll pass it off to the, uh, the other casters. Let me go ahead and get them going here in a second. Uh, but I really appreciate your time being here as a viewer. Have a great rest of your night, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the matches. And gentlemen, welcome back. welcome back. I know you have you, you haven't been gone for a second, but we just had an announcement from the one and only Coach well, Le back, Leone. Ryan. But welcome back to the stream. It is time for the main event. You think game five and six? Absolutely not. I'm talking about the casters coming back, baby. Yours truly, Ty Bro from Aquinas, and the one and only Wiki from Muskingum College. That's right, your favorite casters are back, and I'm not just talking your favorite casters, I'm talking your mom's favorite casters, I'm talking your grandparents' favorite casters, and most importantly, I'm talking your eSport coach's favorite casters. That's right, Ty Bro and Wiki, back at it again for Game 5 and Game 6. I'm excited, how you feeling, Ty Bro? Oh, I am ecstatic. I'm looking forward to this. We got some good games coming up. We had some great games in the past. Whoa, I'm all jazzed up if y'all can't even tell, but I'm ready to go. Let's get into it. The game five, the teams, if you haven't noticed already, it looks like we are going to be keeping some of the same teams from recently. Brutalizer, Keelan, Endrit, Tupac, had no GA, Dreams is back. Um, we're going to see how these one go because the last performance was spicy by Keelan and Drit and Dreams up in the top lane. I'm looking forward to this match. And what's amazing, we've already said a few times, but we still got another match after this. That's a Pog, if anything else is a Pog. This is a Pog champ right now, guys. I'm looking forward to this. I'm ready to cast. I'm ready to get into it. I'm jazzed up. It might be raining outside, but it's not raining on my mood right now. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to get into it. I hope Let's you're ready to go through, Wiki. Let's get it going. Let's get into this champ select. It looks like we are ready to go here in just a few moments. And we are in. Back on the rift. Game five, like we said. And looking at it. Oh. Slight delay, ladies and gentlemen. 
one moment. Looks like we had somebody quick leave the lobby. But either way, I just want to say, you know, it felt like the meta has kind of evolved over from day one to day two. You know, we're, we're seeing some of the, the contested picks, the ones that were people are fighting over from game to game come into play. And uh, I'm excited to see how that continues to evolve. These are the final two games. So if you've stuck with us for these past two hours, you got two more or fast four hours. You got two more to go. Um, but this is the last few games of the Varsity League of Legends tryouts for your Oakland University. I'm excited once again. Back to be on the cast with you, Ty, bro. Um, and, and that last game, I just want to touch on clean game with some very clean dives. We saw some different picks. The vein came out from Endrit. Will we see that again? Silas coming into the mid lane for Keelan. Um, and the Nasus pick in the top lane with the Bloodthirster second item after the Frozen Heart. Definitely not something you see all the time. So, you know, maybe that doesn't work out as well if they aren't so far ahead. But uh, I I'm, I'm excited to see how this one goes. Yeah, the Nasus with the Bloodthirster, extremely fascinating pick. Because the only time I've ever seen it was either... My buddy had a huge lead in top lane and then just decided to, you know, not not salty run back, but, you know, just run it back through top lane and just have a good good old time. Uh, and then I've, other than that, I've seen it in Earth. So to see it in a com competitive play tryout game, I was very fascinated by it. It worked out well. Can't deny that whatsoever. But very interesting. Uh, looking forward to see if we have, if we have any other spicy uh, item pickups in these coming games. Absolutely. So it looks like we are getting the pro draft set up here. If any of you viewers don't know what pro draft is, pro draft is a tool that is used very frequently in collegiate esports. It allows you to go through pick and bands without having to have all of the champions. You know, sometimes you might want to pick a champion, but that player may not own it. Doesn't matter with pro draft. You can pick any champion you want to at any time. And then when you actually get into the game, you can uh, select that champion for yourself. But that's, uh, that's part of the reason it's used. It's used very commonly for people who don't have everything unlocked if you had never seen it before. Exploding kit, kitty litter? Absolutely. Any champion. That's that's amazing, right? That's what we're here to see. Uh, but also, I, I do have to say, uh, shout out to the previous casters. You know, uh, I, I was hyping this up right when we got in here, but, you know, they, they, they're the ones that really run the show. Uh, so I'd just like to give a shout out to uh, those really great, great guys. They do an excellent job. Tanner and Blue Jay are the real pros here. Let's not be any. Well, there's no doubt about it. You know, we we call ourselves the main event, but you may also refer to us as dessert, or because they are the real meat and potatoes of the show here. They're the they're the professionals. They're they're the ones that are really knowing what we're doing. We're just happy to be here, happy to be casting these, and we, we appreciate the opportunity. But we are into pick and ban, and there is that Mordekaiser ban right off the bat, targeted at Dreams. And yesterday, if you don't remember, he had a huge pop-off game on Mordekaiser. He was like 10-0 by the end of the game. Um, but there's the Trundle pick. That's been contested pretty frequently as we've gone back and forth. I feel like almost every Trundle game we've seen, they've, they've done very well. Yeah, Trundle uh, has been quite the standout pick uh, throughout these games that we've seen the past few days. Very popular. He's really involved in the meta right now, so there's no reason that he shouldn't be in these games. But he's proven to be a menace no matter uh, what team comp he's involved with. He's just able to do anything possible for his team, is able to secure objectives, is able to run people down. And he's just an excellent pick right now. And as you said about the the, the real deal casters that were right before uh, Jay and Tanner, uh, you they are indeed the meat and potatoes, and we are the dessert because we're just so sweet. You know what I'm saying? Okay, <laughs> but let's get into it. We got the bands. We got a pickup on Yumi. I don't think we've seen a Yumi, but I could be uh, mistaken. I feel like Yumi's seen a greater presence in the bands. I don't remember seeing one yet, um, but I'm not surprised. Yumi, just an all-around strong champion right now. Um possibly you know arguably the strongest champion the ultimate is disgusting the healing is amazing it there's just there's very little bad to say about picking yumi at this time on the flip side though we see the bard come in as a response 
Bard, interesting champion, continues to see more play uh, as they're going on. The Electrocute Bard, or we may see the Guardian Bard. It, it's yet to be seen what we're going to get here, but I'm excited to see how Bard plays out because it is one of those champions that in the right hands can just dominate a game. So as you just said, there's the Electric Goo Bard. We got the Guardian Bard. Some people have even been running the Omni Stone Bard. So we'll just have to wait and see what he does. But we do have the Sivir pick to follow up with the Yumi. So depending on the situation, if Sivir puts the, her ultimate out there and then Yumi gives her the zoomies, right? Sivir can just be running around the lane as fast as she wants. Won't be able to get caught by anybody. Uh, so I'm very in intrigued to see uh, how that's going to happen. And there it is. At Keelan's Yasuo, I was waiting to see if it would come out, and paired with the Gragas, he has the perfect enabler. It's a classic combination, a tail as old as League of Legends, Grag well, Yasuo came a little bit later, but well, a tail as yeah. old as Yasuo. <laughs> <laughs> Gragas and Yasuo making it just too easy to get those Yasuo ultimates off, and really giving Keelan the tools already that he might need to carry this game. Yeah, so I've had a, a few conversations uh, with Keelan about uh, the placement of Yasuo in the meta. and he So Yasuo is one of Keelan's most favorite champions. I think he's that Yasuo is his favorite champion to play, but uh, him and I had a discussion probably two days ago where he said he would love to play Yasuo every single game, uh, but it, he's not in a very healthy spot in the meta. So he typically only picks it up when there's like super great engage tools like Gragas or a Malphite. So... It, it's it, I'm, I'm happy to see that he's going to be able to, to run it back on Yasuo this game because it is his favorite champion and he gets to show uh, the chat what a true Yasuo do. Even with the Yasuo picked up, blue team still respecting some of the picks we saw last game with the Silas ban and the Vayne ban coming through. And, you know, sometimes we see that, uh, that Yasuo in the bot lane. I guess we still could. You, Lucian and Yasuo kind of flex picks within themselves. Lucian frequently placed in the mid lane. So we'll have to see what actually comes through, where, where they're actually going to play. But the Corky and the Galio bands coming through, both of them definitely have a, a decent laning time against Yasuo. So maybe, maybe another hint that Yasuo is going to the mid lane. And we have a Quinn pick up here. A fascinating pick. So naturally, I was just assuming to see the Orn in the top lane. Uh, and if that's true, then we're going to see this Quinn in the mid. But Orn, he used to be played in the jungle, and he was actually quite successful. So we'll just have to see what goes on. But I'm thinking uh, naturally it's a Yumi Sivir bot lane. I think there'll be the Wukong in the jungle, and then the Orn top, and then Quinn mid. But uh, Orn has had a few... Well, he's not he's no uh stranger to being in the mid lane actually i look at all that ad coming out and i was about to say i'd love to see a malphite pick here stack armor stack armor stack armor and another enabler for yasuo feels good for the red team with the last pick malphite coming through malphite is one of my favorite champions to play uh so i'm i'm quite happy to see him get picked up in this play uh and as you say armor 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 but right when he hits about five to six hundred armor depends on who you ask uh that's when you you can start to cool it with the armor and then try to build uh, <laughs> five to six hundred <laughs> yeah you know i mean if yeah. you really want it you can just get to a thousand if you really wanted to that's but, when you switch to stacking health yes you want to stack yeah, health because uh, after a time uh it, it, it doesn't become cost efficient anymore when you when you stack so much uh, armor Absolutely. So the teams are locked in here. Looking across, we're going to have Yumi, Sivir, Orn, Quinn, and Wukong versus Bard, Gragas, Yasuo, Lucian, and Malphite. And as the teams are going through here, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this draft here, and just based on the picks and bans, I know I have a team that I think clearly won this draft phase. What are, what are your thoughts, Tybro? Uh, I think that the uh, the red squad, just, just with the combo that they have with the Yasuo Gragas or even the Yasuo Malphite, whoever gets the most with the with their knockups, they that's how they start the team fight, that's how they can end the team fight really quick. Uh, but, and I feel the only sense of engage that, uh, well, Orn has his ultimate, but then they're, they're definitely gonna need Wukong to follow up or start it and then Orn follow it up and then Sibir can ult in there. But I think my point has to go to the red side for this one. Absolutely. Uh, 
the focus this game is definitely going to be on the Asuo. If you can get a, a Gragas ultimate in, or if you can get that Malphite ultimate in, it just makes it too easy. And then once that flash is blown, not even a, a Quinn or a Wukong can get <laughs> away. Um, You're about like to add everyone. To That's right, I am. I was a little Do curious it. as to how they would assign the lanes there, whether it would be Wukong in the top lane or That's Quinn right. in the Ping top lane. That's right, ping everybody. It looks like it is going to be that Wukong in the top lane. Okay. And then we're going to have the Quinn matched up against Yasuo in the mid lane. So that, that classic range versus melee. Although Yasuo is a little bit uh, a little bit more mobile than what you might be used to from a melee champion. So, yes. So, yes, we, we just discussed how, we as, as it sits, it looks like that Wukong is going to be in the top lane. But we do have to wait until the final lock in to see if they're going to switch their champions uh, if, around if at all. Uh, if, if it actually is Orn Jungle, I'm fascinating. I'm all about it. I'm a big fan of Orn in the jungle. Uh, so we we'll just have to wait and see uh, if the, if these guys do intend to actually switch their champions, just in case if someone didn't own a champion or what have you. But we'll just have to wait and see what goes on. I'm, I'm looking at the red team, and I'm seeing a huge mid-game spike there. Once the ultimate hits, once the six comes out, you know, you've got the Malphite, the Gragas, the Yasuo. Bard ultimate is deceptively strong, you know, when used in the right scenario. Um... And, and then in the bottom lane, you know, Yumi Sivir versus Lucian Bard. Lucian Bard can put down a lot of damage real quick. So we'll have to see, you know, usually Yumi can kind of bully the other bot lane out. But I'm not so sure that's the case in the, these lanes. Yes, we're going to have a quite an interesting game on our hands. I think that the Lucian Bard... Well, Sivir does have her spell shield, but I think... That Lucian Bard might just be too much for the for the Yumi's y Yumi Zoomies. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, so we do have a switch up. We actually have Orn in the mid lane and Quinn in the jungle. Now this is interesting. The last second switcheroo here. Orn going to the mid lane. Not a shocker. Orn has seen a lot of play over the past few months in the mid lane. And then going up against the Yasuo, you know, Orn is just kind of a bully into to melee champions in general. So Yasuo can dash around as much as he wants, but Bellow's Breath, the, the the wide scale at which that hits, you're you're likely to still get hit by that. Um, but Queen Jungle, not something you see a lot of. A kind of an unconventional pick, and, and something I quite frankly love to see, because in these tryouts, if, if you've got something special that you bring to the table, if you've got something that's different, if you want to separate yourself from the rest of the pack, let's see it. I'm ready to see more picks like the the Asian Invasion pulling out the Quinn Jungle here. So I'm, I'm excited to see how this goes. Like I said, I'm a little concerned that they might be too AD heavy. But, you know, I Quinn can provide a lot of pressure. She roams around the map pretty much faster than anybody else. So if she's able to get gank after gank after gank off, you know, she, she could be the difference in this game. Yeah, even when Quinn had a very popular well she was when she when she was played in top lane uh she was up and down sideways across the map faster than you could think and she was quite a problem uh when she when she was running around in uh competitive play or solo duo whatever what have you uh when when she visited the top lane she was all over the map and she was a menace to be reckoned with absolutely so any any last thoughts tombo before we jump into this game any predictions anything you're excited specifically to see oh i'm always a fan of wombo combo so i'm looking forward to the red team's wombo combo if they're able to pull it off absolutely it should be exciting to watch all right ladies and gentlemen game five of the oakland esports varsity tryouts two games left to go in this league of legends extravaganza as you might call it but we're gonna Get, have a short break here before we load onto the rift, and we'll catch you here on the other side.
Oh, and we have an instant pause. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we got up to the game, and then we instantly stopped. So uh, we'll just have to wait until Yumi comes back, and hopefully this isn't a uh, prolonged issue so we can uh, get into this game and get you guys some content, you know? Absolutely. The, the, the tryout classic here. The, the pause strikes again. Um, but just looking at some of the summoner spells, some of the, the rune choices that we're seeing here. Um, Grasp of the Undying on A Dreams with the Malphite. We have Conqueror and his top lane counterpart on the Wukong. Pretty standard with Wukong because it's very easy to stack up Conqueror with him. And, you know, you get a, a long prolonged fights. You get the, to utilize the extra stats quite a bit. Looking further down, Grasp once again on the Orn. Press the attack for the Asian Invasion to get that little bit of boost of bonus damage on those ganks. You get those three autos off and bonus damage and shred the, the resistances there. What's interesting about Quinn is that if she's able to get her, well, when she, when she reaches late game, so most of the time she doesn't even need three auto attacks but i think the it was decided to go press the attack because of how tanky this opposite team could get with the mouth fight and we talked about the bard which way would it go it looks like we're going to be seeing that guardian bard which in this specific scenario i think is the best choice right if you feel like you have the stronger composition play something a little bit safer Play something that's going to let your team scale into the mid and late game so that you can take over the team at that part. Like we talked about, th this game really can only get out of hand, I feel like, for the for the red team if either the bot lane gets far ahead or if the Asian invasion is just making plays all over the map. So play it safe, play it slow, go with the Guardian to have a little bit safer of a laning phase. Even if the uh, Asian invasion is able to run down every single lane and, and get his team really far ahead. The red squad still has a really well put together wombo combo slash team fight that they can still pull off. So even if they get behind, they could just still hit that wombo combo and still make it out alive. And it's not just one player they're counting on for the combo, right? Dreams could totally whiff on his Malphite ultimate and Gragas can be there to clean it up. And if you know what, Bard can toss an ultimate at the beginning to set them all up so that either one of them can really plan out how they want to use their CC. There's just a lot of tools in the kit for the red team. But we've gotten started here. Red start for the Quinn, no surprise. And it looks like uh, a Raptor start there for the Gragas. Yeah, so if we notice, if we look at the, the minimap for a second, we saw that the red squad actually tried, they wanted to look for a cheese uh on the uh, opposing bot lane but uh an early word uh pointed them out so they just went the easy way back to lane action trading early oh and a magnificent oh some magnificent early poke oh is there gonna be a kill no the barrier goes off on simply gank excellent binding there by the bard to catch both the yumi and the sivir almost netting the team a kill at level one in the bot lane not a good sign not what you were looking for if you're the blue team this early into the game we do have a really nice duel happening top lane a really nice skirmish both players are quite low but they both have their corrupting pots ticking uh we have a lot of action already oh an early Another early fight, uh, level two advantage for the red squad in the bot lane. Nearly got themselves a kill, but man, we got we got a lot of action all over the place. You know, a player that we haven't talked about yet specifically, but somebody that I've been very impressed with over these past couple of days, it's Haas up in the top lane. He's had some monster games on the Urgot. Let's see what he can do with Wukong. A bit more of a, a traditional carry. Flash out of the mid lane. Orn forced to flash away after getting hit by the tornado. Botling still looking for that kill. Sivir is completely out of mana. Oh, we have another skirmish in the mid lane. Oh, the Quinn comes in. Will Keelan get taken down here? He looks like he will. First blood to the Quinn. That's excellent for the Quinn. It's okay if Orn doesn't get those early early kills, that early money. He'll, he'll, he'll survive. But if they're able to put uh, Quinn on a pedestal early into the game, that could be quite devastating for the Red Squad. 
best case scenario for the blue squad just happened right there not only do you get first blood onto the quinn who we talked about is going to be so important in this game but it comes at the expense of keelan the real damage the real central piece in this composition the yasuo keeping him down especially after he had pressed orange so much early and it looks like asian invasion may be looking for a return here yeah, so Keelan had a TP. The pillar, oh, the, oh nearly with a knockup. Quinn's going to come right, walk back in. Keelan's in dude's best to get out. His shield is proct, uh, but it looks like they'll just have to run away from that. Uh, an excellent call by the Asian invasion. He saw that the, the TP happened immediately after Keelan respawned. Keelan thought Quinn just went away to go farm up elsewhere, uh, but she was still right there, was waiting in, in the fog of war, nearly got himself another kill if that Orin, if that Orin E would have went. And just looking across the map right now, Malphite is actually doing very well. Dreams holding almost a 10 CS lead at this point over the Wukong, showing his prowess on the Malphite pick early. Quinn once again coming back into the mid lane. Keelan's going to force his flash. Oh, the flash E, the double passive on Quinn. I don't think it'll be enough, though. Oh, nearly with the press the attack additional damage. Uh, but the Asuo Shield did come up if... Uh, Quinn would have said another auto, so I think Keelan would have still made it out alive. But still, fascinating stuff we got going on already. The game plan seems clear. Gank Keelan, gank Keelan, and gank Keelan again. Understanding how important he is to their composition, Quinn back for the third time in the first five minutes to the mid lane. If they're able to shut down... Well, if we talk about damage, right? So we just have Malphite. He can put out some decent damage if when he stacks a lot of armor. Unless, you know, we were looking at AP Malphite. But we we won't be looking at AP Malphite this game. As we here has picked up the Bramble Vest, which is an excellent first item. Because uh, it's Haas has Conqueror on the Wukong. And he's looking to pick up TMS. So the Bramble Vest is what you want for the anti-heals. Uh, so Malphite can do some damage, but won't be too late game. Gragas most likely going to become full AP. Gragas can be that damage, but he, can, he won't be that sustained damage. Uh, the only sustained damage that we're looking at for the red squad is the Yasuo and the Lucian. And if they're able to shut down the Yasuo, they, they still have the Wombo combo, but it, it won't be as impactful as it could have been, right? So it's an excellent idea just to try to shut down the mid lane. And we see that Ord is actually only 8 CS behind Keelan. So I think Orn, is, Orn the foreign guy, is, is holding himself quite well in the mid lane. Uh, but Keelan will be able to pick up this wave as it crashes in. Uh, and as we see, we have Dragon Buff, Dragon up right now. Uh, Rift is up in a minute and a half. And so we'll probably see a, a slight rotation to the bottom side of the map to establish the vision, which gets control of uh, a Dragon here. Oh, we have an early scuffle. Near oh, will she get away? She will. There was the Ignite onto the Yumi and some excellent damage. And with the Q that went through all the minions and nearly took Yumi away from Sivir. We see both Keelan and Gragas heading towards the bot lane. You know, we've seen a bunch of trading going on, and as they're zoned off the minions, what's almost a 30 minion lead for the red team is only extending right now. All that time spent in the mid lane has kind of left the bot lane just high and dry in that 2v2, and they continue to be punished and bullied in the bot lane. And although that time has been spent, you know, ganking Keelan in the mid, he's still holding a 10 CS lead. So kudos to Keelan for the ability to not only withstand those ganks, but continue to maintain a lead over his lane opponent. So we see the Yumi was forced to back from the earlier scuffle that we saw. And now we have the red squad looking to get this this early Drake. And especially with this team comp, the, Wam the Wamo combo team comp, to pick up an early air dragon, does it give the uh, the cooldown reduction, or is that only when the soul happens? I that's, cannot that's recall. A, the cooldown reduction on the on the Drake, the soul gives movement speed. Oh yes, after you get the movement speed, so it's excellent to get the uh, the early air Drake for the Wamu Tamo Wamu combo, excuse me, because we're they're gonna look to to all, every single team fight they want to they're gonna force fights. Be like, hey, we're gonna run at you, we're gonna fight you, deal with it. Like it or not, it's what's gonna go down. And we see that there's actually a lot of damage coming out from the Malphite Qs. He, uh, let's see. Now if I could kill him here. Yep. There, there it is. Goes. That, from Dreams, excellent decision. That was too easy, more or less. I think Wukong got a little too confident, we could say. Uh, he, he, he definitely should have looked at the back. Bars look for the portal. But, or it's a bait, and then they go through the portal. The exhaust goes off. The Lucian 
ultimate comes out. He's kited through the minions. A flash from the Sivir, and down goes Sivir. Uh, and then another, there's a flash. Oh, yeah. Comes out with the Q, and they're gonna follow up. Gonna try to finish the job under tower with the flash. There's a double kill. Uh, it's Haas with the late TP. He's gonna chase him down. But yet again, if he chases him down, it's a one v two. The ultimate goes out, Ooh. and then Bard says, "No, thank you. See you next time." You know. It Unfortunately, if you're the blue team, you know, if you're if you're sitting here as the Asian invasion, yes, you have that first kill. Yes, you were able to get the first blood. But looking across the maps, it, unfortunately, there just appears to be too many fires for him to put out at once. Top lane behind, mid lane behind, bot lane very behind. All across the map, red lane taking advantages and gaining leads. Absolutely, the red team is not too ahead, but they're definitely ahead, right? So they got the early Drake. They were just looking at Rift Herald, but they decided to back off of it. So I'm thinking after they secure both lane prio and top and mid and get a little bit of vision in the blue side that they're definitely going to want to look for. And we see a little scuffle goes out. The W still goes. The w oh, Malphite absolutely just rooting this Wukong. This Wukong definitely doesn't want to try to fight Malphite. He's just too tanky already. Oh. Uh, oh, the, the force flash from It's Haas. He has to get out. He had to flash. Um, Malphite then, is just beating him up. And there, as we see, Wukong cannot even go in for his normal trading patterns. As soon as he E's in the Malphite Q, the Malphite E, the Malphite W, and just bopping him over and over again with those empowered auto attacks, doing the damage, clearly winning these trades, and almost getting a kill up in the top lane. And you can see, to, to make matters worse, we talked about the full AD composition. Ramble Vest, first item from the Malphite. You know, it's I'm not surprised, and he's definitely going to get a lot of use out of that item as the game goes on. Yeah, so how it works is that the Malphite, e, his, his slam that he does, uh, it actually reduces enemy attack speed, right? So when we see Wukong Ian. It's just the same same in the matchup of uh, Camille, I believe. It's a oh, we have a little scuffle in the mid lane. Keelan maybe gets a little too excited, but Andrew does come up. Andrew, excuse me. Uh, the colors goes out. The Bard up that comes up. The Force Flash. And we have a fight in the top lane. It's has is possibly gonna get away. Oh, he goes back in just for another knockup. Nearly cost him his life. Another scuffle in the mid lane. The E doesn't hit. Got a lot of action going on. Action all across the map, and for the most part, Red getting the better of it. Flash forced out from the Asian invasion as the Bard ultimate would have meant death for sure if it had landed. But good roam by the bot lane up to help gain those advantages in the mid lane. Endrit coming through, Tupac coming through, and almost snagging a kill for them. But one thing that, you know, a small light in this game, we see in these trades between Foreign Guy and Keelan, Foreign Guy starting to to get a little bit better and better as the game goes on in these trades, as he, as he starts to hold his own against Keelan. Yes, and he does have the Bramble Vest and the Ninja Tommy. Very, he has the same uh, item set as Malphite in the top lane. So they're going to have some tip, uh, we'll say sim similar builds in this game just for the early game, but we'll see possibly see a change up into the mid to late game. Uh, we have Dreams looking for a fight because he knows he can win, especially because he's so ahead. Uh, but I think if played right, the, the foreign guy can indeed take down Keelan. Three oh, man gank. Have, oh, three man gank. Down goes foreign guy. He flashes. Oh, the E, but the ignite's on him, but the, oh, the gas oh, oh, oh. goes out just in case. But the Q ignite from Keelan <laughs> sends him down. Keelan sets himself up there with his own tornado to get the, the, the ultimate off. And it just makes it too easy for Brutalizer and Tupac to follow up on. A kill for Keelan in the mid lane. Flash blown for Morn. He almost got away, but in the end, the cask would have finished him off either way. Looking for an objective, Infernal Drake is up as Malphite comes down to help with the with the Drake. So we saw that as the red squad ran into mid lane, try to get try to and succeed on the kill on foreign guy. That Asian Invasion actually secured that Rift Herald, but it doesn't seem that they're going to be able to uh, rotate down for this dragon. So they're gonna. I, I, they can't hold on to Rift for, this, for the upcoming Dragon because it won't last that long. So they're going to want to put it into possibly bot lane to get their bot lane some more gold. Because right now, I think we're just looking to get some turret gold. Actually, 
Her goal is down in 20 seconds, so they have to put it down now and and push out that lane, or they're just gonna have to wait and just use it till afterwards. But the question is, where do you put it down? None of the waves are in an ideal position at this time to use it, and like you said, with probably 10 sec, five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, there's not enough time to even get that plate gold at all. Absolutely not. So the game plan was probably most likely to get that that early gold. Uh, but it was unsuccessful. Now we do have Bard actually ganking top lane. Uh, Orn is actually rotated top. Maybe we have a little switch, but Bard, Bard may be in trouble. In a bad position. He flashes out, but the oh, the ulti goes down. He's able to uh, Bard ult uh, the Orn from being able to hit his second cast of R. Injury goes in bot lane. The force flash from simply gank. He's gonna look for a tower die. The ultimate goes out. The barrier oh! goes in and he finishes him with the ultimate. Bard is still. Dancing in the blue side jungle. He's gonna heal himself, gives himself some movement speed to get out of there. Possibly looking for a possible re-engage here. Uh, but I think right now they're just possibly gonna push out mid or they're gonna sit in pixel brush to see if they can get a pick on Quinn, but she's looking in the back. Orange pushed the top lane. Uh Andrew and Lucian is pushing in bot lane, gonna do a really good dam uh really good number to the tower. Bard yeah. makes the great escape. He just clips Quinn with that two-man ultimate to help him get away. And then we see in the bot lane, Endrit with the solo kill. But here we are in the top again. Keelan with the tornado again snags himself another kill on the foreign guy. And Keelan is now up to a 350 gold bounty as he extends his lead to almost 50 CS against his lane opponent. Yeah, so we saw foreign guy go top lane. He's like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to... Hang on top lane. Keelan says, no, you're not. You're coming back with me, baby. And takes him and throws him into the dirt. I liked the idea of swapping the lanes, trying to have somebody respond to this malfight. But very quickly, the red team makes the decision that, oh. Action here in the top lane. The Bard ultimate <laughs> <laughs> will snag the kill. Yeah, so, so we saw Tupac throw his ultimate onto the tower, establishing it's like, hey, we're going to dive, right? Uh, and then Quinn had nowhere to go. So it was a free and clean pickup for the red squad. I wanted to highlight, we said in the draft, good bard players are a different animal when on the champion. And we've already seen the multiple different ways you can use bard. Alting the turret, fighting in the jungle, pressuring the bottom lane over and over again with uh, just even your autos. Tupac has looked excellent in this game on the Bard, and they continue to grow their lead here. Now 7K at 16 minutes in the game. So earlier we said that Quinn can be all over the map in, the, in an instant, right? So can Bard. He's got his tunnels, his portals, excuse me, and he has uh, mobility boots. He is cruising everywhere. And we see possible knock of the Ornal for the disengage coming in. The flash from Dreams, the flash from Dreams, the Wombo combo goes out. Bard just doing some damage to the backside. Four guy, so that's a three for zero for the side of the red squad. And like I said, Wombo combo, they're gonna they're, they're gonna say, hey, we're gonna fight and we're gonna do it now and you can't stop us, right? There it is. There was the combo we've been waiting for. Huge ultimates from the red team and they wipe the blue team with one blow. Yes, the bot lane's still alive, but it doesn't matter as they press forward to take the mid turret. That's what they've been waiting for all game. That's what we wanted to see. And even without it, they've been able to grow a massive lead, but it just shows how powerful and how potent that combination can be with the Gragas, the Malphite, and the Yasuo. Oh, we're looking for a bushwhack here. Bar with a beautiful Q. Gets a stun. And they're going to take both of them down just like it's nothing. Two more kills for Endrit. And this is looking pretty desperate already for the blue team. 12 to 1 in the kill score. 32k to 23k in the gold. Bard ultimate coming out. That's going to miss. But full control over the map. Excellent vision control in the red side. That's what you really want to do with your lead. When you have gold leads on the map, transition gold leads to vision leads. Use that power that you have to clear out the enemy's vision or to set up your own vision and really control a side of the map. And that's what we're seeing here. Blue team can barely walk into their bottom side jungle without fear of dying. And as we just saw with the Sivir and the Yumi, 
if you take that risk, you may pay for it. And they did with a double kill going to Endrit. Yeah, so we see uh, Rip Brutalizer and Tupac just taking the red buff and just letting the team just take the Drake. And the, and the red buff will actually go over to Tupac. Uh, so when, if he gets on someone, they are slow. They will not be able to get away from him. Third Drake going to the red team. That puts them on soul point. It will be an Ocean Dragon. You know, at, at this point, I don't want to say one dragon's better than another because... They're all pretty good for them when you're this far ahead. But it'll definitely help give them that sustain, help them stay in the lanes even longer as they wish to push this lead. So, at the very beginning of the game, the blue side looked good. Asian Evasion got those quick ganks, worked out very well, got himself that kill. But it's where the red team's... Oh, we got some d d fights going on. A little scuffle in the top lane. Foreign guy looking to proc that brittle. Oh, it goes away right, right before the auto goes out. Keelan and him dance in top lane. He misses the, the EQ. Keelan is again taken low because of the, how much armor he has. Foreign guy can't do it, but it flashes into Tornado. Malphite comes in, TP's in. Oh, the flash rage and evasion. Keelan windwalling everything. Oh, but the Asian evasion will get caught on the Tornado. And now Foreign guy will do his best just to dance some more. We saw some time. And there he goes. He goes down. Excellent map mobility and movement from the Red Squad. Holding that win wall for the Orn Ultimate. That entire engage he held on to it. Was able to snuff it on the way in. Good 1v1 there. Friends showed up at the end. Honestly, if played maybe a little bit cleaner by the foreign guy, he might have been able to get Keelan there. Um, but a close fight nonetheless. Oh, flash Q from the bar with the E flash combo from Rip Brutalizer. Red squad just running it down on the blue squad. Uh, this is there. The blue squad's the blue squad is in dire straits as of right now. Well, they have been there for a while, but the red squad just keeps pushing and pushing, and they're saying, "Hey, you got to answer us." But the blue team really just can't. They're doing their best. Foreign guys trying to tank as much as he can, but it's, it's simply not enough. That's right, and as we're looking right now, they're, they're pinging on the Baron on the map. That'll definitely be their next objective. They'll probably back here, set up vision control in that topside jungle, and look to, to take that Baron objective to help break the base. So if we take a moment to look at the farm differences, uh, you know, subtracting Yumi and the Bard, <laughs> but we see Sivir and Lucian. Oh, we have some more... Keelan getting into some, another fight in the mid lane, but oh, another flash into the tornado. That's a shame. It's Haas. He's getting desperate. He tried to make a play and ended up just causing himself some tomfoolery, but it does happen to the best of us. You can flash that tornado, but you have to time it just right. Otherwise, it just turns into a feels bad moment <laughs> as, uh, as he flashes into the tornado and, and totally snuffs out that opportunity there. So we see the red side taking vision control of Baron. They know that Orn's bot lane. Uh, his TP is up, but yet again, I think they're just going to want to concede this one. They're not even out of base. They can't even do anything about it if they wanted to. And if you're the blue team, like you said, you can't walk up to the Baron at this point. With, with no vision anywhere close to the Baron, you're asking for death. With the, who's in that next brush you walk up to? Is it Gragas? Is it Malphite? Is it Bard raiding to, to root you against the wall? You don't know, and for that exact reason, that's why that vision that we've talked about has been so important and why it's been an excellent play by Red Team to continue to, to utilize their advantage to, to take those vision advantages. So we're looking to see the Red Team just run it down uh, in mid lane. Uh, truthfully, if they get one really nice Wombo combo, they could end the game right oh. now. The burn, burns the Gragas cast. There goes foreign guy with the ultimate, but they can't really do much. Oh, Endrit just ruining the Asian, not the Asian invasion, but Sivir. Uh, and we're just going to have Endrit finish out with his damage. He's doing all that he can. And this looks like game. This is going to be it. Red team with a dominant performance. 23 and a half minutes into the game. They're going to break the Nexus. And, you know, it's hard, it's hard to say, oh, one player just was a, the star of the show when everybody on the red team looked good. 
Keelan, Endrit, Tupac, Brutalizer, Dreams. Everybody had a standout game. The only death of that game coming in the first few minutes on that first blood by the Quinn. And after that, they reeled off 20 kills in a row on their way to a 23 minutes and 44 second victory. Very dominant game. You know, we, we talked about the draft at the beginning of the game and how it might put the uh, the blue team in a difficult position. And as, as we look at the, the damage scores for the game and look down across the line, I mean, Bard, Bard alone did 8,700 damage, close to as much damage as the, as the most on the blue team, which was the Orn with 8,900. And if it tells you anything about just how dominant that bot lane performance was, Sivir, not the type of damage numbers you want to see, was never able to really take off this game, even with the Yumi helping in the bot lane. Yes, I also have the damage charts up. Hopefully we can get that on stream for you guys. But just the Oli D really put a damper on the team. Uh, you know, they were able, Malfoy was just able to stack armor and... Wukong just wasn't in a position to really do much. He did the best that he could, but he only came out with 1,457 damage. That's because he couldn't do anything any to the Malphite. The Malphite was just so tanky. And when he would try to duel, Malphite would just E, and then he couldn't auto attack. And, and you know, Wukong really re relies on that, especially when he has Conqueror. Um, it's it's in a point where as Wukong, you want to be dodging in and out with these trades, right? But every time Wukong would go in, he'd lose two-thirds of his health for it. The Malphite was just bullying in the top lane. And to be fair, we, we talked about the Malphite pick. Once you saw the, the final five locked in for, for the blue team, to me, it was a no-brainer Malphite pick. You have a full AD composition. You've got the Yasuo already. You're begging the red team to take Malphite in that position, and that's what they did. And it worked out perfectly for them. Excellent game. Excellent play by red team. And, you know, looking at this, though, I, I, I just want to shout out to the viewers. Thank you for sticking with us. But we do have one more game for you all. Game six, the final game of the Oakland Esports League of Legends varsity tryouts. Stay tuned. We got a full nother game of action for you. And I'm sure it's going to be an exciting one. So stick around. We're going to take a short break and then we will be back. never die when the world is calling you can you hear them screaming out your name legends never die they become a part of you every time you play for reaching greatness relentless you survive
Oh, ho, ho, ladies and gentlemen, it's time, almost time, it's almost time for game six. We're back, we're in action, we're ready to go. We're just waiting for the for the teams to get their pro draft on if necessary. And then we're getting into it for the final game. So happy that you guys for that you guys could stick with us this long for the, these two dates of, of incredible games. I'm looking forward to it. I'm here with the one and only Wiki. How are we doing, Wiki? I'm doing good. I'm excited. It has been a long journey, and we have arrived here. Final game of the League of Legends varsity tryouts for Oakland Esports. Thank you to you, the viewers, for sticking with us this whole time, hanging out, watching some excellent League of Legends, and seeing the future stars of Oakland Esports here on the Rift. It looks like we are about ready to hop into the draft here. Two completely new teams for this game. We're going to see some favorites returning to the rift. You know what? I, I, it's hard to pick a favorite with so many talented players on here, but we've definitely had some players who have shown up over the past few days of action. Um, so I'm excited to see how these two different teams match up. 
um, certain lanes that I'm, I'm very interested to look at the supports here pepperoni tomato versus love truth wisdom love truth wisdom has definitely brought a little bit of a different style to the support role in this tournament pulling out picks like Cassandra, picks like the swain and pepperoni tomato showing his dominance with the thresh pick yesterday We'll have to see how these two stack up against each other, both stylistically and head-to-head. -head. Um, I'm excited to see specifically what Love, Truth, Wisdom pops out because I know that those kind of AP supports have become more and more popular as the as the meta has shifted. Um, and then, you know, of course, in the mid lane, Razor Lore versus Plague Inc. Both of them have had some good performances in this tournament. Razor Lore pulled out the Pantheon multiple times. Pantheon mid, a personal favorite of mine. I love the ability to enter fights at a moment's notice. So it may be banned. I wouldn't be surprised, but I'd be excited to see if he picks up that pick again. And then plague you know you never know what this guy is gonna pop out right we saw him on the trindamir mid we saw it get banned the next game after he played the trindamir mid so I, i'm excited game six a final final time for our our league of legends tryouts here i'm, I'm ready to get into the draft absolutely so we, we you just talked about pepperoni tomato and first things first that's an excellent name right <laughs> but I think if Pepperoni Tomato continues to be the great support that he is, we'll see if he, if he whips out the Thresh again. But if he's if he's able to maintain and continue the excellence that is his support play, we might have to change his name to the Sauce Boss. You know what I'm saying? The Sauce the Boss, sauce boss coming baby. at you. And you know what? I... How dare I not mention the junglers? Doc and Speedo Demon have been two of the highest performing junglers, arguably the two highest performing junglers this entire tournament. Speedo had some carry performances on Fiddlesticks. Doc has been a stud on the Trundle pick. Let's see what comes through in this draft as we're already into the ban phase. Jungle being targeted with that Graves ban. Looks like neither Doc nor Speedo Demon will get their hands on it. Yeah, as we said times before, and I bet the other caster said that times before, Graves, the one and only right now. He is the jungler. He is the one you want on your team in solo queue. Uh, he's just he's just the guy right now, right? Still doesn't have a cigar, but hey, that's not here or there, right? So I'm not surprised by that Graves ban. We see the Charnel ban, same deal. One of those top junglers. And we see the set ban, which is, it's John. It must be accustomed to the set ban now. And it's not just that the Trundle is strong, it's that Doc has had such standout performances on it. But then it is, we talked about it in the beginning, the Trindamir ban coming through again. Plague Inc. will not be taking that Trindamir to the mid lane, no sir. Um, banned out again against him, so he'll have to pull something out for this game with that taken off the table. Uh, if I do recall, uh, Plague did lose that game on Trindamir mid, but... It is, it is, he may have lost, but yet again, it is so respected that they continue to ban it, uh, ban Trindamir when they face him just in case he wants to pull it out again. So he, it may be a loss in his match history, but it is definitely making his opposing enemies uh, worrisome. So, so they always have to, always have to ban it against him. So, you know, he may have lost, but he does get that, you know, he, the uh, I did good, you know, and we do see the fiddle sticks in the first there pick. It is. So the question I is, the question is, will we see another game of fiddle sticks top? You know what? I was about to say the fiddle sticks has been left up, and we know how Speedo Demon loves that pick. But with it's John already pulling out the fiddle stick multiple times, will we see that fiddle sticks back to the top lane? The Maokai locked in as a potential answer for the fiddle. I think, so let's say that it is Fiddlesticks top lane, or if Doc is going to get spicy and spice it up, I see in chat, they're just like, we want, we want to see something new. We want to see something new. But we'll see if it does go top lane or if it goes to Doc, because if it is Doc, he's spicing it up, right? Getting new champs in his champ pool. Uh, but, let's, but theoretically, let's say that it is top lane. I think Maokai is an excellent pick, because Fiddlesticks will just hit W, 
and then Maokai can just hit Q or W get and just interrupt that, rendering Fiddle Six useless, right? So I think the Maokai is an excellent counter pick, so to speak. And to pick Fiddlesticks first is an excellent draft strategy because it is that flexible pick, right? You don't know, is that a jungle pick for Doc or is it a top lane for It's John? It leaves you a lot of options as you continue to go through this draft phase. Senna picked up on the side of the red team here and we have Thresh, the pepperoni tomato Thresh is coming out, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to see it here again, matched up likely against the Senna, but he has got his signature champion, and I'm hoping, hoping we see the same type of performance that we did yesterday with him on it. Absolutely. Right before the Thresh pick went through, I was going to say, maybe even Pepperoni's going to get a little spicy, put a Phil 6 support. It's very rare, just like a Phil 6 top, but it could have happened. But we see it did not happen. Uh, so we do have the Thresh, we do have the Caitlyn. Uh, and now we look like they were po we're hovering a leaf for the red squad. Was, oh, the, quite a fast lock in. So the Lee said quick lock in. in. They knew what they wanted to do, and they quick locked in the Lee in there. Now with the fiddle sticks, you can think of Lee as kind of an answer to that. As soon as the fiddle comes in, if you're quick enough, you can kick him out. But you know, with the changes to Fiddlesticks, he gets that instant fear on you as well. So it may not be as, as fast as you're used to. Um, but the Vigar ban coming through, very smart ban. As we saw yesterday, Razor Lore had that pop-off game with Vigar where he just dominated in the mid lane. Just does so much utility when you go that Glacial Augment build on Vigar. And the Syndra taken out is an answer. Running down in time for the final ban. We'll see what's going on here. Oh, it looks like a Pantheon, but Pro Draft isn't always 100%, but we're going to assume. Yep, we do have confirmation that it is a Pantheon ban. Last ban is Pantheon. So Razor Lore will not be picking up his Pantheon mid this game. Not surprised both with both the Vyar and the Pantheon banned out. Razor Lore has had some excellent performances in this tournament. So putting two bans at him is not shocking. But the Nasus ban comes through. Not something you see every day. Definitely a, an evil monkey 213 special right there. Targeted specifically at that top laner. We'll have to see how red responds here. What they're able to pick into this composition. But like we talked about with the Fiddlesticks pick. There's still so much flexibility that you can pick, draft here for the blue team with their final two picks. Yeah, and we do see the Varus lock in, so not naturally we will have to assume that it is Senna Varus bot lane. Uh, Varus being one of the, or the top ADC in the meta at this current moment in time. Uh, when I find myself on the rift, typically Varus is always banned. Looks like Mordekaiser may be coming through for the blue team, and it is, is locked in. Mordekaiser. Once again, uh, another pseudo flexible pick could go top, could go mid. What will be the last pick here for the blue lane, blue team to to round out their composition? Uh, if we look, so if we put the fiddle six and Mordekaiser combo together, so let's say, let's say that Varus, he just, oh my, is that an Aurelian soul? Holy, I haven't seen that dragon in ages. It has been a long time since I have seen an Aurelian Soul on the Rift, but we are getting one today. A spicy pick for Game 6 here at the Oakland University League of Legends Varsity Tryouts. Aurelian Soul in the mid lane, and that tells me that Fiddlesticks may be heading to the jungle. Um, Mordekaiser top for It's John, and Zareth locked in as an answer for the Aurelian Soul. Now this... It's going to be an interesting game. I haven't seen Aurelian Soul even popular when he was. So right when he came out, you know, he had a little, he had a little popularity. It was here and there. At the end of the day, he is a huge galactic dragon. So if you're into lore, that's quite interesting, right? But even then, he's not a very popular pick. So maybe this is a hidden OPOP from the one and only Razor Lore. So we'll have to see if he's able to, you know, gather the stars, put the team on his back, 
Revenge from the way that is the Galactic Dragon? Absolutely. Razor Lore potentially pulling out the Aurelian soul here. I'm I'm looking at his history here. I don't see it anywhere, but apparently competent enough in those picks. You know, Aurelian Soul is one of those champions that when you see it locked in, it gets you a little bit scared, right? Because you don't see Aurelian Souls unless you see those Aurelian Soul mains. That's not a champion you see too many people pulling out for fun or to first time it. So definitely going to be interesting to, to watch the Aurelian Soul. I'm excited to see this on the Rift and uh, see how, how this plays out. So we're looking to get queued up and start the actual bands of the game. Here we are. We're going in now. So right after this one, the naturally picking bands once again. Then, you know, we'll, we'll have try, I'll try to get some insight into the team comps and see where everything lies just from champ select, and then we'll give you guys a small break, and then and then we'll pick right back up into the gameplay. Absolutely. So looking at the team compositions, any potential weaknesses you see uh, as you look across the two of them? Sorry, say again? I'm, I'm looking at the two team compositions and some things that, that might be a potential weakness. You know, uh, the blue team does have double AP with its both its top laner and mid laner and then when you look at the jungler it's just even more ap thrown on top of that if maokai can start stacking up those magic resist items he could be almost unkillable in this composition if they can get to the caitlin earlier in team fights yes yeah, so the greatest position that maokai can be can be in is if he is facing a team with two or more ap's and as we see from just the first three picks, that there are three AP. So this is an excellent, uh, a, this is an excellent game to be Maokai, right? Evil Monkey two one three should be able to just be able to stack the MR and just become quite an issue for the opposing team. And then, and, if and then we move into the ADC role. Uh, yeah, I believe it's Caitlyn, right? And then we have Thresh. So Caitlyn's gonna be the only one that's gonna be able to do damage to him. And then that's until he he gets his two or three. Uh, AP, sorry, magic resist items, and then he's gonna move over to probably a Sunfire Cape, maybe even a Thornmail in addition to that, and then Caitlyn won't be able to do much to him even then, unless she is super ahead, but Maokai is going to be the tank of tanks in this game. Absolutely. And if you're the red team, the plan is clear. It's laid out for you, you got the tools to do it, now you just need to execute. Classic poke composition coming in with a combination of the Xerath and the Varus with excellent forms of disengage built into the composition. When you're building a poke composition, you just can't pile on with champions that poke. You need to have a way to disengage at the same time. And whether it's a Lee Sin kick, a Maokai ultimate, a Senna lockdown, you know, or, or the Varus ult even, right? multiple tools from which to disengage the fights and then just go right back to poking so it'll be interesting now what's important about these type of compositions is if, if you want to do a poke composition and you're fighting around objectives such as the dragons it is imperative that you set yourself up at these objectives ahead of time so that the other team is forced to walk into your poke it's much harder to be on the outside Especially when you have a team with like a Fiddlesticks or a Thresh who's looking to deny vision and engage on you out of the fog of war. You need to be setting up and getting yourself ready to take these objectives ahead of time. So that means two minutes before the objective, you're calling it out. You're creating your game plan to get your vision down or deny vision from the other team and making sure the team is all on the same page so that you can utilize that poke composition to the best advantage that you can. So the tools are there for the red team. They, they have a clear play to make as this game goes on. Like you said, Varus is a very strong champion right now. He's actually getting nerfed in the next patch that, if that tells you how strong he is. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, sometimes you see the on hit build, but with, with this type of composition, I'm sure he's going to be going lethality Varus 
And then on the other side, you know, like we said, that wild card play, the Razor lore on the Aurelian Soul here. How will that play out? Typically, you see Aurelian Soul wanting to just shove waves in and roam. So we may see a lot of action early in this game, whether it's in the bot lane or up in the top lane with Razor Lore leaving the mid lane to try to impact the other lanes. So we do have a game coming up. It's going to be it's going to be a game. It has to be, right? So we have very interesting team comps. Uh I think I think if we hit late late game, I think uh that the red that the red squad might take this one away cuz I think Malka might just be too much. I think if the blue blue side is able to kill all the carries and then just one v one v five the Maokai, then they'll have a great chance. But I think that is it for us for now. We'll be going to break. Uh, we will see you guys very soon. child in Valoran has heard the tale before about the cursed mummy boy who felt his heart no more so sad and lorn the helpless lad of who was his name he ventured out to find a friend and learn about his bane
many years, young Amumu traveled through the lands, determined to make friends if only they would understand. But even when Amumu stood upon the ledge of home, his hope would disappoint him, and he would remain alone. But then the curse began to whisper in his ear and would confirm what was Amumu's biggest fear. It pledged that never shall someone become his friend. It pledged that he shall be alone until his end. We are we are back once again. So we do have this pause, and we were just told by the one and only coach that we had this pause because he had to he had to talk to a few of the players. So that is why we're paused currently. But we will see that pause go right away after that conversation is concluded. You know how it is, Coach Leone coming in with a special announcement, doing his special coaching things. And before we get into this game, I I want to ask you, the viewers, are you following us on Twitter? Twitter.com slash oakland esports and then if you want even more league of legends insight go follow coach c leone that guy the most handsome coach in east michigan by far go give that guy a follow and while you're at it oakland esports twitter.com go hit that follow button and that's where you'll also find that giveaway the giveaway for these uh this awesome gear so we're here on the rift. It looks like we have mirrored invades. <laughs> Both teams <laughs> doing the same invade against each other. That was it is choreographed <laughs> the same exact way. It is just the same thing. Oh, there's the dual recalls. Okay. Oh, it looks like they're, they're, they're gonna take the buffs here. Uh, but Doc looks like he's gonna possibly not try to take the buff. But yes, those were <laughs> choreographed the same way. Excellent stuff, uh, but I Excellent. think both teams both teams are, are starting to be suspicious of one another. They oh maybe they're invading us as well. But yes, I couldn't agree more. Coach Leone, he's quite a handsome man. I can't deny. He's it. quite a handsome man, and you know as the season goes on, if you follow Twitter.com/OaklandEsports, you may be able to find about about some events that Coach Leone will be at live and in the flesh. You can bring your keyboard. You can bring your desktop. Anything you want Coach Leone to sign, he'll be there at those events for you to sign. Uh, just just follow Oakland Esports. That's all you need to do for the latest updates and latest information, what's going on with the program. We're talking keyboards. We're talking mice. We're talking speakers. We're talking monitors. Mouse but pads. Mouse Eight pads. by tens of Coach Leone. Whatever you need signed, he is there for you. He's got it. You want it. He's a handsome man. We got a scuffle in the late early. <laughs> Oh my goodness. We sorry guys. We just got distracted. He'll sign a few if you want it. He's a handsome man. He's he's a man of the hour. He's he's popping off. Uh, he said. But you have to be following on Twitter. That's right, the right. only way that happens. And you might you you might look in chat and it, it says I literally never said I would sign anything. <laughs> That's a lie. All right. He he said that he he just told us, or he didn't. You don't know. But would you like something signed? That's the real question. Only right. one way to find out. Absolutely. So don't forget to to find us on your social medias. Hit us up with a follow. Maybe even like some of our stuff, you know? Coach yeah, Leon, handsome man, funny guy. Why not give it a few likes, you know what I'm saying? Action um, in the top lane here. We've got the Mordekaiser. You know, Mordekaiser can be such a bully in those melee matchups. Once he gets his passive going... It's a shocking amount of damage, um, but we definitely wanted to talk about the Aurelian Soul. Uh, it seems like the lane has been pretty even up until this point. We haven't seen any of those early roams yet that, that Aurelian Soul is kind of known for, but as I say that, he's got his eyes on the bottom lane. Unlucky for him, <laughs> Lee Sin is around. Looks like he's being collapsed on here in the mid lane. Lee Sin oh, lands the Q. Aurelian Soul in trouble, gets the ultimate down. Looks like that could be first blood to the center. Hook though, pepperoni tomato going in. And we have Inch John here in the bot lane too. It's a party, TP's in. Another kill goes over. 
Fiesta's yeah. all around, and Flash Hook, another Flash going now. Play Geek with the blue buff trying to run away. Can he do it? The hook, oh, he misses, oh. but cleanses it anyway, just in case. Oh, he autos the minion's gonna get slowed down. But the just showing he can him. do it. But Seven gets him out of there and keeps him alive. Maybe he's gonna kill on the way out. Oh, but he gets pulled in by the H. John, it's not maybe to finish. But Speed of Demon's still here. Another TP down goes Demon. We're still fighting. We still got a Fiesta. It's oh, okay. it's alive. He goes down. Another, another mishook opportunity from Tomato. Oh, Plague King's still looking. The double buffs on the Karina. Ladies and gentlemen, we got ourselves a game, baby. Call your mom. Call your dad. Call your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Call your grandparents. Because we're on. We're live. We got a game going. Five kills in the bot lane. Both TPs used. Big plays on both sides. We talked about when we would see that Aurelian soul roam. And Red was ready for it. Collapsing on up. him. Really, he's forced to flash. The Q's going to go out still. Race Lord. Oh, he has Conqueror? Fascinating. The, ladies and gentlemen, that was quite an intense situation we just had. Also, I must uh, comment on how amazing the top laners from yesterday and today, how their TPs were so on point. Like w Right when one goes, the other one matches it. It seems instantly, and vice versa. Either that was the idea, or they, it was the same wavelength at the same time. Nonetheless, but this looks like an early dragon. Doc can't get it in, so this time to give it away. Uh, Razor Lord does get stunned. He's gonna be get beat up a little. Ooh, this looks not good for Razor Lord. He's one v four, and the silence goes out. He's gonna do all the best he can to keep him alive. Razor Lord, little fear. Woo! Razor Lord looks like he's gonna get out, but or Doc looks like he won't. The one, one all the way down goes Doc. Three men pushing in mid. We got ourselves quite the game already. Two to four, six hundred gold difference. Uh, Botley's being pushed in by the blue side. Uh, looks like Lee Sin might try to run on top lane. It's trying to push it in. Maybe look to do a little disco, a little dance, but he's going to want to get out of there pretty soon because he's pushed up and he doesn't have any vision. You talk about the top laner steeping into the bottom lane. It's John was on top of it there. Entered. He, it, it was as if he flew out the side of the screen, but speaking of it's John, getting a gank, Lee Sin into the top lane, and he is going to go down. Another Keep kill for Speedo Demon. As he's been flying across the map, killed second death for Itch John, 0 2 and 0. But you know, it's kind of hard to keep a Mordekaiser down. We'll have to see how this top lane continues to play out. And even the coal start from Itch John in the top lane to give him even more of that scaling as the game goes on. Yeah, so we did see that uh, getting top lane just now. Itch John, he had a, he had a mistake. Can't deny that he was pushed up too far. Didn't have vision. Got a little too excited. Oh, we saw Plague Inc. just get juked out by by Scuttle though. But it happens to all of us. Scuttle does have the potential to break ankles. So I must commend Scuttlebug for doing it to him. Right, ladies and gentlemen. But nonetheless, we're moving forward. Uh, if we take a look at the CS scores here, we do have it's Sean ahead, even though he is uh, died twice. Uh, we look at jungle, very close, one difference. But now if this is ahead because Lee just came off that reset. Mid lane uh, is about one wave difference. And bot lane, the blue side is ahead. Kayla actually has two kills, so that's gonna be really good to get her ahead. Try to try to start to carry this team, put her on her back. Uh maybe not carry, but you know, get get the team fights going, get that get that damage out there, uh, get them low enough to the uh, the really soul and dock and it's John can finish finish him up. And as we're seeing, we talked about the abundance of AP damage on the blue squad. Well, who better to get those first two kills for them than the Caitlyn? 2-0 to start the game out. Ultimate from Xerath coming in, and Pepperoni Tomato is going to go down. Sniped out, and that's not all they want. He's still here looking for the kill. The heal comes out. He's juking really? him, doing the best he can to get out of there. Excellent. Excellent communication from the red squad, but it looks like they still want some more if they can get their eyes on her. But she's gonna caliber net out of there and they're just gonna push in turn and get some plays here. Excellent play there by Blake Inc. roaming to the bot lane to use that Xerath ultimate to snag that kill. We talked about the Aurelian Soul roaming, but it's the Xerath that roams this time, helping to build an advantage for his bottom lane. So we do see that. 
Maokites actually picked up a Sunfire Cape. Sorry, excuse me, Mommy Cinder, rather than uh, a Spectre Scout. And I think that's just because of, of the damage that uh, it gives. So for when you do something, but look, we're gonna die of a Maokite. The ult comes out, but then he's just gonna answer with his own ultimate. The twisted trees coming out, um, and very interesting attempt from Doc. I, I wasn't sure if he was just gonna drop rift and be on his way but interesting uh, is a good way to describe it um yeah ulting pro trying to ult from the fog of war hoping that evil monkey might step up and get hit by that ultimate and as you already may have noticed aurelian soul also waiting in the wings but malachi's a hard tree to take down that's a that's a, a hard one to to fell there and uh with his ultimate up with already that cinder built, that might have gone poorly if they had continued that dive, even if Doc had landed the ultimate. <laughs> Tom Tom Zero, what is the announcement? That is correct. Everyone, it's on everyone's brain, but naturally, just stay tuned. Because in the end, we're going to tell you what it is in the very end. Right? We don't want any spoilers, right? Yeah, yeah. No, so no, no spoilers, end, dude. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know what's going on, but we won't. But we'll, we'll hand it over to Coach Leone. These oh, the spoilers. Oh, goes out. And we go, oh, 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 my. 100 to 0. She goes down. The ultimate counter comes up. The flash Q. Oh. oh Speedo uh, with the mechanics. He flash Qs into the Caitlyn to trade. But that all started out once again with another excellent hook by Pepperoni Tomato, showing why that's his best champion. Oh, here comes Razor on. Ooh, the blue buff goes over to Doc here. A TP from Ichchan. The, oh, must have been another, the other TP from Maokai coming in. But he's going to get silenced, and it's going to be 1v4. And then he's going to go down to Ichchan, get himself some money. Right? Evil Monkey is a brave man. Teleporting and flashing into four members of the blue team there. Trying to make a play. Doesn't work out for him this time. And it's John is able to grab his first kill of the game, but excellent plays by both sides in the bot lane before that. Great hit by, hook by Pepperoni Tomato, and then the follow up by Speedo to get the kill, the one for one. But once again, like you said, almost on cue, both of the top laners teleporting to the bottom lane. There's either so there's the three things that are happening: either great communication on both sides to call out the TPs. Great map awareness from the top laners, or just great natural instincts, right? But nonetheless, amazing TPs. We did see the unfortunate Flash W in from from Evil Monkey that did result in his death. But yet again, a really nice idea of a TP, uh, but just didn't work out the way that he wanted to. He must have just not saw. Him. Oh, here comes the Crow Storm. Oh! From Doc. He's gonna get the fear off, but he's gonna W right out of there, and they're gonna try to push him down. Speed Demon looking to go on Doc. But it looks like the Roots can have a few uh, expended ultimates and then walk away here. Oof. Karina's getting poked out by the Varus and a bot lane. It's looking pretty rough from that poke, especially that she that he's gonna that uh Queen Varus is gonna look to go lethality here. Oh, oh, one more Q and Karina is done, so she's gonna have to get out of there. The hook goes up from Pepperoni Tomato. Looks like the least said. Oh, the ultimate goes out from Senna, but miscalculation doesn't find the target. But it looks like the red side is going to go for this dragon. And there it goes. Cheeky play there with the rift by Doc, putting it out as bait and then ulting on top of it. Just wasn't able to get the kill there. And in the aftermath, like you said, Speedo able to pick up the second dragon of the game for the red team. And unlike the last game or two that we've seen, We've got a close one on our hands, folks. Gold almost even, 13 minutes into the games. And uh, I'm excited to see how this one plays out. Yes. We have seen a lot of action. You know, the red team is, is ahead in kills, but they are, uh, and objectively, but they are down in gold. So I'm very looking forward to this match. Like, we had some crazy plays already happen. I'm looking to even th see some more. But we do see that Maokai has picked up the Catalyst. He is going to go in for a little bit of a dance because Speed Demon's here. But down into the Shadow Realm he goes. Evil Monkey can do the best that he can. It's John looking to clean him up. See if he can. He's going to give him the... There's the, one. Uh, he gets kicked under turret. Maybe he can... Oh, but... Oh, oh, oh. Speed Demon showing him 
who the boss is. Oh, a close hook by Pepperoni Tomato. Uh, but an excellent hesitation from Speed Demon to wait until uh, it's shining as the flash. The ultimate goes out. Oh, love, truth, wisdom goes down from the Caitlyn headshot. Karina showing the prowess on the Caitlyn, 100 to zeros the Senna there, not able to get that ultimate blacked, and it does enough to secure the kill. Here we are in the mid lane, GLP comes out, Fiddlesticks ulting into the mid lane, Aurelian still looking for the kill, and he will take it with the ultimate. First kill on the board for Razor Lore as he uses that Aurelian soul to perfection. I'm really looking forward to see if the Aurelian Soul will be able to mend the galaxies, right? I'm looking forward to see if he's going to be a monster. The he early heal goes out just at, just for, a per, for just for a as a precaution. Excuse me there. Uh, but if we bring it back down to bot lane, Karina four and one is the largest com largest champion. Uh, we could say like the most damage, the biggest target right now, right? So Karina is looking to make those plays early. Be that damage for the team. Definitely going to be very devastating in team fights, especially since Caitlyn has a huge range. So she's going to be right in, the, right in the, her own back line and be able to put out some monster damage numbers. And with that bot lane turret falling, we do see the lane swap coming in. It's John going to the bottom lane. At the same time, you're seeing the Rift Herald played made. Definitely something to point out. If you, when you can rotate your bottom lane to the top side of the map, utilize that 3v4 advantage towards objectives. But we have a fight break out here. 4v4. Down goes Razor Lord. Speed Demon picks it up. Karina's going to try to get out of them. The Zarath ultimate goes up. She's going to have to do, juke everything. Oh, but she goes down to the sudden of the snare. Down goes two for the blue, squ blue squad. Down goes Karina. She had that bounty. So she was worth a good amount of money. Did we see, did Rift go down? Who Did we see who got Rift? I'm looking on there to did see. Did no one get Rift? Or did it despawn? I think it went down, but nobody picked it up. I'm not sure exactly what happened with the Rift there, but we talked about swapping the lanes. Unfortunately for the blue team, right idea, poor execution. They were not able to get that Rift Herald taken out before the bot lane of the red team arrived, creating that 4v5 situation. And it looks like, just a shout out from the viewers there, it looks like the blue team may have snagged the Rift, but were not able to pick it up, just as we kind of imagined. Um, but Karina, even... Even with those four kills right now, we can see how devastating that poke can be. And with the CC setup, whether it's the Senna or the Varus Ultimate or the Mawakai Lockdown, it just makes it too easy. Skill shots have to be a lot less skilled when your opponent is locked into place. And that's what this composition does well. It sets up their poke champions to easily set down poke on the other team. Thank you, Apollo, saying that Blue killed Rift but couldn't pick it up in, in time. That That is your prediction, and that's as clean as the one that I could make as well. I, uh, it just, you know, the, the Rift went down, the, the fight ensued, nobody tried to, the excuse me, no one was able to pick it up, so it was it was hard to make heads or tails of uh, what was going on right there. But nonetheless, thank you for your uh, insight, we could say. But we're looking down here. We have uh, Dragon up. Evil Monkey is top lane, pushing in the tier 1 tower. He does have TP. Uh, it's John also has his uh, TP, yeah, but he's currently sitting mid lane. He's, he's down here just in case the fight doesn't break out, so he can be there before the Maokai TP. Oh, but Karina already getting poked out. He's going to have to juke everything coming at him. Can he do it? Keep oh. himself alive. Oh, just goes down. The fight breaks out. Crowstorm goes in from Doc. He gets exhausted, and then Speed of Demon ults him out the way. Uh, Let's see, I really it's on the top side. Doc's gonna go down. The, the heal is out. Oh, but is it enough? He nearly keeps himself alive and takes down Speed Demon. But it's John doing the best. He keeps Razor Lord alive with taking Evil Monkey into the Shadow Realm. The sh Evil Monkey throws out his ultimate. He's just gonna try to do his best to stay alive. He is Maokai, so he's extremely tanky. It's John gonna end up in a 1v3. He's gonna get CC'd. His shield's gonna go up. If he gets more Q, he can take down Speed Demon. He, ki he gets him and he stays alive. You see what's more though. He misses his E on Evil Monkey. He's gonna look to get out of there so he doesn't get taken out by Plague Inc. 
you know, we saw a lot of the things that we talked about in the draft phase kind of come to fruition and, and play out in that fight. We talked about setting up four objectives ahead of time. The red team was able to get in a position where blue had to walk into them, and essentially it cost Karina her life. She was not able to get in. She just took poke after poke after poke and was eliminated from the fight before it really even began. We saw the Lee Sin kick also be utilized to kick the Fiddlesticks out. Now, the Fiddlesticks did get a lot of damage down up to that point, so you know it was still a very effective ultimate, but that was just one of those tools that we talked about um, but most importantly, Karina going down, setting up, allowing your composition to poke the enemy team and forcing them to walk into you, essentially set up the red team for success. Steel. Oh, stolen from the Aurelian soul, the savior in the time of need. Doc wasn't even in, an in a place to steal it, but the one, the only, Razor Lore with the pick, the Aurelian soul, is able to be the hero be the knight in the sharding armor, and steal that away. Amazing. Razor Lore comes up huge with the dragon steal. That would have put red team on soul point there, but instead, an infernal over to the blue team, and it's John is just pounding away at that top tier turret. He picked up multiple other kills from... 0-2 oh, to 4-3, and, and now a 400 gold bounty. It's John is becoming a monster in this game. So we do see Aurelian Soul is currently sitting in the alcove. We have Thresh in the wings waiting to make a play on this Maokai. We'll see if they're able to do it. We'll see how long they want to try to dance it out, play it out. Uh, try, to, try to bait him in there. We see Lisa is on the top side, so Evil Monkey might try to bait. Oh, here we go. So we go. Here we go. Uh, they go into the Shadow Realm. It's John going to do his best to beat him up when he's in there. Speed Demon's going to come answer him when he's out there. But he said, hey, man, I can't save you. There's three of them. Down goes Evil Monkey to Razor Lore. I think if Razor is able to get a lot of gold on him, get all those items that he needs, he'll actually be a – he'll put out a disgusting amount of damage. So – and that might be what the team needs. Oh, John with the Flash E. The hook <laughs> nearly going a pepperoni tomato. The, the Q with the glass to come down. The Chrome Storm over the wall with the Flash. Fears everyone. Doc with three fear ends it with the double kill. They're going to let Speed Demon go away, and there's pings on the Baron. As, uh, we have Zarath for the Red Squad. Bot side just hanging out. He, he was clearing out uh, blue, and now he looks like he's getting scuttled. But it looks like the blue squad will look just to get Baron here. It's Sean on a recall. Does have TP if needed. Oh, he is going to TP just in case, just for the pressure to secure that Baron. Try to ward off anyone that comes his way. And this should be a free secured uh, Baron by the moves of It's John. It's John gonna get to a scuffle with Speed Demon, but It's John does have th two levels on him. But Speed Demon putting out that damage, John doesn't have the resistances for you. He's gonna try his best to stay alive, but he'll go down so they will trade Baron for the life of It's John. Excellent positioning by Doc in that last fight, getting behind the other team for that huge Fiddlesticks ultimate that enabled them to get the Baron. It's John trying to hold off the red team and, and, and keep Lee Lis Sin away from the Baron pit. He is successful, but it costs him his life, which unfortunate for them, having It's John with that Baron buff would have been a, a huge power spike as they look to split push, and it would have forced multiple people to try to handle him here with the Baron buff, but... Either way, Baron Buff sitting on four different members of the blue team. Doc coming with the Chrome Storm. The, the Hex Tech goes out. Doc can do his best to stay alive. The Hook of the Clans on Plague and then the re-engage from Speed Demon, but it looks like the Red Sky will look to re-engage here. Uh, he's going to get CC'd. The ultimate goes out from Caitlyn. It does get blocked by Love True's Wisdom. Uh, the Varasaur goes out, gets Razor Lore, and it looks like we're just having a poke war back and forth. Speed Demon, very low. Maokai was running back top of him, but now he's looking, coming to come back. Everyone's really low. Uh, oh, the ultimate from Zerath going out. I love the little cheeky uh, Senna Q onto the Zerath to try to grab the, <laughs> the assist. <laughs> yeah, just in case. Hey, gotta, gotta hey, get that KDA, right? As a support player, I respect that. That's exactly <laughs> what you should be doing. <laughs> Here we are. The blue squad has a 3,000 gold lead. Same turrets. Uh, one kill difference. One difference in the... Uh, Dragons here, but we do have a 3k goal difference. And we see that the dragon is coming up in 57 seconds. So the blue squad will look to establish vision and 
uh, take away other vision. Maybe even look for a death bush here to uh, get that free dragon. Doc already sitting in the wings. Razor Lord doing his best to, to hang out. A blind Q. Q. Maybe he's just under suspicion. Uh, but Sweet Demon finds them and gets them out of there right quick. Looks like they're, they're, they're going to push out mid. Maybe they'll... I don't think they want to give this Drake, but they look to push mid to get to get their attention attention elsewhere for the Red Squad. Because they do have that bear buff, they do want to use it. Uh, Red Squad, it's going to take Scuttle, going to establish the Dragon control right here. You're going to get this tower, though, while everyone's waiting for Dragon. And I think the Blue Squad might try to re-engage or re look to re-establish Vision in the blue side and see if they can get a pick and then go for the Dragon. Absolutely. Utilizing that Baron buff to take turrets and then moving back to establish Vision around the the drake but as you said red already able to get that scuttle crab definitely able to to secure vision here and we'll see if they're able to to utilize that poke composition in the same way they were able to use it around the drake earlier if we take a look at the cs once again it's sean with close to 30 above uh evil monkey and then we have doc and speed demon speed demon does have 13 above there is well, now, just 16 uh, in the mid lane for Plague and Razor Lore. And when it comes to bot lane, we have uh, a 30 ish CS lead on Karina. And we're going to look to secure this dragon. Looks like they're going to give it. Let's get stolen away. Ooh, the smite was close. And it gets secured by Karina. Razor Lore, 1 HP, so to speak. It gets really close. Uh, it's shot. Oh, the Senna ult will take him down. Down goes the dragon. Dual ult engage here. Uh, Very in trouble. Really bad situation here. Inchon is going to ult away speed demon, but when Inchon comes out, he's going to be 1v5. So if it's just to get one kill, it's not necessarily worth, but he will exit with a kill. So that is beneficial. Uh, well, we'll, you know, we'll, you know what? Hashtag worth. We'll call it worth, right? Gotta trade one for one. The big point there, though, blue team comes out with that Infernal Drake, their second Infernal Drake of the game. Pushing down the mid lane here. Doc on the side. We'll see. Ultimate coming out. There goes the Crow Storm. But the exhaust goes out. And then so does the Senna snare. Uh, he's going to get out with the Thresh. Oh, he, uh, the, Maokai does step on. Oh, the insane damage from uh, Karina's Caitlyn will leave Evil Monkey alive. Doc is always waiting in the wings with the Crow Storm. Uh, he is doing exit, find these these uh, small positions to play from and get that, the, the fear off with the Crow Storm, with that Fiddle Six uh, passive, I believe. And yeah, I think so. We haven't seen Doc play Fiddle Six all week. I think he's doing a just fine job. And so now we see the next objective. We have Baron up in a minute and 12 seconds. We have the next Dragon up in three and a half. So naturally, I think we're gonna, we're gonna see the rotation from uh, Karina and Pepperoni Tomato to play top side, and we'll have Mitch Sean probably play bot side because he does have TP, and we'll have Razor Lord naturally just go back into mid lane, and then we'll because we want to play off, uh, off top side just because Baron's coming up, and we don't don't want to give away those Barons because it is a close game still. There there is a 3k gold difference in favor of the blue squad, but still, team fights sway back and forth. So it is we're still looking at a game. Looks like we are being requested by the chat to, to, to say, here comes Doc. And you know what? Here comes Doc. Next and time you know, it happens. Absolutely. Next time. Next time, baby. We got it. And this is anybody's game, like you said. We've seen team fights go both ways up until that point. 15 to 15 are the kills. If that tells you anything about how back and forth this game has been. Um, but as we continue to scale up here, you know, you have to wonder... Who's going to handle its Sean with that Mordekaiser just growing stronger and stronger? Can Malachi hold them off? And can the rest of the team win the 4v4 if Malachi is not there? So, it's Sean, as you say, is going to continue to be a menace. He's going to continue to get stronger. And so... When, he, when we reach Baron fights or when we try to fight for Soul, he can just take Leeson into the, sh the Shadow Realm. Uh, the Death Realm, excuse me. And then, uh, you know, hopefully that'll be a free drag for the Blue Squad. So they're going to have to try to play 
really smart, really well against uh, it's John and, and his positioning. They're going to want to play around his movements, I guess we could say, right? Because they don't want to fight uh, with him there. So if anyone can possibly answer it's John without dying from him, it's just to occupy him. But we do have the red squad actually looking to go Baron because they, they know that the the blue squad is mid lane and bot lane. So a very cheeky call from the red squad. And it looks like they're going to stay on the Baron, spotted out by the Blue Ward. But now they're going to back off. Now they're going to give up that vision there. Uh, th there may have been a window there. There was a good 10, 15, 20 seconds where they were just kind of hanging around while the other team did not have vision of what was going on. But either way, smart call to back off. Don't really want to risk the game at this point. And to be honest, not in the best position to team fight there. Yeah, we do see the blue, the blue squad just taking every jungle uh, camp from Speed Demon here. And so we do have a small scuffle from Mitch John trying to, trying to put some hurt on Evil Monkey here. Uh, and from what I've read in the chat, Evil Monkey and, and Itch John uh, have found themselves facing one, one another quite an, an amount after all these games in these past few days. Itch John still looking to do a little tango. Uh, but he is not too taking just yet. He still has all damage. He doesn't have any resistance built up. So he's going to not want to front line, but we, he's going to want to get in there. And... Actually, we do, we do see. So we uh, the bot lane for the red squad do, do have the same items. But hit. Oh, oh, the flash from Itch John because he's in, they're in the death realm. It's not going to come out 1v5ing. He's going to oh, he flashes the Q away. The crow step over the wall. Here comes Doc, ladies and gentlemen. Another exhaust on Doc. He's gonna look to stopwatch here. Pepperoni Tomato with the ult ultimate. Get, get, he's gonna get, the, get himself a Q. Raise the lower, going through the walls. Gonna slow him down with his uh, with his passive, but the the, the flash from the Malka is gonna get him out. Oh, down goes Doc. A beautiful ultimate from Plague Inc. And you know, in the in that whole sequence there. Well, still some more action here. Evil Monkey coming in with Speedo. Pepperoni's going to go down. But in that whole sequence there, Red or Blue Team able to secure the third Infernal Drake. And it does not look like we're done yet. Oh, but great damage from Karina and Razor Lord. They're going to try their best to stay alive. Uh, Razor Lord going to move his advances onto Plague because Plague is more of a threat than Maokai here. Karina going to do his best. Oh, the Flash Auto going to secure the kill. It's John does arrive for the pressure here. He's going to E in, and then Plague is still hanging out with Gromp. Someone did activate Gromp, so it's going to beat him up a little bit. Uh, Rizzler will go down. Karina going to do his best to juke out Plague. One Q and auto. Oh, we'll do it, but the flash from, from Love Truism will take down Karina. It's John still looking to fight, still looking to do a little dance. It's John has four levels on this center. Oh, but Love and True Wisdom is giving him a dance. He's trying to break his ankles. One auto away, trying to do his best to stay alive, but he will fall to the passive. Yeah, and it, what I was saying there was it, they were able to get that third Infernal Drake in that whole sequence, which puts them now on soul point. Four Infernals is a lot of damage, and I really wanted to highlight Karina in that, that whole sequence, not only for her play there at the end, but during that team fight around the dragon, she was in an excellent position. All the fight was kind of going on over the wall from her. And she was allowed there to just stand in auto and put down damage, just shredding the other team as the Caitlyn. But once again, kills are tied 20 to 20. We have a close one here for sure. <laughs> we see the Zarath play gank looking to ult the uh, blue buff. Steal away from it's John, but it's John does secure it. Karina is taking the red buff here, and if you if we look, Plague Inc. Some people have been saying Plague Inc. in the chat, but I must commend Plague Inc. He is currently six one and nine, and he has twenty three Magi stacks. Right? I don't think I, I, from what I've seen from the stream in the past few days, there has not been a single Magi. But you know, I haven't caught every single game. I was busy somewhere in there. But it looks like we're going Baron. But he has twenty three, nearly a fully stacked Magi. Plague is definitely showing his prowess on these mage mid laners. There it is. And they are shredding this Baron here with that fed Caitlyn. Oh, the, 
The Lee Sin Q is short, but they are going to back off either way on it. Smart play, uh, you notice that they did not hit that ward in the back of the pit. That would have alerted the red team that they were on the Baron play, so smart play to kind of leave that alone. It's John does get caught out here, but he's gonna bring him to the death realm. He's gonna do his best to get away. It's Sean when he comes out, always oh, he gets Lisa and ulted away. And Crow Storm comes in. Uh, Speed Demon's gonna be all by himself. Uh, another perfectly timed zone is from Doc. Here come it's John. It's going in. Ooh, three hits on Queen and he's out of here. Speed Demon will fall. It's stuck with a double kill. They're gonna do their best to, to take away the tank that is Evil Monkey. He will fall to Karina, and Karina will look to possibly pick up the Senna. It looks like now they will for sure move over to the Baron because uh, Speed Demon has fallen. And just another fight where Karina's allowed to free hit. You know, between the combination of Itch John, Doc, and Razor Lore, and even Pepperoni Tomato creating space in these team fights for Karina. She's just standing there and constantly autoing over and over again and picking up these kills. Now, 8, 4, and 3 on the Caitlyn. Most kills in the game tied with it's John. Woo! A correction. Nine, four, and three on Karina. Now most kills alone in the game. Oh, here comes the crow storm. Oh, but Doc got too excited. The chat wanted to say here he comes, but he decided to walk away because he just got a little too excited there. But yeah, Karina is doing some mad damage. Uh, what the red squad really needs to do is get on the back line, get on Karina, and uh make sure that she's not able to do all that damage but the front line that well the front line that is it's john and doc with the crow storm oh well, asking you shall receive Rina. there you go uh <laughs> it's done uh, flashes over the wall aggressively speed demon's gonna have to pop the stopwatch it's john cues a bit early oh if doc can get over the wall this will be infernal soul here they're gonna have to go down doc's doing the best he can to waddle around he jukes out the to the varsal it gets two hit by oh, oh john steals the infernal soul uh evil looking with aggressive flash gonna try to take out doc and he will oh oh my goodness the mobility and range that is the wrath is nuts and he's still going he's still open he will take down the whole blue team there is an ace i believe that is the first ace of the whole game plague has proven himself to be a menace ace from the red squad but it's john comes up huge with the bear or with the dragon steel gets infernal soul for the team four in a row for the blue team and once again we check the kill score here and we are all tied up 27 to 27 36 and a half minutes into the game this is turning out to be one of the best games of the event and you know what? We asked for nothing less with game six today. Yeah, you know, it's game six. We, you guys got the silver scrapes. This is what you wanted. The people wanted a game. This is a game to watch. Every game before this has also been entertaining. But man, is this a game? We're tied of the kills. Infernal Soul, Infernal Point, excuse me, has gone over. Uh, a, a, still a 3K gold lead for the blue squad. But yet again, the red squad is still able to put up a fight even with this disadvantage plague is currently level 17 and karina oh my in comparison to pepper and tomato he's level 13 so plague is definitely extremely ahead uh this is this quite is the, game the setup that you want right here you want controlling vision your whole team here for blue to walk into you they have to walk over wards they have to take the bars poke and we have an engagement Oh, another Zerath ultimate. Look if he can finish out Doc. He does enough damage, but is it enough? Ooh, down goes Doc. Uh, they're going to look to do Baron now that some Doc is gone. Karina getting a little excited going 1v3. He will take down Queen. The damage is enough. Oh, but the kick and then the, the QSS and the, and the flash out. Oh, but play with the W will take him down. It's John's in there. He's going to get in there. He's going to beat up the Zerath. He's going to try to get in there. Get on Evil Monkey. The damage is out. Uh, True Love Wisdom is doing some damage on the side. Uh, really Soul W is coming in, ruining both team members. Love True Wisdom is by himself now. The ultimate goes out. Look at this to do a few more Ws, and Love True Wisdom will go down. Now that is an ace for the blue side. Looks like they will just either like to push out. Oh, the ping on the Baron has gone up. Fiddlesticks will be up in nine seconds. 
but a Baron call with just Mordekaiser and a Brilliant Soul. Interesting, but yet again, they they are very ahead. They have a lot of AP. And so much soul damage. Fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I stand corrected. I got too excited. They do lots of damage. Uh, this looks like a free Baron for uh, the blue side. Uh, Caitlyn's up in four seconds, trying to hold out to get her in. Uh, the buff uh, Thresh is in a 10 seconds. Maybe they'll try to delay for him as well, but I don't know if they will want to do that. Razor is pushed off to go do that. If Varus was a little early, oh, they're gonna try to hold off. Can Varus steal it? Maybe. No, it will go down to the blue squad. If they held up, let, let's say theoretically that the Thresh, his they death timer it. was a few seconds later on, they, they would have held out some longer just so, just so uh, Thresh could get the buff and Varus could have possibly looked for a steal there. That would have been absolutely nuts. But thankfully, Thresh died when he did, so he didn't have to hesitate any longer. And the game swings back. Just m shortly after Red Team's able to secure the ace, Blue Team strikes back, securing the ace and the Baron, now opening up a 7k gold lead in this game. But it, as we've seen in these last few fights, the gold lead really hasn't mattered. This is still anybody's game. It is still anybody's game, absolutely, because the team fights are still close. Even then, it was a, a three for five trade. Only, only two members survived for the blue squad. Uh, it, there was just some. Well, Karina played really well and just 100 to zero uh, the virus, I believe. The Zareth will expend his ultimate already. It, it must be on a short cooldown if he's looking to burn it already. Uh, but the Baron buff is active. They're going to look to push in the waves. Uh, the blue team might want to look to rotate top to get that tier 2 tower. Uh, but it looks like Itchstein will just push in bot lane. Uh, but actually, tier 1 top might just fall because of the minion wave that's already there. But right now, I think the blue team is just going to look to try to dance. They're going to put Itchstein bot lane, try to force some pressure there. And then they're going to have the other members use Baron buff in the other lanes. And then the red squad will be forced to make a decision to collapse on one of the lanes. And importantly, in one minute, we have the Elder Dragon coming up here. So while they're pushing in these waves, securing that vision control, setting themselves up to take that Elder Dragon, just another tool in the kit for Blue Team to try to end this game. If we just look at the sheer... Oh, oh my damage here. Uh... <laughs> wow. The Infernal... Oh, it's John goes for the for the in hip. He will look to fight for it though. So he gets speed demon. The GA goes down. Karina one hit will fall down to this rest ultimate. It's John still fighting, still full HP. He decides to fight, pick a fight with Evil Monkey. Evil Monkey is now not does he does not have enough magic resistance to fight it's John. If John will take him down, another fight in the mid lane. Love true wisdom, truth wisdom will possibly fall to the Aurelian soul. Oh, here we go. The pepper oh. with the Beto of Evil. He's nearly evolving into the South Boss, ladies and gentlemen. We do have Barry Mains on the towers. The first tower has gone down. Uh, but it looks like the Blue Squad might be able just to end the game here. But Plague is definitely a, a force to be reckoned with. Looks like they're just going to back off. They're going to go to Elder after one reset. And then uh, that, if, then they're going to just have to force a fight with the Elder buff. And that could just be game. But if the Red Squad is able to turtle and just wait out the Elder buff, they still have a chance in this game. Importantly, two inhibitors going down in that fight so so close multiple members of the blue team escaping with just slivers of health but they are on the elder dragon here and you have to think that with two inhibitors down a nexus turret down oh, oh my <laughs> days nearly oh. stole my way <laughs> with two inhibitors down and the nexus turret down now with the elder buff blue team's gonna be looking to, to push to end the game here Uh, but before all that juiciness happened, I was going to say, let's take a look at the vision scores. Senna, tr love, truth, wisdom, with an astounding 123 vision score. Absolutely uh, trying their best to have the map awareness of the uh, and map pressure of this game. Uh, the next highest is just an 88 from the opposing support. Love, truth, wisdom showing incredible... Uh, Vision skills. It it does help that uh, that they have the umbral glaive. Yes, that's what I was gonna say. That does help because when you clear words, it gives you vision score. But 
absolutely 123 definitely an excellent score to see there final turret in the top lane going down looking for that final inhibitor it's not taking a bunch of poke and down it goes triple inhib for the blue team still sitting with that baron or elder buff Oof. uh we do see plague inc oh one ultimate away from ending karina I, th I think we must commend both teams. They bo have both played excellently this game. It's been quite a spectacle to watch. Uh, we do see John absolutely just running away with the top lane CS. He has reached 300, whereas the opposing Evil Monkey is at 195. Excuse me. Uh, Crowstorm does go out. Looks like Doc got a little too excited once again. But we do have uh, triple in him. Uh, Baron is up in 40 seconds, so... If the red squad is not able to push out these waves, it'll be it will be a free Baron, and then the blue squad can just run down any lane that they want. Well, they should run on every single lane to get as many minions in there as possible, because the red squad will not have enough wave clear to answer these the opposing team. And at this point, you know, with Itch John being as big as he is, I, I mean, they, they don't really need him to pressure the Baron at this point. They can send him to the bottom lane just to continue to shove that up, and the other team is forced to respond. And when they respond, clean Baron take right there. But while Blue's setting up Vision in the red side top jungle, they, they need to make sure that they are clearing out the Vision on the Baron. That, that one Blue Ward back in there will show them that this is happening. Um, so... Not as clean as it could be, but as you can already see, Red, no chance to respond. Absolutely not. Oh, and that Baron is gone within 60 seconds, right? That was outstanding amount of damage. Uh, and now it looks like that the blue squad will just... John just had a reset. He's going to TP top. Get the, get the top lane pushing with the minion wave there with the two supers. And it looks like uh, bot lane is crashing. This is perfect timing for Baron buff. That there's going to be so many minions for the enemy team to deal with that they probably can't. Oh, the hook on Speed Demon goes down. He's instantly half HP. He's really close to getting taken out. The so, Caitlyn ultimate goes out. but Oh, but she gets locked up. Karina go, falls down the play gank. The hook from Pepperoni Tomato goes out on Queen. Crowstorm will finish him out there. It's John. Oh, goes on play gank. He tried to cleanse it, but I don't think it works that way. And then so he's stuck in the death realm. The fight is so it's John cleaning him out. Speed Demon falls down. Truth, Love, Wisdom will also fall. Do the, oh, do the Aurelian Soul. Here we go. Give the give him the kill. Aurelian Soul, 10, 6, 14. Excellent display of skill from both teams here. But we will see the blue team be victorious. I'm actually a huge fan of the Aurelian Soul action from this game. You know, one of the best games we have seen in this entire tournament. A back and forth affair. Uh, I just, great plays from both sides, right? You saw big hooks. You saw big Zareth plays, like everything was coming together. Both teams were allowed to showcase their skills in this game and what was a very entertaining and exciting affair. Absolutely. So, I mean, l taking a look at the damage charts for this game, I can only imagine how much Plague Inc. did. Let's take a look here. 53,874 damage, but not to be outdone. It's John with the 55,000 damage in the game, highest damage in the game. You know, we, we've talked about It's John so much over this tournament that we know he's just a strong player, but he ends the game with 15 kills, 300 CS, and 55k damage. A strong, strong performance for him on the Mordekaiser. Absolutely. It's John in Plague more or less being the, the stars of the of the game for their respectable teams. It's John doing 55,000 damage and Plague doing 50, nearly 54,000. So I think I think all these players all around played amazing. Uh, even though one team naturally has to take the L at the end of the day, I think none of them should be ashamed because I think they did it absolutely well. I'm with you. Great game back and forth. Excellent performances. You know, we, we could highlight... You know, Karina, we could highlight Tomato, you know, Love, Truth, Wisdom had some nice plays as well. But, you know, excellent game as a fan to watch. Excellent game for the viewers here. Great game six. But don't go anywhere. We have a special announcement for you coming, viewers, that you're not going to want to miss. 
Coach Leone, we're going to toss it over to him for the special announcement. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Whoa. Hey guys, what happened? Why why is Silver Scrapes playing? We just finished the last match. Can I get a little bit of help here? The wrong song is playing. What's going on? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with that Silver Scrapes. That was the last match, so I mean if did did you guys want another game? Because that was the last match. So Silver Scrape started playing. I I'm really confused because normally that comes before the very last match of the day. But hey, whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, we just got I just got a little bit of uh, information in my ear here. We have another game for you. That's my surprise. That, hey, that's the announcement. There it is right there. We have one more game for you. Let's call it an encore game. Okay, I've hand selected. 10 players that I want to put into a match together not you know I'm not saying they're the best players that's not what I'm saying at all what I am saying is, is that I wanted to see more of these players I wanted to see a little bit more of the spice that they've been bringing throughout the tryout process okay and I thought it would be really entertaining to bring it into the tryout process or excuse me bring it in for the viewers to see these 10 players match up together this is a team combination that you haven't seen before throughout the entire tryout process so i wanted to throw it together it's going to be a best of one it's going to be a brawl it's going to be killer get ready get ready here it comes we, we've already got them we're going to get them loaded into the game very very shortly and i'll play silver scrapes one more time so that you know this is actually the last game of the night <laughs> okay and and just one more piece of business hey you know you've been sticking around i've been behind the scenes we've been hanging out on twitch chat i really treat appreciate you being here and i also really appreciate velocilinks right there they've been helping us out they are our presenting sponsor for the entire week the entire trial process for league of legends rocket league and smash and they are helping us out in a few different ways but one of them is by giving you guys free equipment, free gaming gear. Like, are you kidding me? If you want a chance to win their stuff, I'm going to post the link in just a few moments. As soon as I'm done with this, I'll post down the link. You can check it out. Costs nothing to enter. And you get a chance to win a lot of free gaming gear. And I'm not talking about one or two pieces. I'm not talking about a t-shirt. I'm talking about amazing gaming gear from Velocilinks. We're talking two full sets keyboard mice headsets and then also three other prizes we've got five full prize sets for you folks you want a little bit more information click the link when i drop it in there in just a few moments but i'll go ahead and leave it back to silver spray <laughs> hey i appreciate it thank you guys for being here it really wouldn't have happened without you this game is for you i appreciate you being here have a good one okay
him for them the evil curse had wrought the anger and the anguish overwhelmed this fragile soul and caused the wicked tantrum that he never could control
here folks you thought we were done you thought this whole thing was over but we are still in action baby we got one more game no pro draft huge fan let's get to it wiki and i still here here to shot call here to do our thing here to keep you guys pumped here to get you guys involved right it's almost game time you know what you thought game six was the end oh no oh no the best kept secret since john snow comes back to life was the fact that we were having a game seven here at Oakland Esports Varsity League of Legends tryouts. We're ready to go. We're ready to get into the action. We're already into the draft and we're seeing some early bans. Of course, it's John on the other team. Set is the ban. It comes out again. He's not gonna be allowed to play that champion. Uh, just in case you guys were uh, watch just watching Game of Thrones, we apologize for, for the... Uh... <laughs> For the uh, spoiler, just in case. I I personally have never seen it, so like it's low key. Uh, that's low key a spoiler for me. But I didn't really have, uh, uh, you know, I had no intention of watching that. But nonetheless, if you're watching it recently, just for kicks, because quarantine, um, to blame Wiki, I had nothing to do with that whatsoever. Uh, but nonetheless, we're in bands. We're getting it going. I got to take out the Graves, greatest juggler of all time, and by all time I mean in this patch, right? So, Ferraro, Edu, caster shot calling confirmed. That's what we do, baby. Speed Absolutely. I mean, not, not necessarily a shot call. I, I misspoke, but, you know, we're on the same page, you know? And as we can see, the two teams here absolutely stacked. The Yasuo pick up Draken by the blue team. As much of a takeaway from Keelan as a strong pick for the blue side. We'll see how the red team responds here. Just to kind of go over the lane matchups in the top lane. It's John versus It's Haas. Who will it be? In the in the jungle, we have GFP versus Rip Brutalizer. And in the mid lane, back in action, Plague, Inc. and Keelan. Plague coming off his huge Zareth game. Keelan, as we saw before, on the Yasuo with that Wombo combo composition. Karina also coming back to face off against Endrit and Love, Truth, Wisdom being up against Tupac in the support role. I'm excited. Definitely a lot of the strong competitors out there for this game. Pike coming in early for the blue squad. I am hyped to get some Pike action going. Yeah, so we were, you're just going through uh, who's in the game, and I saw Tupac, and I was like, oh, we're probably looking at Leona, and then boom! Hit him with the Pike, baby. That could still be flexed to the mid lane. I know Keelan does fancy himself a little Pike mid, right? But we do have to naturally wait. I'm saying all the time, we just gotta wait. That's just how the world works, right? So it still could be Pike in, in the mid lane, depending on where we see other champions fall. Uh, we do see the Ezreal and Yumi pick up. You know that is the Yumi special right there, right? Ezreal Yumi. Absolutely. That's the, the, one, one plus two, right? Peanut butter, jelly, or jam if you're about that life, right? We see a, a Vagar hover. And if that, that, that's going to go mid, that, and then that's going to put the pike in the bot lane. Unless they decide to spice it up and make that the Vagar APC rather than ADC in the bot lane, right? I've seen my, myself a many Vagar in the bot lane. I, I would be shocked if this is not pike support. Um, they have done significant nerfs at pike into the solo lanes. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be the pike in the bot lane. Um, but we do see, like you noted, that Ezreal Yumi combination, such a strong and slippery combination in the bot lane. You know, Ezreal being one of the most mobile bot lane champions, and then uh, paired with the Yumi, the speed ups, the heals, the slows, just hard to stick on to. And then at level six, you throw the Yumi ultimate into that, and it's just a whole nother level of, of being hard to gank. But going into the bands here, it's Haas getting the ergot banned away from him he's had two excellent performances on that so i'm not surprised to see that go down um 
And then on the flip side, we're going to get, it looks like an Orn pick coming in to replace that Urgot pick that was taken away. But, oh. yeah, I was going to say, they don't want to pick up the Orn because Yasuo was the first pick, so naturally you would just be taking away Orn's greatest ability just just off the champion versus champion matchup because Yasuo right. is, is a natural counter to Orn. Oh! No. Oh, no, no way. We are currently seeing Karina hover the team up. Troll. There's no way this happens, but I want to talk about the Maokai pick. Oh, but they'll pick up the Orn. They'll pick up the Orn. Maokai, I think, is an excellent pick in the Yasuo just because of the lockdown, right? One of the things that makes Yasuo so hard to deal with or when it comes to skill shots and things like that is that he's always dashing around the team fights, you know? But with the Maokai route, it makes it easy for the rest of your team to latch on to him. The Echo comes in. That's likely going to be an Echo jungle, which means that we'll see Yasuo in the mid lane, Orn in the top, Echo in the jungle. Echo, one of the strongest junglers right now. Um, definitely a, a powerful pick and puts a mix of AP damage into their composition that was definitely lacking before they, they picked that choice. So our final team comps, we will see. We're, we're, cha we're changing up where everyone's going. It's John, the former number one ranked Orn in North America. He's back on Orn. We have Echo in the jungle. Plague Inc. on the Oswald. What a change up. Oh, we're connected mid to answer with the Wombo combo. Well, not Wombo combo, but, you know, the combo that is Ezreal Yumi in the bot lane. And the, uh, against It's Haas in the Malachi. R Rip Brutalism in the Trundle. Renekton in the uh, Keelan on the Renekton. Uh, Indra on the Vagar. So it is Vagar bot lane. Mm -hmm. I am Big Brain. Thank you. I'll take a bow. All right. <laughs> Moving forward here. Uh, we'll have ourselves a game, uh, but we still have that stream delay, so it will still be a few minutes for us. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are looking forward to the match as we are. This is the surprise impromptu match behind the scene coming at you. Uh, it's going to be one for the ages, right? Absolutely. And Keelan, once again, you know, having the ability to counter pick his lane that Renekton into Yasuo is such a good matchup for Renekton. So hopefully he's able to utilize that to his advantage. Um, I, I'm not going to lie. The the red team's looking pretty scary as we get into the, the later edges of the game with the Maokai, the Trundle, the Renekton, the Vigar, and the Pike to execute anybody who might happen to get low health. So if we look at the Wombo combo, that could be, right? So we have the Vagar Cage, and then maybe followed up with the Maokai uh, Ultimate here as well. And then we have Keelan on Renekton. He's going to go in there, Ultimate, E in there. So R, E, Q, do tons of damage. Vagar's going to then do his combo as well. And then Pike could just have a heyday, right? Everyone's going to be super low. If he's able to just get the Ultimate off, that's going to be execution upon execution upon execution. Absolutely. I, I'm excited. Game seven. You didn't think it was happening, but here it is. Game seven coming at you. I'm excited to get onto the rift. We have a ton of star players in this match. It's going to be an exciting one. We can only hope that we get the same type of excitement that we got from the last game, which was just this back and forth bruising affair. And honestly, that's what I'm expecting out of this. I'm expecting there to be this punching and counter punching as the match goes on. Um, really looking to see some of the best versus the best here. So I, I'm excited. I'm ready to get onto the rift. We're going to take a short break here, but then we will be back with game seven and our final match of the Oakland University Esports Varsity League of Legends tryouts. Stay tuned. We'll be back after a short break.
child in Valoran has heard the tale before about the cursed mummy boy who felt his heart. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Last game of the night, game seven. Who would have thunk? We're here. Look at us. We're doing it. We have a small stacking around Dragon Pit. But we look the red team does have a traditional stance that is five point. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm excited for this match. Uh, we did get some extra information. If you're not familiar with GFP, GFP is gluten-free panda. He is our special guest for this. He's also trying out. He just had some other uh, responsibilities come up here over the past few days. So first time on the rip for GFP. We're going to get to see a brand new player in this match. Yeah, so he did have his own other responsibilities he had to take care of. So it's... That is a shame that he was unable to be here for the trials that he was obviously looking forward to. But yet again, he is here. Oh, red side looking for a possible late in a late invade here. But Echo still hanging out by chickens. Going to wait for to see if he sees him. He does oh, see him. The sweeper out. is in. But because Echo's positioning, they're just going to leave right there. So excellent hesitation from the Echo. Just, just, to, just to wait a little bit. GFP, the special guest, already making big brain plays. I'm looking forward, especially for GFP, because I, I, right before we were in the game, I, I looked at GFP and I was like, do I know, have I seen this guy at, at all this week? And, but now we realize why he hasn't been here. So I'm very looking forward to see what we can see from him. If you remember, I believe it was a three games ago, the one before we took over, they actually did that same play where Trundle, with Keelan on the team, invaded the red side with the late invade, ended up taking the red buff away from the Echo. Echo tried to go to their uh, to the the red team's own red buff, got that smited away. So smart paying attention, understanding the tendencies of your opponent, and able to snuff out that invade before it was able to do any damage. We do see red side being rather aggressive. Uh, Trundle is currently sorry, red side from the bot lane. Uh, they're being definitely aggressive because if they pull in the the Ezra, then Yumi just is just gonna come with them naturally, of course. Uh, the Vigor Cage goes out. Oh, oh, they're flashing gauge. The cleanse goes off on Karina. The, the, the flash also. Oh, they're gonna burn down. They're gonna take out Tupac. They're gonna look to keep going on Endra. Excellent plays, and then Endra is forced to flash away. An excellent turnaround from the Ezra with Yumi. You know, at that level two, trying to make the big play, but Viger just doesn't have enough damage to help get the kill there. So close to gaining the first blood, but instead, Tupac goes down on the pike. Unfortunate turn of events, very close, but already GFP we see ganking the mid lane. Doesn't look like much is going to happen there as Keelan's able to just slice and dice out. do see Karina looking to take it back just enough for tier kind of get that stacking started try to get Ezreal in line as soon as possible we have it's John with the corrupting potion start a orange classic of course because you can't build consumables in lane and if you're getting bullied up it if you're getting bullied as orange in lane uh, start with the corrupting and then just build yourself a door shield best of both worlds baby but it's trying to sitting in a really nice spot. He is against another tank, so he won't get bullied at all, really. Um, we do see Keelan getting a little aggressive on the minimap here. He's pushing in. Probably just wants to push in that wave. He does have a CS lead over Plague. And, and what's important about that top lane matchup is, is while it's harsh, you don't see the health bar going down. But that mana bar has been destroyed. Completely out of mana in the top lane, where Itchjan is still quite healthy in both of his health and mana. So, definitely an advantage in top for the Ornn. Um, and, and as we see mid, the Keelan Yasuo versus Plague Inc. Or the Plague Inc. Yasuo versus Keelan Renekton matchup. Definitely one to watch. We do see, so Keelan just hard pushed in mid. He's gonna look to rotate, possibly rotate. He's currently sitting in pixel bush. Might wanna look bot lane, he's just, but he looks like he's just gonna go back mid. Uh, Dragon is coming up. Uh, red side is in the position to get it early, but we'll have to see if they'll, if they'll jump on the opportunity. 
and as everybody's taking their first backs here just checking we do see that tear coming out early for the Ezreal definitely aided by the first blood you know it, it's always nice when you can get that tear stacking as early as possible um, helps provide that safety in lane to safely able to farm with your Qs as if Yumi didn't provide enough safety already So there goes the dragon to red side. It is an ocean drake. But the team itself, like Pike has his own magnificent means of getting health back, connecting with his natural uh, lifesteal with the empowered Q, and Maokai with his passive. Uh, and Shonda with his, with his passive as well? Or is it his ultimate? I can't recall, I haven't, I haven't feasted my eyes on a, on a uh, Tron on quite some time, but we do have a little scuffle here in the top lane. It's John going to try the best to do his best to put out some damage onto uh, its house on Maokai. Uh, in this matchup, it's John. Well, in this matchup, just but just off the champion base, uh, Orn will will be able to put some hurt on Maokai, but Maokai just has uh, great rejuvenation capabilities that he can just e Q a few times. Sorry, auto a few times with his passive and be back in action. Oh, they are looking to keep going on Keelan. The tornado goes up. The ultimate will not go, though. He's under turret. Don't want to take that dive. Once it's... again, Keelan able to slice and dice out. But we do see the Orn ultimate coming out. Looking for the Trundle. Does not find it. As Trundle is able to flash away. Alt flash burned for Orn ultimate. You'll take that as a win for the blue team. An excellent pick. A counter pick for from the blue squad to pick up the Ezreal when the other team actually did, did was the Ezreal pick before or after the Vigor pick I'm not quite too sure I, I think Ezreal and, you, Ezreal and you me did occur before so it is an excellent pick for the blue side but they're definitely not looking to, to hard win the lane early right as Vigar uh, you're looking to stack the passes Bob you're looking to play into the mid to late game when you know you're just looking for that one stun that one cage where you're able to one shot your opponent Strundle coming into the top lane. Maokai ultimate will go out, but not able to follow up on that. Flash burned by the Orn. Oh, Trundle still will revisit top lane. If he gets the pillar up, no, it looks like they're just going to hard shove, it, hard shove it in. Maybe possibly go for a plate or so. We do see Echo is on the bot side. It's John going to do a little trade here. It's Haas is out of mana though, so he can't do much against it's John. Currently, uh, Dragon is up for two and a half minutes, but we do have Rift up. GFP, Gluten Free Panda, is what they call him on the streets, but he's currently bot lane getting his red buff. He might try to look to get Rift here before this upcoming Dragon to use it for Dragon Pressure. Absolutely. And like you said, Dragon coming up in roughly two minutes. Now's the time to lay the plans. Looking for Keelan again. Will not find the stun. But Keelan with the ultimate. Pike coming in. The dual Flash. TPs at the same time. It's John coming in. Oh, the tornado goes up. Gets all three of them. It looked like the flash out from, from uh, Tupac. It's John doing his best to, 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 to duel with Keelan. But it's John will go down. Tupac will come back in with the ultimate. GFP is still in the fight. Gonna do his best to get out. He's gonna hop on the boom shroom, get himself out of there. Rip realizer. It's gonna look to keep going. A flash. Oh, but it's how still goes on it. Oh, the red team is looking for fights, and they are getting them. Oh, GFP just gets out of the way. The flash from End Endrit, and then the heal. That fight looked so good for the blue team early on. The big double knock up into the double Yasuo ultimate. They just barely didn't have enough damage to kill them, and they're able to turn it around with the red team taking multiple kills out of that fight. I would have to agree. It looked really good for the blue side. I'm like, oh, this this is a great start for the blue side. But then the red side just came in and said, no, thank you. We'll change up the speed from here now. And then they just made that team fight theirs. Absolutely. Super close to for it being more kills for the red side as well. Pike ultimate just barely missing there on the echo. So it could have been worse to be honest, but it could have been much better for the blue team if they are just able to get a little bit more damage down in that fight. They could have picked up multiple kills.
and we're back to the laning phase here as we talked about dragon is coming up soon red team tupac getting down that vision i'm um, trying to clear the river of any wards so that they can kind of set up a a, a dragon play here it is the cloud drake which in my opinion the strongest drake in the game and getting that for their ultimates whether it's the malachi ultimate the trundle ultimate the Vigar ultimate, the Pike, they have so many good ultimates that can utilize that extra cooldown reduction. So it would definitely be a huge pickup if they're able to take that. As we say, oh, it's shot with an excellent combo. Just He's just trying to harass its Haas the best that he can because well, he most likely won't get away with a kill, but he's just going to try to do the best that he can to harass him down. Maybe force it, force its, its Haas to stay around for a few waves where, where he shouldn't, and then that can leave its John to uh, hit him with the orn combo but we do have a tp from renekton coming down bot lane green is going to force a flash but it appears that plague actually interrupted the uh tp coming from keelan Ooh, nearly a stun uh from gfp an excellent attempt at the mid lane so close there gfp just barely missing and now he's got to run with the pike and the trundle there uh, is able to escape but that should force them off the dragon area uh, as they're looking to take that objective. It looks like they're going to wait on it a little bit, though, as the wave is pressed to the bot lane turret. So as it sits, the red squad, it, well, they're currently looking to gank bot lane and then probably rush over for, oh, this is not looking good for Karina. The E comes out, the smite's down, the O goes out, Karina might get a kill. He does pick up one. Echo coming in to answer. He's going to do some damage. Down goes Tupac. GFP's going to look to have an ultimate here. The flash, the ult will go off. He does get bumped up by the by the ice pillar, but he looks good. He's going to get himself away. Plague is looking. If he can get himself an ultimate, this could be a kill for him as well. Another stun goes out. He's going to pick up on the trundle. And down goes Ripper Lazar. Keelan trying to play through the alcove. The ultimate goes up. The ultimate goes out from, from uh, Plague Inc. And that's a double kill for the blue squad on that go. This looks like a dragon. They can even put down Rift Herald. That's what they're going to do. Just to get those plates, get that pressure, and go get that dragon if they still want to look for it. But they are about to be answered by the Pike and the Vagar. Huge play for blue team. Gluten free Panda comes up huge, snagging two kills in that exchange on the counter gank. Uh, you know, Karina able to hold on long enough for help to arrive there. Actually able to take one down with them as they go. And then Echo showing up to the fight. Um, I do want to say the Yumi Q was threaded perfectly through the minions there to slow down and chase down those final few kills. And then on the back side of all of that, they do secure that Cloud Drake. So able to even up the Drakes one to one as we enter 13 minutes into the game. So earlier you mentioned how It's Haas had no mana in the top lane because he was just he was doing the best that he could to CS with um, with his abilities. And because it is it can be found very difficult to CS on Maokai in the early game, he is down 33 CS as it currently sits because it's much easier to CS on Orn rather than Maokai. So we're just going to see if he can uh, come back into the game and get the CS score to come back closer. Little do oh, breaking some ankles, balling. We have Karina dancing with Tupac, breaking some ankles and smashing some ankles at the same time. He <laughs> trades back big with Pike, taking out half of his health, but with the Pike passive, with the honey fruit, he goes right back up to full. We do have Tupac going around trying to uh, deny some vision here. He's gonna pick up, pick himself up some wards here. Uh, we do have. Trundle and Renekton currently hovering around River on the on the blue side by blue buff. Maybe possibly looking to get a pick on GFP. Oh, the board goes out. Oh, it's John ultimate comes in. Double deal. It's John will actually miss the ultimate. He was just out of range. Then the E will go on to uh, the pillar. But no matter, even if it's John missed his abilities, GFP still picks up a double. You know, it was a good idea. Unfortunately, Itch John was right there to counter. Um, comes with the Orn. They're able to clean up a two for zero. Plague Inc. with the kill secured at the end there. Help him out in that mid lane a little bit more. 
Um, but we talked about this Rennington versus Yasuo matchup in the mid lane. Right now, Yasuo sitting 1-0-2, oh, and, and, and Keelan hasn't been able to find the roams or the kills. 0-2-1. Oh, Some more fancy feet in the bot lane. Pike can do his best that he can. Oh, oh, there it is, the best that he can. And then there's just a simple cleanse. He's going to get himself out there. Another duel in the top lane, Maokai and Orn, you know, doing the tango. It takes two of them, but not much is going to happen. You know, they're both tanks. Uh, with Maokai and the Aftershock, it's going to be hard to do anything against them. We do have GFP up top. Wait, he's going to try to harass them a little bit, but this he's just going to try to get away. Uh, now we have Renekton and Trundle doing the same thing that they just did at Echo's Blue Buff, but by Chickens and Red, just walking in together, trying to establish some vision. Uh, now they're going to look for mid lane. See if they get a pick up here, but Yasuo is just probably just going to walk away. I know I know the camera currently is on that, but I'm just looking at the minimap as it stands, just so you guys can uh, understand what I'm, what I'm conveying, just in case that the camera's not there. So Vigar has been quiet for most of this game, but he does have that first item completed as he works into that icy Vigar build. Hextech GLP coming down for him. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out in these team fights if he's able to provide that big slow to, to help the rest of his bruisers get on top of the enemy team. Keelan does find himself 0-2, but if he's just able to CS and not be not find himself behind he will definitely come back and be a monster in this game because that is what redacted does we do see pike once again top lane establishing that vision dominance uh he has a 32 vision score the next best on his team is 14 and on the opposing team the 14 is is the best on that team as well coming from karina the adc whereas yumi's vision score is just a mere eight in comparison to uh two pucks 38. And Mountain Drake coming up here shortly, um, about 30 seconds to go. Red team is positioning, setting up that vision. It's John, though, already has come down from the top lane to get ready for this. Gets pulled into the pit. Could be in trouble here. Gets stunned up by the Vigar. Oh, my. 100 to 0. Down goes Plague. It's John going to do the best to get out, but he is another one fed to the wolves. Here. He will go down. Who will go down too? There it goes to Pike, putting that extra goal on his teammates pockets. Now this should be a free dragon. Uh, either the red, the excuse me, the blue squad will look to either steal or they just want to go cross map. Oh, but they don't have vision control. So Keelan will mess up GFP. He might even force the ultimate here. Oh, he gets a shield. He gets out. The move speed gets a moving. Oh, but they're still looking. The flash from it's Haas over the wall with the ultimate from Endrit. Uh, Love Truth Wisdom's looking for GFP to get him back on. Oh, the flash from Tupac. So Dragon gets completely reset, so they're going to have to go back and get there. But we know that GFP will probably have to reset here unless he walks right back in. But they, they, as we just saw, they don't have any vision control. So they're just going to reset. They're going to give up this Dragon, and they should look elsewhere on the map. Long extended sequence there around the dragon. Really a two player affair with Red Side coming out on top and both of them. Karina trying to make the big play ends up eating into the, the Vigar wall. And we had just talked about a, a couple minutes ago. Those Vigar cages are, are coming up huge in this fight. Um, Tupac with multiple big pulls. He first pulls Itch John into the pit. Nowhere for him to go. Um, but, but Keelan as well. Coming online, 1v1ing the jungler, keeping them out of the pit, and then forcing them away. Uh, big plays happening, but blue team is able to respond by picking up that Rift Hero. Excellent. I, I did I did say that they have to go cross map, and that's exactly what they did. They pick up the Rift. Uh, but, oh, and it's just before Baron, so excellent timing. So we do see that, that uh, plates... I lost the word for it. The plates are gone, so this rift will just be likely to be used to either take down the first turret or just to uh, cause some pressure for uh, maybe the... It won't be the next dragon because the dragon will be up, but will be gone. Ex excuse me. Dra <laughs> rift won't last that long. Uh, so we're just probably going to look to take first tower with, with rift here. We do have a scuffle top lane. It's John says, no, thank you, because after, after a while, uh, Maokai just becomes... 
unfightable if you're if you're another tank. The same can be said though for the Yorn, to be fair. But yes, definitely a, a battle of the beef up in the top lane. We do see Pike entering in, looking for the pull, gets it on its shine. Could get him low enough for the Pike ultimate here. Let's see if it happens. Boom, down goes Itch John. Tupac able to land the CC he needs, taking another kill on to Itch John. Uh, Kawang X in the chat, if you would still like to try out, I would just suggest that you talk to Coach Leone, but I have nothing to do with that. Figured I'd just give that piece of advice. But back to the game, we do have, uh, ooh, quite the dive. Well, not the dive, but quite a little skirmish here that does result in the death of Karina. He did try to cleanse himself out of it, but it wasn't enough. Oh, GFP blinks <laughs> to Pike after his dash. So he goes quite far away uh, from the rest of his team. And now we have Plague sitting 2v5 here. But it looks like they're just going to give up the first tower. Double uh, resolve proc here. Oh, it's John coming in from the backside with the ultimate. He hits up four of the members. Huge engage from Mitch John. Another knockout for the Oswo. Here he comes. Jester comes in with the ultimate. He, play gig's already looking low. He's going to try his best to, to heal up. Here comes the Zoomies. Doing the best to heal him. Oh, an excellent ult from Karina. Let's do some more damage. Plague's still getting the Zoomies. Trying his best to, to heal up. He's going to eat out of Tupac's uh, snare right there. But it looks like he's going to dodge. Oh, but it's Hots with the Juke. Oh. Zoomies keeps him alive, but just barely. Excellent Juke from It's Hots keeping himself alive and nearly resulting in the death of Plague Inc. Plague Inc. coming up big there, paired with the Yumi, able to dash all over that fight. But once again, I want to highlight the power of the Vigar in that play. Able to take down the Echo right away and just provide a huge zone the other team just can't seem to get into. Now, look, here he's, as I say, <laughs> Vigar looking for another kill, and he will grab it could grab two. Yumi on the run. Red buff on Vigar. I don't think Yumi's going to be able to get out of this one. Plague, Tupac enters the fray, gets the ultimate, and the extra gold for the team. And then we see it's Sean in the top side. Going to take down that turret. Oof. But we just saw all those plus 100 on Pike. He is currently cashing in. Oh, GFP looking for a little skirmish. Another fight in the top lane. Tank versus Tank. It's John doesn't want any part of it. He just wants to get out because it's Haas will out sustain him because he simply is Maokai. That passive is just too strong when it comes to Tank versus Tank. Absolutely. But, you know, we're, we're entering 23 minutes into the game. Still a very close affair. Gold, just a couple K difference here. Dragons, two to one. Um, you know, Yumi, one of the best champions in the game later in the and you know other champions like Orn, you know uh, the passive on Orn is worth multiple K gold alone once you start building those items for yourself and the other members of your team. So we do see dragons up in seven seconds. This will be the third point for the Red Squad and the second point for... Oh, Karina is once again in trouble. The Red Squad is always there, always ready to act on Karina. Down goes Karina. It looks like it... Oh, down goes Yumi, no matter how many Zoomies she has. So this puts the Red Squad in an excellent position to go for this next drag. We do see that it's John Orn. He already has both of his uh, upgraded items. Oh, GFP not afraid. Looking to do a little tussling with Keelan. Uh, but this looks just to be dragged. They either have to give it or go for his steal. But even then, it's still a dangerous game here. It's John looking to do something. He is in the small skirmish, but he's just going to walk himself out of it. GFP looking to jump over the wall. But it seems too dangerous for that. He does have uh, his ultimate up. Oh, but he will get stunned on the Vagar. Oh, my, oh, now he's looking. Oh, my. An excellent display of skill from GFP. Excellent. And, you know, I do want to step it back just a, a few plays there. 
excellent TP into the bot lane to snag two kills on both the Ezreal and the Yumi there. When you get into these mid-game scenarios, you know, the kills are nice. That's actually getting two kills, but what I really want to highlight is the objective take on the back end of those kills. If you're using your teleport in these mid to late game scenarios, you should be getting objectives off of that teleport. Whether you're using your teleport for pressure or whether you're using your teleport to, to actually get into an objective, excellent usage of it in that play. Able to get the double kills and get the objective. Perfectly done. The red squad is definitely showing some excellence here. Once again, these are not the top prospects. These are just... Uh, the, all these players were just selected because closely they only just wanted to see wanted to see them in one more game like like especially gfp you know he wasn't here to play in his original games uh and it, the asian invasion actually subbed in for him i believe so you know this this is just another pickup game especially for the chat trying to have you have you guys really enjoy the stream do what we can for you guys uh, but now we do see gfp get a little caught out the pike will go on him the his ult time his ult is not looking at a good spot. It's John coming in with the ultimate, but he is CC'd. We'll miss another one, but the E will go up. Uh, Rip Brutalizer will ult. It's John. His resistances are down. It's John is looking in a really bad spot. The flash from the Orn is, is forced. There will continue to chase him. The Yumi ult goes out. Pike's looking to pull him over, and over they go. Karina does have to flash out of there. Otherwise, Karina was probably a goner. Absolutely. Another one team fight from the red team. We're really seeing the strengths of these compositions come through in these long extended team fights um, <clears throat> GFP caught out able to escape with his life with the help of its John But off the back end of that able to take the blue buff in the jungle able to push up into the top turret and take more um, And we're seeing a, a lead you know, it's, it's still only about 2k though, you know, it's it's not really been opened up here And, and as we talked about earlier that orn passive that that'll that'll easily make up for a, a 2 to 3k difference We do see the biggest player for the blue squad is probably Actually echo sits 4 one and 2 and the biggest player on the the red squad is definitely uh, Vagar because his potential to one shot is so immense in addition to well everyone on the red squad is quite the menace because keelan can do his ultimate and then one hit any squishy on the other team uh Toronto can run down anybody malcolm Peck can out tank anyone Vagar can can uh, do the one hit as well and then pike could even one hit especially like yumi or Ezreal, if he's able to land everything they will definitely go down to the, to the execute but now we see uh, everyone's back bot lane. We do have uh, Soul Point in a minute and a half here. Baron's also up. Uh, we will probably see bot lane rotate mid or back bot lane just to contest this Soul Point because you definitely don't want to give it away uh, considering how tanky they already are. Uh, Bork goes out from Keelan onto It's John. Keelan's looking for a, dis for a little fight. It's not going to do his best to get away. He's going to have to... Oh, the W will stop him from getting pulled. An excellent play from It's John. Uh, the red team will... Look to answer Dragon in a minute, but actually we have Blue Squad on Baron, but it was warded, so they are about to be answered in 20 to 30 seconds here. A TP from H. John, GMP super low. He's gonna need some more zoomies. They're gonna decide to burn it. John's gonna try to over the disengage. Can they finish the Baron here? Looks like GMP's off of it, so they should just get off the Baron. They don't have the smite on anymore. Trundle's currently running in. Plague's gonna. Oh, the Baron's at 2,500, but we have a huge fight here. Uh, Plague comes in with the ultimate, but the ultimate from Tupac just beats him up, anyways. So that is two down for the blue squad. And they're looking for more, but they should simply just turn and look for Baron and then look for Soul right after. But they want to just get some more and finish him out. He, the, the flash goes out, and then Keelan will finish him. Yumi <laughs> trying her best to get away, but that it will be an ace of five well not an ace because uh, karina just came up but a five for zero and they will look to get a soul point very dominant very unfortunate for the blue squad very aggressive shot calling by the blue team really felt like a desperate play you knew they had vision of it i'm not sure if they were trying to draw them off the the mount drake if they just 
overestimated their damage that they had there, but unable to take the Baron and get punished for it. Not only do they lose the Cloud Soul, but they give up four kills in the in the ensuing fight beforehand, and uh, it's it's looking kind of rough now for the blue team. And what was a, a close game just a minute or so ago kind of has been blown open by that close to ace and the soul going over to the red team. It's going to make it even more difficult to kill the tanky uh, chambers that are already on the side of the red squad. Like we have Maokai and Trundle and renekton that are that, you know they have a very healthy amount of health on them as this stands so this is going to even give them more resistances in, in a shield in addition to that it's going to make them very difficult to kill and the blue squad doesn't have any sort of sustained damage really and and don't count out the importance of that on your your squishy carries right like the if you allow vigar to live through these team fights he just puts out so much consistent damage over time right so you really want to be able to burst him down but with the mountain soul on him it's just that much harder to do it you know if that could be the difference between killing the vigar or not killing the vigar and if that's the difference that's probably the difference between whether or not you win or lose a fight we do have a huge team fight happening right here it's shot does get caught out can he get his ultimate off he can but he will go down and now we have the rest of the team <laughs> just trying their best to deal with its house the cleanse will go out he's gonna try to eat over the wall Woo, but it doesn't matter the ultimate from vigar will go out and this game is looking pretty rough. A 10k gold difference, 9k gold difference for the favor of the red squad. Uh, Blue squad does have one more tower than they do, but at the end of the day, that doesn't matter when there's such a gold difference. Now they just got soul and they're looking to take down Baron and they're doing it quite convincingly. This will be an easy Baron take. Blue team cannot contest. You see the three different pink wards there on the trail up. No way for them to walk in, especially, like we said, the Maokai, the Vigar, the Renekton stun. There's no way to walk into that. Easy, clean take, and the game lead just gets bigger and bigger for the red team. So we do have Soul, excuse me, Elder Dragon coming up in three and a half minutes. After, If, if this game lasts as long to get to... Elder, Elder Dragon, I think that will be the nail in the coffin. Absolutely. You know, you can say that, you know, that, that'll be the nail in the coffin, but the coffin's pretty tight already with the way that this composition's lined up. You can sit on objectives. You can just shove down into turrets using the cage, using the pillar, using everything you have to kind of put pressure. The one thing that they don't do very well, though, is they, they don't have really a ranged carry so it is kind of hard for them to to actually get the damage down on the turrets but they have such a a long threat range there you see the vigar gauge it's hard to walk into them it's not looking to engage here but he gets interrupted by the trundle e and then we do have the yumi ultimate come out uh yasu doing his best to try to get his tornado up he does hit two of them but he decides not to take he's gonna wait till he can get some more it's just force a flash out uh, Plague will fall to Tupac, and then Red Squad will look to take this turret and the inhib. Keelan wants more. He's, he's in, but his W doesn't find any purchase. Tupac looking for another Q. Doesn't find anyone. They might even look for more. He ults just for kicks. It's John. Does get caught. Another Vagar uh, trap does come out. The Red Squad said, we want blood and we want some more. The Vagar all goes down, but Itchon does not fall, but he will in just a second. It's Haas tanking like nobody's business has yet to die this game. Oh, but he will. Oh, 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 oh the last. Oh, oh. There he goes. One more tower shot. He was running through the tower, but he shouldn't have because it wasn't a friendly tower. He takes two extra shots and will go down. And this will be the end of the final game. Ladies and gentlemen, that was game seven. A victory for the red squad. Very convincing. Blue squad just didn't have the team comp to answer the red squad's team comp. But that has been game seven. We're happy that you were able to stay here with us. Man, what a series. What 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 a number of games we've had in the past two days. Excellent uh, competitors all over the place. Happy that we could be here with you guys. Absolutely. This game was an exciting one. You know, it might not look like it at the end of the game, but this was a really close game up until that aggressive Baron call by the blue team. And... <laughs> 
th that really was what the caused the tower to tumble, right? They they went for the Baron, they kind of went all in on it, and they didn't get it. Red team able to respond in time, able to get to the Baron pit, clean up some kills, and then take the Mountain Soul after that. Um, but a great game overall, you know, great play on both sides of it. Gluten free Panda coming in for his first game of these tryouts and. Honestly, I think he had a great performance. You know, it the team didn't get the W, but on an individual level, he definitely would have been the standout for me on on the blue team. I couldn't agree more. GFP comes in for his first game, and I think he had a very excellent performance. It may have ended in the defeat, but he definitely showed his skill cap and his his overall uh, prowess on the champion that is Echo. I think he had an excellent game. Uh, you know, actually, we didn't see the victory come to fruition, but. Uh, just at the end of the day, the team comp couldn't have answered uh, the red team, team team comp. Absolutely, you know, and and on top of the team comp, you know, the red team made multiple smart decisions in the game, um, knowing how to move around the map, making excellent macro plays. I highlighted the TP play that got them the two kills in the dragon, but very impressive play from the red team as they take this final game seven of the series here. And you know, as as Tommy and I. It's kind of sign off here and we're going to pass it over to coach Leone one more time. I just want to thank all of you for, for staying with us through this, these games and, and, and being here at Oakland Esports. We, we definitely appreciate the viewership. Um, so once again, this was the varsity league of legends, East Oakland Esports tryouts. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for sticking with us for two gate, two days and 13 games of action-packed tryouts. Um, I, I've had a pleasure casting this, and I hope to do this again soon. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Back into my living room. How was that? I thought that that was pretty nice. That was a lot of action there and definitely turned out... Well, to be honest, when I threw those two teams together, I wasn't sure exactly who would win. But we definitely saw the victor for this one match. And now, to be fair, as a coach, I just have to let you know, to try and evaluate the team against the other team and individual players, what I'd really like to see is maybe like a best of five or a best of three between the teams. In my eyes, best of ones. Oh, they just hurt my soul a little bit. So I <laughs> apologize to you guys that this whole tournament experience, the whole uh, tryout experience for League of Legends was best of ones. And the reason for that is I just wanted to be able to mix up the teams as much as possible. And to have that flexibility, I needed the games to be best of ones. So keep that in mind. If uh, it was under cer certain circumstances, if I really wanted to get a true gauge of, is this team better than this team? We would throw them in a best of three or a best of five, but I appreciate the players, all 20 of them who joined in and anybody who subbed into the tryout process. I really appreciate you coming out and uh, playing for us. You're some of the highest rated players in the country. I think it really is important to take a step back and gain that perspective that you know for all of the talk about you know oh platinum's bad or oh diamond four is bad or oh oh d2 is really bad because you have to be grandmaster throw all of that out the window take a second and go on to op.gg look up a diamond four player and tell me what percentage of north american players they are at i'll give you the stats they're top one percent in north america that is incredibly talented. If you took the top 1% of players in North America in any sport and tried to tell them that they were bad players, you get thrown out a window. It's only in gaming where people have these crazy egos. So just take a step back, get this perspective. The players in our tryout process were incredibly talented. The average was 5%, the top 5% in North America. And we had players all the way up rated to the top 0.05% in North America. Incredibly skilled player. So I feel like I'm I'm getting a little bit <laughs> a little bit heated, but it makes me really excited that we got to pull in all of these players. I think all 20 of you plus the subs were just amazing. The performances were out of this world. I was very happy to have you all here. So that's my thank you to the players for being here for the trial process. 
I really do appreciate you taking the time to play. Next, I want to thank you, the viewer. Now, some of you viewing might be some of those players in tryouts, and some of you might not be. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for being on the stream. Thank you for being active in the chat. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to Oakland University Athletic Program as well. We're starting this esports program. This is the first year for it at Oakland. And you being here with us for the ride means a lot to me. It means a lot to us. So thank you for that. Now, to conclude the night, I'll give one more little shout out to a very, very, very special group of people. It's Velocilinx right there. It's, it's right there, guys, right there in the corner. And it's down below. You can hit that small VX. That'll bring you right to the giveaway tweet. Now, that's important because... Veloxilinx, great company. Great company, great products, great gaming gear. We're talking keyboards, mice, headsets. But on top of that, they're willing to give you free equipment. You just have to enter in for a chance to win. Costs nothing. Nothing to participate. It's amazing. I think you should check it out. But hey, that's just my opinion. Just my opinion, okay? Thank you again for being here. Either way, I really do appreciate it. For the rest of the week... Today's Tuesday, guys. We got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We have a ton of content out there for you. If you haven't followed us on Twitch, now's your chance to go hit the follow button. Tomorrow and uh, Thursday are going to be Rocket League from 5 to 9 o'clock. It's going to be a little bit shorter duration uh, just because of the nature of the game. The games go by pretty quick. Uh, but we have incredibly talented Rocket League players on standby, ready to show you what they've got and participate. Try to get a spot on the team. Make sure you're here tomorrow at 5 o'clock for Rocket League. And then Friday and Saturday is going to be Smash Brothers Ultimate. Also incredibly talented uh, individuals for Smash. So thank you again one last time. I really appreciate you being on stream and being active and just, just spending the time with us. And I hope you continue to do so throughout the rest of the week for the tryouts. And then also in the fall when we start competing against other schools. That's when it's really going to get exciting, and that's what I'm really pumped for. So thank you again. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you all have an amazing rest of your night.